If it's good enough for me, it's good enough for the entire world. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, and I'm not ashamed to put it on display. And the more God gives me favor and partners, the more television time, and the more newspaper time, and the more we're going to print and publish the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're not going to stop. I said we're not going to stop. I said we're not going to stop. I said we're not going to stop. A Robert Tilton is raping the most vulnerable segments of our society, the poor, the infirm, the elderly. He said, I've got the faith. All you need to do is, do is obey and send the money. I would consider him, you know, a con man, a manipulator of people's emotions. He had you on the air and say, send me your prayer request, but the let the checks go into a caging operation in a bank and get thrown in the dumpster in the back of the, of the building. That's disgraceful. What he holds up as Christianity is totally false and totally opposite of what the Bible says. He'd tell you, put your hand on the TV screen that he could feel you there. I'd make it to the TV. I put my hand there, but nothing happened. The public now knows by the verdict of this jury that's heard all of this evidence that this man has been defrauding people for a long time. Mr. Tilton has a special message addressing the lies and twisted allegations the media recently has launched. Please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again. Hallelujah. Whoop. Hallelujah. Whoop. Hallelujah. Whoop. Hallelujah. Whoop. Come on, people. Give me a little break. Come on, people. Give me $10,000. All creatures are bad, and some of them have made some serious mistakes. They'll do anything to make a buck, including lying or stepping on people. Send your checks to us. $10,000. They'll do anything to make $10,000. Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. So what? Federal agents are at your house and have a warrant. Did God really say that? Federal agents seized Tilton's house in drug bust. The, 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 the audacity. We owe $200,000 worth of back taxes. That's how we are. What are we doing? What are we doing with the money? Well, obviously we're spending it. Now I'm making payments on the boat and I'm making payments on the house. Tilton's house and drug bust. I'm making payments on the boat and I'm making payments on the house. Tilton's house, not any mansion. Some people are calling them. They're not. Jesus makes nothing out of something. The audacity. Get that religious garbage out of your brain. Did God really say that? That's singing in tongues for you illiterate folks out there. Stop giving this organization. Go ahead. Let, Let the, the devil, devil use it. it. Please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again. Hallelujah. You thought he disappeared from the airwaves. I'm back. The untold story of how this Dallas demon chaser is getting a second chance to raise millions from your donations. Robert Tilton was once the most successful televangelist in America. But unflattering publicity about his fundraising techniques and some legal problems knocked him off the air five years ago. But now he's back on TV, and Fox 4's Richard Gray joins us live from the newsroom now with the story. Richard. Hi, Ashley and Steve. A lot of you thought you'd seen the last of Robert Tilton, that he'd been driven off for good. But the untold story is that Bob beat the rap. He beat all the raps, and he's back. I am a prophet of prosperity, and I am not ashamed of it. Robert Tilton. I'm Once he was the I'm most visible fraud, TV evangelist in America, again, preaching God, the health God and wealth gospel. Ghost, Make a vow. God will give you what you want. Send money to me. I look at you, and I see money. And millions poured in every month. You don't act this stuff. 
you don't conjure it up, make it up. It bubbles up. <laughs> but with visibility came scrutiny, a series of unflattering exposés followed by investigations and lawsuits. I'm not a dirty dog. I'm not a thief. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a flake. I'm a born-again son of God. But by the end of 1993, Bob Tilton was also off the air. The old brother Bob was often over the top. The new version still approaches the peak. Success in life with Robert Tilton. The devil's hearing a horrible noise when you call, and he's fleeing. He's 80% back. I mean, he, you watch, uh, you know, on a given day, he'll start beating the table and, and chasing the demon. I tell you, it's a devil. We're going to hit that devil between the eyes. We're going to go to the altar. Harry Getzloff is a member of the Trinity Foundation, an East Dallas church that monitors TV evangelists. It's the same stuff. <laughs> he's doing it again. I'm not talking about making money your God. I'm talking about, and I'm not talking about serving money. I'm talking about serving God with your money. This is where Bob Tilton does his broadcast now, a tiny studio on an almost unfindable back street in Miami Beach, Florida. The impression in Dallas is that he's vanished from the face of the earth. In fact, he's alive and well and living in the land of second chances, South Florida, and rebuilding his empire. Spent some time with Sean Rowe is a writer who spent weeks trying to track Tilton and wrote a cover story about it for a Fort Lauderdale newspaper. At times I would follow him in his car and I would always lose him. He would lose me. He's trying to keep the lowest profile possible. He's almost invisible. I don't think anybody in the United States' church could have withstood what that ministry withstood. Attorney J.C. Joyce says there's an untold story here. All of this smoke, there was any fire. Okay, what about that civil fraud judgment in federal court? $1.5 million in damages, overturned by an appeals court. Threw it out in total. Not a dime was paid. What about all those investigations? The Texas Attorney General, the FBI, postal inspectors, the IRS. Clean bill of health, nothing wrong, not a dime misspent. There were two very messy divorces, the second one especially so. I had no idea when I married this man the extent of the abuse and alcoholism and the, the entertainment and the leisure living that he leads. Despite those allegations in the divorce case, Bob won there too. Lee didn't get a dime. In fact, she had to move out of the mansion and was ordered to reimburse Tilton's church some $280,000. Praise the Lord. <laughs> there is one remaining lawsuit. First wife, Marty, is suing both Tilton and his attorney. The filing is revealing. In 1990 alone, it reads, the Word of Faith ministry had a total gross income of almost $70 million. Pastor Tilton's annual salary was something on the order of $1 million. Even at a low point, Marty claims total gross income for 1992 was slightly in excess of $27 million. A year later, he was off the air, but still the money poured in. in How? Try. Simple. Direct mail. Discuss. The mailings didn't stop at all. They continued month after month after month. Television was just a cost of sales to him. It's the direct mail where he gets the money. And the 20, Holy Anthony it, and his Dallas-based Trinity Foundation attempt to be a watchdog on TV evangelists. Other TV preachers, says Anthony, have learned from Robert Tilton's success and are now sending the same kind of letters with holy seeds, bracelets, candles. It's all of the gimmicks necessary to cause people who are in trouble to empty their wallets to give to Robert Tilton. People to worship Early God last summer, Bob gifts. Tilton went back and on the air, blaming the devil himself, himself for the problems stop. that had knocked him off. Those of you that know some of the stuff I've been through the last few years know that he gave it a good shot. But he didn't do it. Hallelujah. I'm still preaching and prophesying. Thank you, Lord, for giving her the seat. Robert Tilton declined our request for an interview, but clearly his word of faith ministry emerged with millions in assets left. He's now spending more than $50,000 a month to buy airtime five days a week on BET, Black Entertainment Television, seen coast to coast. A warning he delivered to his Ghost. enemies in 1992 may stand the test of time. Stuff. I'll come after you. I got a lot of attorneys, and we, this church got a lot of money. So don't mess with us.
By now, some of you are probably asking why South Florida and what happened to the church here in Farmer's Branch? Tilton's home church, Word of Faith in Farmer's Branch, still holds services on Sunday morning. But where thousands once came, crowds now number about a hundred. Brother Bob is rarely there. It starts when you call. Bob Tilton and longtime assistants, including this man who has to be identified simply as Michael, spend most of their time in South Florida. Their cars still have Texas plates. Why has Tilton moved his operation here? Well, he once had a home and a yacht in nearby Fort Lauderdale. It's long been one of his favorite places. But more importantly, and by all accounts, his detractors in Dallas made it very uncomfortable for Bob Tilton to live there. Drove him out to a place where he can be anonymous. Tilton's messy and very public divorce from second wife Lee may have been the crowning blow. Lee says that Bob always carried a kit with fake mustaches and wigs, that he wore a disguise about half the time to avoid the kind of public trashing he'd begun to attract in Texas. That's true. That's true. I've been there with him, and, uh, you know, you're in a restaurant, and people come up and uh, start cussing you. Uh, you're at a mall with your children, and people do the same thing. I know what it is to be broken, lied about, set up, framed by the best. I know what it is to have every feeling like everybody, or at least half the people in the world, want to kill me. In Bob Tilton's mind, one man is to blame for most of his troubles. Blessed art thou, the spiritual Lord leader of a small church in East Dallas. Bringeth forth bread. Holy Anthony. By God's grace, we've lost the ability to act. A crusader out to expose TV ministries. And it's very difficult to prove um, these different charges in a religious matter because, rightly so, the First Amendment protects a lot of things. But I don't think the First Amendment ever protected fraud. And I believe, my, in my opinion, many of these ministries are committing fraud. Hugh set out to destroy this ministry and has all but done it. Tilton's attorney began our interview by handing all me a stack, stack of legal papers, evidence he says that Ole Anthony is not a reliable source. Oh, okay. Joyce has sued Anthony numerous what times it to no Anthony? avail. Ole Anthony doesn't have any money. He is a deliberate pauper. What good's it going to do me to sue Ole Anthony? Nothing. But if you quote him and he's not a credible source, then you do have a deep pocket. <laughs> and that's all I want. You're, you're, but you are. You're threatening to sue me if I quote him. Oh, absolutely. I'll sue anybody that quotes Ole Anthony as a credible source. Ask Ole Anthony about J.C. Joyce, and you get this response. He's very, very good at what he does. And uh, he has kept... Robert Tilton out of trouble, and he's done it very well. J.C. Joyce has made a fortune, uh, a lot of it off me, if the truth were known. But. And that is the flip side of the story, Ole Anthony and that Trinity Foundation still making life miserable for TV preachers like Bob Tilton. Diane Sawyer herself said that they, they went undercover and they lied. Well, when did they still... Let's show that video footage of this so-called uh, minister. He ain't a minister. He's nothing. He's less than nothing. His whole thing is built on what he can do to tear me down. His, his whole world is around tearing me down. He said that years here in Dallas. Okay, roll the tape. Good evening. I'm Emily Quinn. Welcome to this special edition of Steals and Deals. Tonight we take a look at how trust can lead you down the wrong path. We begin with religion. Should believing in God cost you? I want to lay my hand on your vow. Tell my prayer minister you want to make a vow of faith, and I want you to make it for $1,000, because I know that takes faith. And unless I can get you into faith, not much happens. Harry Getzloff wanted it all to happen for him. Already a successful corporate executive, he had an exclusive Dallas condo, fancy cars, and a sophisticated lifestyle. But despite his successes, he was on shaky ground, both financially and spiritually. He turned to Robert Tilton's health and wealth gospel to solve his problems. Getzloff began going to Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church, and through Tilton's urging, made a $5,000 vow. Robert Tilton became his spiritual financial advisor. A financial consultant told me that if I invested in his 
whatever, that I would get back at least 10 times my investment, perhaps 100 times my investment, and maybe as much as 1,000 times my investment. He didn't. Despite the $5,000 donation, his problems didn't disappear. They grew. He ended up $500,000 in debt. He lost the penthouse, his marriage, everything. Harry was soon homeless. These days, he lives and works here at the Trinity Foundation, a Dallas religious watchdog group. He makes $80 a week as the group's media coordinator. Getzloff is still $50,000 in debt, in part, he says, because of Robert Tilton. I saw a magician. I saw, I saw somebody who had an inside line to, to what was going on in the power, and I could tap into it. God told me that if I would show you on the authority of his word how to make a vow to him, that he would provide, he would pay that vow himself because he gives the seed to sow. He'll show you where some money is that you've forgotten. It was my greed that allowed Tilton to bilk me out of $5,000. It was my fear. It was my greed. It was my ego. Um, he didn't really do anything to me. Um, he's a pitch man. He's a con man. He's no different than the guy who's on TV tonight telling me how to make a million dollars selling real estate. Somebody is selling something everywhere you look. Reverend Robert Tilton is a leader in this latest televangelist trend. Experts claim Oral Roberts began perfecting this seed faith fundraising approach in 1987 when he pleaded for eight million dollars, saying he'd be taken from the world if he failed. We had three months. I'm asking you to help, me, help extend my life. Robert's got his money and survived. And the airwaves continue to be crowded with others like son Richard Roberts, faith healer W.V. Grant, and popular husband and wife team Ken and Gloria Copeland. But no one makes such a blatant prosperity promise as Robert Hilton. By faith, by faith, by faith, it reduces God to a bellhop who goes and does the bidding of the person who pays enough money. Michael Horton is an Episcopal minister in Anaheim, California. He recently edited a book called The Agony of Deceit, which attacks prosperity preachers like Tilton. When you associate money with salvation, you really are distorting the gospel at the most uh, carnal and ugly level. Problems, bills, I bind you and I cast you into the sea. Tilton's ministry, like other churches, is a non-profit organization. That means it doesn't have to disclose the majority of its financial investments and holdings. Well, that angers people like televangelist critic Ole Anthony, who wants TV ministers on a tighter leash. If we were talking about a uh, Food and Drug Act, the Food and Drug Administration, and somebody came along with a product that claimed that it tasted good and it would solve all your problems and everything would be wonderful, well, it would have to meet those standards for the public in order to, to, to continue buying it. Tilden's organization refused our request for an interview as well as for information on its fundraising activities. The Council for Financial Accountability set standard for religious organizations like Word of Faith. Neither Tilton nor his ministry are members. Council President Arthur Borden disagrees with the closed book attitude of Tilton's church and says it's important for nonprofit groups to uphold high standards. We've had a series of scandals that uh, uh, all of your uh, viewers are familiar with. And uh, also the, the donor is, uh, needs to be recognized as an investor, as a stockholder, as a consumer and the donor has certain rights. Robert Tilton wouldn't comment on this, but his lawyer, J.C. Joyce, had this to say. Quote, Word of Faith is like your local church. Its financial information is nobody's business. It's the easiest thing in the world to criticize someone else's religion. No person who belongs to his church has complained. Thank God that in this country we've got the First Amendment, and everybody has the right to practice their own religion. End quote. But Ole Anthony says the prosperity gospel isn't a First Amendment issue. It's a consumer fraud issue. If we could only use the same consumer techniques that we use for detergent or over-the-counter medicine to, uh, for religion, we would, I think we would see some changes. The Council of Better Business Bureaus reports Tilton's church does not meet the Bureau's charitable organization standards. Cowards is what they are. Cowards! hiding behind the religious cloak. 
try to brain. See how they fuzzed all that stuff up and just put all those little adjectives in there? On our Inside Story Monday, television's new star evangelist. He's making millions and he's making controversy. He just says, send me your money. Give me your money. And then you'll get a whole bunch of money in return. So it's just the, it's, it's, it's purely the gospel of greed. Robert Tilton, TV's new high roller. The Inside Story Monday on Entertainment Tonight. I tell you something, I pray. I have to make myself, but I pray for those who persecute me. They don't know what they're tangling with because of pure stupidity. They're, let, they're letting the devil use them. Some of them are the devil. Some of them are just letting the devil use them. I saw a man the other night on television attacking me, sitting in a chair. The seat of the scornful. A scornful person is the one who is disrespectful and talks openly disrespectfully towards someone that is respectful. Scornful. Scornful. Look at that person. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, those that don't know what they're talking about, or sits in the seat of the scornful. You want to sit in the seat of the scornful? You want to sit with them? You want to sit with them? You want to sit? Who wants to sit in this seat? Anytime you agree with what they're saying and listen to all that deceitfulness and lies, you're sitting in that seat. You want to sit in that seat? Anybody here want to sit in that seat? Next time somebody starts talking about your Jesus, starts, talk, starts talking about the gospel and the word, don't you sit in that seat with them. Don't you sit in that seat with them. That devil's trying to get you to sit in that seat. Listen to this. Listen to this garbage. Listen to this junk. Listen to these lies. Listen to these lies. Listen to this. Listen to these lies. That's what the devil tries to do. That's all he's got is lies. He's a good one at it too. Some preachers are afraid to say that word, money! because they don't want some old stingy person to get on their back. Can this man save your soul? If so, how much does it cost? TV's newest star spreads the gospel on entertainment tonight for Monday, December 3rd, 1990. Robert Tilton is the newest star on the horizon of TV evangelism. Some say he's a savior of souls. Others see him as an example of greed, in it only for the money. TV's new money minister. Today's Inside Story reported by Garrett Glazer. I say in Jesus' name, you're going to be healed when we pray. See, Reverend Robert Tilton has been called the country's fastest growing force in TV evangelism. Money! Some preachers are afraid to say that word, money! Tilton's ministry is headquartered here at the Word of Faith Church in Dallas, Texas. It's under renovation right now. The property is carefully guarded by a security staff. And when we telephone with questions about Tilton's fundraising activities and alleged healing powers, Tilton declined our request for an interview. In fact, while outside Tilton's church, we were asked to leave by one of Tilton's uniformed security officers. Would you remove your vehicle? Would you get off the property, sir? We've had a lot of negative publicity, so he's trying to avoid you people. Tilton tells viewers that if they give him money, they'll be blessed with good fortune and more money in return. He follows up with mailings, which offer ropes to bind Satan, holy water from the River Jordan, and even a, quote, life-size poster of me, end quote. This woman declined to be identified out of embarrassment to her family. She says her young son thought his poor eyesight was cured by Tilton at a healing service, and he put away his eyeglasses. His eyesight was so bad that when he went to school the next day, the school called me. He was bumping into the walls. Another man critical of Tilton is Ole Anthony, a homeless advocate and watchdog of television ministries. Does Tilton offer these people any explanation of how it's supposed to work? He just says, send me your money. Give me your money. And then you'll get a whole bunch of money in return. So it's just the, it's, it's, it's purely the gospel of greed. You gotta get up and do something. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Despite having his detractors, Tilton continues to do what he does best. Getting his word out while bringing his viewers money in. From Dallas, Garrett Glazer, Entertainment Tonight. The rising star of television evangelism, Dallas minister Bob Tilton. A legitimate faith healing conduit to God or is he a bogus glutton of greed? Only is this guy a fraud. He's without, he, he, is, he is a joke, he's a fraud, he's a snake oil salesman. Then why can't we take him to court? On what if basis? He's a fraud. Because here's what he does, he's just a smart fraud. 
What he does, he doesn't do what t Jim and Tammy did, where they send, send me your money and we'll do this. He just says, send me your money. There's no act that, that says you can't send somebody your money. So he says, just send me the money. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. No, with I'm not going to tell you what. It. He says, it, in fact, he says it's none of your business what I'm going to do with it. Pretty nice business. Again, he gets a million bucks a week. Mm. Well, televangelism is a joke. The idea that you could have an electric church, that you could take someone that was in dire need and say, accept Jesus, and then leave him alone out there and send him a little book and tell him to put his hand on the cathode ray tube is an, uh, it's an obscenity and a blasphemy against God. Being a member of this stupid television church or electronic church, is about, it's like being married to a rubber dolly. It's spiritual masturbation. It's sick. But then Nehemiah had some enemies that didn't like what he was doing. He had three men that began to mock him. He had some men that began to try to get him to stop what he was doing. They began to lie about him. They even infiltrated his army to try to stir up strife in the midst of his army to stop him from going forward and rebuilding the walls. Listen to me. In these last days, there will be some infiltrators. They tried to stop Nehemiah. They mocked him. They slandered him. They lied about him. They tried to get him to come down off the wall and talk. The time is talking is over. Amen. We're too busy to come down Amen. and stop what we're doing. Amen. Oh, Tilton, come and give us an interview. Talk to us. I already made that mistake once, and I'm not going to make it again. I'm too busy rebuilding broken lives. I'm too busy restoring the brokenhearted. I'm too busy preaching the gospel to the poor. I'm too busy healing the sick. I'm too busy getting people saved. No, I'm not going to stop. I've got a dream. You don't like Robert Tilton. I, I, uh, I think Robert Tilton is a snake oil salesman. Well, I, I mean, think he, he has uh, nothing to do with the God that I believe in. And from what I understand, he thinks you're Satan. He called me Satan on his national television show. Okay, so I mean... You I wish we could get together. That would maybe subtle it for the minds of the people. Some great brotherly love. Go brotherly on. love. Can I read something? Sure. One paragraph. The director of a North Dallas assistance group remembers when a woman came into his office looking for help. She had given her last $19,000 to Dallas-based televangelist Robert Tilton's ministry and moved here from the East Coast to live and work with the organization to which she had devoted her life and her life's earnings. When she got here, she went to the church, and they told her, no, you don't have a job here. No, we are not going to help you. You're on your own. She ended up homeless. Okay, so, so what... That's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people like this. So what's, the, you know, they're gullible people out there, so what? Gullible, gullibility is, is uh, an easy sop to say that's why we shouldn't be concerned with them. But is it gullible if we were dealing with five million people in America who were dying of starvation and we had some idiot feeding them cotton candy and charging them their life savings to have the cotton candy? That's what Tilton is doing. He is, it, it, I don't think it's, it's, we can't just excuse the fact that this exists by saying it's just gullibility and they deserve what they get. These people are desperate through no circumstance, no fault of their own, and, and we have these guys preying on them. Dan, you got a question? Uh, I've got a little comment. I am a graduate of Robert Tilton's uh, Bible School, mm -hmm. and I'm still in contact with a lot of his uh, ex-parishioners, quote-unquote, and it's very disappointing for all of us the way he's gone. At one time, he was, he was a pretty good guy. Can, may I comment? Sure. And I, I really appreciate that because I didn't have the opportunity to say, I'm sure that he started out sincere. It was, didn't the change it's, come when you get the television? Yeah, when, he, the when, he, when he started satellite programs, my wife used to be in the counting room where the money would come in after every day. He would walk in in the morning. His wife would walk in and say, how you, all, how you girls doing? Are there any problems? Can I help you with anything? Bob would walk in, and first thing out of his mouth was how much money came in. Two men. I want to encourage you to make a vow right now of $1,000. Two churches. He's a joker. He's a snake oil salesman in the name of God. Locked in a holy war. I'm here to bring prosperity to you. That's the same reason that people go to Las Vegas. It's the gospel of greed. Can the preacher of poverty 
bring down the Texas televangelist who speaks the gospel of truth. A Dallas-based TV preacher has the fastest growing satellite ministry in America. Many publications accuse him of preying on the poor and desperate. He's been called the next Jim Baker and worse. Night Beats' Richard Ray joins us now with that story. Rich has the first of two reports that pose the question, who holds the gospel truth? Richard? Nothing inflames passions like religious debate, John, and none burns hotter now than the controversy surrounding Robert Tilton. Lately, the heat's been turned up. Tonight, a closer look at how and why. This is a tale of two churches. One is huge and wealthy. The Lord our God, King of the universe. The other small and poor. In a moment, our guys are going to put your picture on the screen. There you go. One is fueled by space-age technology and the awesome power of television. The other patterns itself after the early Christian church of the Twelve Apostles. In one Savior, they have found two very different Gospels. Hallelujah. Just make a thousand dollar vow of faith. I don't care how much money you have, how much you don't have. I just know what faith will do. Robert Tilton is now considered the brightest star in the satellite world of televangelists. His TV show and ministry take in millions of dollars a month. He makes no apologies for his lavish lifestyle. His mansions in Las Colinas and San Diego. He preaches the prosperity gospel and he lives it. If he's preaching the gospel, then it's not the gospel I know anything about. It's, uh, it's a perversion. It's a sick perversion of greed. Ole Anthony, one-time Republican political leader and briefly a TV evangelist himself, is founder of the Trinity Foundation. It's a small church based in a neighborhood reclaimed from an East Dallas slum. That our prayers are free, the service is free, God's salvation is free. But Father, I know there's something divine about money. Bob Tilton teaches of a God who rewards the faithful giver with material prosperity here and now. Trinity finds a very different message in the teachings of Jesus. Here they take in homeless people. There's a small school, a communal kitchen, and an ongoing crusade to bring down Robert Tilton. So he's a snake oil salesman in the name of God. Ole Anthony is far from the first to criticize Robert Tilton and the other so-called health and wealth ministers. And at first glance, this would appear to be a clear mismatch. But of late, Anthony and his little church have enlisted the aid of some very powerful allies. The Trinity Foundation's efforts have resulted in dozens of newspaper and magazine articles, television exposés, radio talk shows, most of them unflattering in their portrait of Tilton and his ministry. This David of a church has hit Goliath between the eyes. Any tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I condemn it! For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and my righteousness of God. I'm not a dirty dog. I'm not a thief. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a flake. I'm a born-again son of God. Tilton no longer does interviews, but last Sunday's sermon was laced with responses to his critics. Outside, we were trying to offer his congregation a chance to respond. Okay. How about like right behind this brown car here? Well, I don't even know that you can park here. And a security guard told us we'd have to stay off the property. And a church official, a Mr. Lang, told us we were wasting our time. But we want to give you every opportunity to respond to this, uh, all this national publicity that, that lately seems to have uh, been focused on Pastor Tilton. Uh, there's no response. None whatsoever. But there was plenty of it. I think that's just the media, period. You can't believe everything that the media says. I had three tumors. I had cancer. And I was healed, and we love Bob, and we love Jesus. We're, we're sad. You know, anytime he comes under attack, especially the, the blatant attacks, uh, you know, hideous that they are, you know, scandalous, the way they, they have to hide to get things. Which brings us to the ambush interview, a regrettable remark about Jews and the growing flap over what was meant to be a Tilton apology. Tremendous pressure was upon me, and I said something I shouldn't have said. Stay tuned. Now, Tilton's problems with Jewish groups began with a remark he made to a reporter from Inside Edition. That's a nationally syndicated program that airs on Channel 5. KXAS-TV, Channel 5. 
Milton is living like a king, running America's fastest-growing television ministry. He knows how to milk people for money. A million bucks a week is what he's taking in. He asked for money in the name of God, but you don't make your checks out to God. Put your hand on top of mine, the healing power will begin to happen. Inside Edition welcomes you. I'm Bill O'Reilly. We're glad you're with us today. There is big money in preaching the Word of God on television. Jim Baker, Jimmy Swaggart, and others have proved that. Right now, the hottest TV preacher is Pastor Robert Tilton. People are sending him millions of dollars. But should they? Here's Steve Wilson's investigation. He would start at the foot of our bed. It was like a blanket of his anointing would come up and cover us up. After he and his wife became Christians, Robert Tilton says they could actually feel Jesus tuck them into bed at night. I love to accept the Lord, don't you? There's schools that they can go to and actually learn how to cry on TV to make their words sound more truthful. No, you don't make this kind of tear up. It just comes from somebody that knows somebody real special, the Lord. But why are so many of Tilton's former followers like Buddy Barnes, not just leaving the flock, but coming to conclusions like this? I personally wouldn't trust the man no further than I could pick this house up and throw it. From what I've seen, I would consider him, you know, a con man, a manipulator of people's emotions. America's fastest growing television ministry and its preacher Robert Tilton are involved in a number of humanitarian efforts around the world, but they're under fire now because of the way Tilton raises money for the ministry. Very few men understand me, but I am anointed with the hand of God upon me uniquely. Specially anointed, he says, to preach the Lord's promises of prosperity, promises that only come true to believers who prove their faith by vowing to send money to Robert Tilton. Ask me, decree a thing, make a vow, pay it, and you can decree a thing and it'll be established unto you. You don't have to stay in that stinking mess, that old dumpy part of town you've been in for years. God does miracles, but it doesn't cost you anything. He implies that it cost you a thousand bucks to get a miracle, which is ludicrous. I gave a thousand dollars to God and expected a miracle, and I got it. There is faith right now for a new car. If you'll see today for that new car, the loan will go through. You will get that car. Ole Anthony, a former TV preacher himself, says Tilton is taking in a bundle for millions of Americans desperate enough to believe almost anything. He knows how to milk people for money. That's what he's doing right. A million bucks a week is what he's taking in. His church looks more like a studio than a sanctuary, and with a full live orchestra, the service is quite a show. But rich and poor, young and old, black and white, there's a crowd here every Sunday. Hallelujah. But to Pastor Bob, as he likes to be called, to Pastor Bob and his far-flung ministry, who shows up here is not nearly as important as what goes up right over there. You might call this salvation by satellite. If you need some money, I wouldn't change that now. Success in life, America's personal growth and achievement program. Thanks to modern technology, you don't even have to live near Pastor Bob to be blessed, even healed. Just watch his daily show, Seen Coast to Coast. Are you ready? Put your hand on top of mine as your point of contact. And the power of God, believe it or not, will flow through my arm and through my hand into yours, and the healing power will begin to happen. No matter how serious your affliction, all you need is a TV to touch when Bob raises his hand and starts screaming at the devil. I rebuke you, I bind you, and I command you to come out of that body. Spirits of infirmity, pain, come out of that body in the name of Jesus. Tilton claims he can heal anything this way. Here's a fellow he says was cured of AIDS just by touching his TV when Pastor Bob was on. I knew the Lord had touched my body. I knew he had healed me. Nearly $200,000 a month is what Tilton reportedly spends just mailing material to his flock, much of it designed to encourage further contributions. We have here a prayer cloth where if you send in $1,000, it's no good now because it's right off the mail, but if you send a $1,000 vow with the prayer cloth, 
Brother Bob will wipe the sweat of his brow and send it back to you. Then it will be anointed with his sweat, and you can get your miracles answered. You just put it in whatever place God tells you to put it. Maybe in your pocketbook, maybe on a business door, or a car, a house. I believe this. See, this is not natural reasoning. This is operating scripturally in God's word. Everything that I've said about soul, my, my, come on, but about soul, yeah. Harry Getzlaw figured he'd be really blessed by paying a $5,000 vow to Pastor Bruce Bob, but he never saw any miracles. While he drained his bank account to zero, his business failed and his wife left him. So why did he keep paying till he was flat, broke, and homeless? Because Pastor Bob says... Now, if you don't obey to that, it says the Lord will then move over and, and bear witness with someone else, and they will end up with your blessing. Fifteen million people, if they miss the next paycheck, they're on the street. Those are the people that are responding. God sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. I'm not talking to the rich cats. Those are the people that are sending him money. The people that can't pay the rent, that can't feed the kids. Anybody can give God something when they have it. But to give God something when you don't have it, that's called faith. There are 4,000 people who don't even have a home here in Dallas. Tilton sends a bus to bring homeless people to church on Sundays. And Marshall Brooks says he and some others went once because they were promised food and clothes. But when Pastor Bob pointed out the homeless visitors to the other worshipers, Marshall and his friends felt used. They started passing the bowl out two or three times after for a donation and stuff. That's the reason why he brought the homeless people to the church, just to get more money. He says none of the homeless got a thing that Sunday. No food, no clothing. A few of the homeless at Father Jerry Hill's shelter did get some clothes once at Tilton's church. But that uh, later that evening, when they were through with them, they brought them back down here in front of the shelter, took the clothes back, and put them off the bus. Took the clothes back? Yes, took the clothes back that they had given them, and give them their old clothes back, and then put them off the bus. You see those on Sunday mornings. We bring in, you know, 50 to 60 people every Sunday morning from the Salvation Army. Have any of y'all ever seen them from the Salvation Army over there? You ever seen them? Looks like a smoke. A fire going on outside with cigarette smoking. I mean, they know they're going to be in here for two hours, and boy, when they get off that, they got two going, you know. I mean, they're, they're strange, you know, because they're so frustrated in life. And it's a real, real ministry. We have to, about as many as we bring in, we have to have that many guards watching them, you know. One went to the bathroom 50 times last Sunday. Did you see him? Did you see that guy? So what do you suppose happens to the millions that flow into this ministry? Well, in addition to staging big crusades around the world, Tilton says he supports printing plants and schools and hospitals in the third world. We visited this one in Mexico and found it to be everything he claims it is. Praise God. You know why I'm so happy? Well, could it be because he's collecting a salary big enough for him and his wife to buy and drive his and her Mercedes? To live in a $6,000 a month mansion in Dallas, or even a bigger one in California? Or maybe he's just so happy to be flying first class everywhere he goes. And uh, I preach prosperity. I live prosperity. I don't deny it. I'm not a hypocrite. Pastor Bob refuses all requests for news interviews. When he said no to us, I decided to buy a ticket and see if he would chat about his church during one of his regular trips between Dallas and San Diego. Why won't he ever talk with reporters? I don't have to explain what I do to anybody, how I do it. And I'm real prone not to because I found the more I do it, you don't cast your pearls among swine. Now, I suppose he did think it was a little strange when I asked him to watch a tape. Is it a video? Yeah, it's video. It sure is a videotape of many of the people you've been watching in this report. Who is the preacher? He doesn't know yet that Marshall Brooks is talking about him using the homeless to help fill the collection plate. And listen carefully now to what Tilton thinks of a preacher who would do that. Well, this is fraud right here. What do you mean? Fraud. But this preacher took up the money and told them that that's what he was going to do with it. And that is fraud and that's theft. And that is totally illegal and he should go to jail for it. And what appeared on the screen next was a big surprise. Pastor Tilton, these people are talking about you and your ministry. Well, you got a great interview. Were you wired? Huh? Were you wired? I had 
the back, please. No. Who are you? My name is Steve Wilson. And who you work for, Steve? I work for Inside Edition. <laughs> well, Steve, you did a great job. He later told me I'd burn in everlasting hell for bringing you this story. And listen why this man of God thinks we even did this report. Because you know that I'm going to bring some ratings, and sell some commercials, and make some money for your Jews in New York. Quite a revelation. Reverend Tilton's programs are seen on 90 television stations across the country. Remember the deal on the airplane? Where Inside Edition sneaked on the airplane when Mar and I were going to California at our own expense and tickets, and I showed him the tickets after I found out who he was, that we had bought those tickets personally ourselves and upgraded them with our advantages miles. He didn't say none of that stuff. What did they do? They got a hidden camera on the airplane, and he came and posed to me that he says, Hi, excuse me, are you Robert Tilton? And I said, Yes. He said, My mother is a fan of yours or a partner. And could I talk to you a few moments? I said, sure. I spent an hour talking to that guy about the Lord, about Bible prosperity. Then he pulls a videotape out on me and says, would you look at this? I said, well, I don't really want to. Well, look at this. And he shows some woman screaming and hollering, mad at some preacher that she had given a donation to. And he didn't do what he said he was going to do with it. Then he turns the tape off and he says, what do you think about that, uh, Reverend Tilton? I said, a preacher raises money for a particular thing. That's what he's supposed to spend the money for. And if he doesn't spend the money for that, that would be fraud and a criminal offense. And he'd probably go to jail. He turns the tape back on. Then he looks at me, on, and all of a sudden he's on the tape. See, I don't know what's going on. He's on the tape and he says, you're that man, Robert Tilton. Don't you know that you're supposed to have, you're, you're, for, you're supposed to tell a person if a camera's on? You know? How would you like somebody to follow you around and try to, you know what, you know what the, you know what, he, I'll tell you, you know what, I'm not going to say it because they just quote me on this, but I was going to tell you what it feels like to have people do what those people do, but I'm not going to tell you what it feels like. We have more to tell you about our investigation into Robert Tilton, a TV evangelist whose success in life ministry is quickly growing in popularity. Mr. Tilton said some very controversial things in our investigation last week, and now he has issued a public apology. Here's Steve Wilson with a follow-up. Let's welcome this morning our beloved pastor, Robert Tilton. He was back in the pulpit Sunday morning with a strong rebuke for some of his critics who appeared in our report a few days ago. Only Anthony told us last week that Tilton often seeks $1,000 contributions for pieces of cloth he anoints with the healing power of God when the preacher wipes his brow with them. But Tilton insisted on Sunday that his critics are wrong. We send out probably 50,000 free prayer cloths a month and nobody has to pay a dime for them. And I'll tell you something else, I never wipe one ounce of sweat off my brow to send a prayer cloth or sell it for a thousand bucks. That's lies of the devil. He offered his proof, a videotaped story of this woman in Chicago. She claims she had a cancerous tumor in her mouth until the mailman came one day. I got a prayer clock about maybe a week later. I got a prayer clock. Alice immediately took the cloth, placed it in her mouth, and asked God to heal her. By the time she woke up the next morning, Tilton claimed she was entirely healed. This woman that was healed of cancer, documented by the doctors. Take that, devil. Yeah. Tilton consistently refuses to allow anyone to independently verify such stories, but he had this to say Sunday to anyone who's skeptical. I'm not a dirty dog. I'm not a thief. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a flake. I'm a born-again son of God, child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. My hands are anointed. My words are anointed. My eyes are anointed that God's touched me. He's blessed me. He's healed me. He's delivered me. He's prospered me. No. But his tone was quite contrite just before he he closed the broadcast. A few days ago, I was caught in a very terrible position. Tremendous pressure was upon me, and I said something I shouldn't have said. He's talking now about what he said to me on an airplane. Even when he knew I was a reporter recording his words, he said he knew why Inside Edition was investigating his ministry, which reportedly rakes in a million a week. As you know, that I'm going to bring some ratings, and sell some commercials, and make some money for your Jews in New York. I have lots of Jewish friends that I love dearly, and we buy a lot of television time from, from uh, some Jewish people. And I don't think there's an anti-Semitic bone in my body but evidently there was, I don't know. 
I know about two-thirds of our television is controlled by uh, Jewish people, and thank God for that. They're good people. I love them. They're God's chosen people, okay? I love the Jewish people. But I made a slight statement that could be taken derogatorily, and to all of you that are the Jewish uh, descent at this time, I apologize to you publicly. I ask you to forgive me for saying the little comment that I made. A Tilton spokesman in Dallas says this week Pastor Bob is unavailable for any further comment and has apparently not changed his mind about refusing all requests for further interviews. Well, after hearing that apology, a spokesman for the Anti-Defamation League said he believes Robert Tilton still has a long way to go. And lay your hand on the screen. America's hottest TV preacher has run into some problems over what he meant to be an apology. I'm Richard Ray, and when Nightbeat continues, I'll tell you why. In the name of Jesus, that's fine. It's been hard to miss Robert Tilton lately. USA Today, Entertainment Tonight, the tabloids, all have run unflattering stories about the best known of the so-called health and wealth TV preachers. Night Beats Richard Ray joins us now from our Dallas newsroom with part two of a series that poses the question, who holds the gospel truth? Rich? Clarice, if you've seen those stories lately, you may have also noticed that the prime accuser in each case was another Dallas minister. But if you send a vow of $1,000, then Brother Bob will fill this with water that he allegedly has taken from the Jordan River. Then you can dump it on yourself mm -hmm. and get baptized. For Ole Anthony, the health and wealth ministry of Robert Tilton, its marketing of miracles is something to despise. It's commercial fraud in God's name. Anthony heads up the Trinity Foundation, a very different church from Tilton's. It's a small congregation of Christians who meet, and in many cases live, in this renovated East Dallas neighborhood. It's at Anthony's urging that a number of national publications have recently printed and aired Tilton attacks. One in particular is causing the powerful Texas-based evangelist some serious problems. It aired last week on a nationally syndicated program called Inside Edition. The report included a hidden camera ambush interview on an airplane. When he realized what had happened, Tilton told the reporter he knew why he was doing the interview, quote, you know that I'm going to bring some ratings and sell more commercials for your Jews in New York. And to all of you that are the Jewish uh, descent at this time, I apologize to you publicly. I ask you to forgive me for saying the little comment that I made. During last Sunday's sermon, Tilton attempted to apologize, but succeeded only in further offending with another comment. I know about two-thirds of our television is controlled by uh, Jewish people, and thank God for that. The Anti-Defamation League has since written Tilton asking for a meeting to discuss what it feels are dangerous and stereotypical remarks. It really allows the bigots and the anti-Semites and the hate mongers to come out of the woodwork. And we're growing by leaps and bounds. One of the biggest crowds we've had in years right now in this auditorium. It just keeps growing Sunday after Sunday. Robert Tilton preaches the prosperity gospel and he lives it with lavish homes and lifestyle. Donations to his ministry total millions every month. At Trinity, they take in the homeless who have no money. Ole Anthony and others who minister here draw a salary of $80 a week. Two men, two churches, reading one Bible and finding very different gods. Some of you, this church too hot for you. You need to get out of here and go on down the street. That's right. Some of you, some of you don't belong here. I heard of a couple that used to come here, but it wasn't socially acceptable any longer in their circles. And they begin to draw back and draw back. And they found a place where nothing was happening, where they could be socially acceptable. A woman was telling Marty last night in an apartment store, she says, I don't know why people talk about you like they do. We love you so much, and it just infuriates my husband. She said, you know, in some social circles, y'all are really disrespected in. I'm going to give you an example of the way the Dallas Times-Herald, the way CNN, 
Channel 8, ABC, NBC, all of them that played this, you know what they did? They ran spots all day long here in Dallas. And you know what the teasers on the news was about every 15 minutes? Tilton's house seized by federal drug agents more at 6 o'clock news. The headlines on the front page of the morning news, federal agents seized Tilton's house in drug bust. Now, everybody thinks now that I'm a drug dealer. You know what was so amazing? Marty and I and us, the partners, we had just given $10,000 to the, 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 the police force here in Farmers Branch, Texas, North Dallas, for a nationwide seminar conference for undercover drug dealers. Tonight, as part of a major drug investigation in California, federal agents seize an expensive house at Las Colinas in Irving. The house is being leased by well-known television evangelist Robert Tilton. Reverend Tilton is in no way implicated or suspected of being involved in anything illegal. But his family was shocked late today when U.S. Marshals and drug agents came and seized the house in Irving that they've been leasing. Channel 8's Bill Brown says the California man who owns the mansion has confessed to trafficking in drugs and has gone to prison. Coming to you from Dallas, Texas, it's Success in Life with Robert Tilton. Turn on a television set almost anywhere and you're likely to see Robert Tilton, the colorful evangelist who runs the popular Word of Faith ministry and has a church with 8,000 members in Farmer's Branch. On cable and broadcast stations, the Reverend reaches up to 20 million viewers. Whatever was torn, whatever was goofed up there in that automobile accident, bless God, is gone in Jesus' name. Reverend Tilton did live in Southern California, but moved back to Texas and is building a new home in the exclusive Bent Tree area of North Dallas. Lately, he and his family have been living in this $700,000 house at Las Colinas in Irving. He leases the home for $6,000 a month. As it turns out, he leases it from a convicted drug dealer, Californian Patrick Johnson. In Los Angeles, Johnson confessed to trafficking in PCP, angel dust, and cocaine, and has been sent to prison for 30 years. The evangelist is out of town now, but his son, John Tilton, talked tonight with reporter Vince Patton. The owners, the pre-owners of this house, um who are the still owners? I guess they're not owners anymore and they're in jail or something. And we're like innocent third party here, so. So they're not arresting you or anything? No, not at all. We did not do anything wrong. The head of the DEA office in Dallas confirms that Reverend Tilton and his family were in no way involved in the drug ring. No, we have nothing to indicate that the Reverend is implicated in any way, shape, or form. The federal agents are still investigating, and they could seize more property in Texas owned by Johnson, the convicted drug dealer. The federal government is now the landlord here, and the Tiltons will be allowed to stay if they wish. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News, Irving. He is the chief of police of Farmers Branch, Texas. He has a very special award to give to our pastors today. So let's welcome him here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here this morning representing two organizations, my department and the National Drug Enforcement Officers Association. We went out to our community to ask them for some assistance, and we came to our good friends here at the Word of Faith Family Church. And your generosity and your gift was very, very special to us. We were the recipients of $10,000, which more than put us over our needs. One more thing. Something really ironical happened while they were having their program. That was when uh, there was a situation on our rental home. And right while they were having their convention with uh, these uh, drug enforcement undercover agents from all over America, uh, our house was being seized by the federal agents. <laughs> but um, they said, let's go cash that check in a hurry. <laughs> of course, they, they told me later that they realized that the media had just uh, taken advantage of a situation and, uh, and you know, just uh, once again to scourge me a little bit. But, um, you know, of course, as always, I, I, 
always come out landing on my feet and uh, smelling like a rose. Hallelujah. And uh, you, can't keep, you can't keep a good man down. And uh, Maury and I do our best to live a quiet, uh, squeaky clean life, you know, but uh, when you preach the gospel of Jesus, they have a tendency of wanting to, to try to uh, make up things or, or twist things or exaggerate things or, or just, uh, I don't know. When I was in high school, I worked for a man and I had a fruit stand and, and me and four or five other guys, we stole that guy blind. We used to get on top of the freeways and drop watermelons off. <laughs> We'd go through a case of eggs on a Friday night. <laughs> Parents, please forgive me for putting ideas in your kids' heads. I better not hear any watermelons dropped off any freeways. You can kill somebody like that. At least go out there and check it out and spy a little bit. Go, go check it out and spy and see what all that noise is about. There might be a spy sitting next to you this morning. <laughs> Could be a reporter next to you right now. Turn to the person on your right and left and say, it is true. Good things are happening. <laughs> Give them an interview. I mean, remember last Sunday when I said turn to the person on your right and left, you may, may be some media person there. You know, there was no reason for me to say that. Just out of the blue, I said those words. And no one had told me that who was here. And even who knows who, only the Lord knows who's here right now. But uh, there was a person that come possibly, which I feel like for sure, had come to discredit me a little bit, you know. But I just believe they got their socks blessed off last Sunday when they were here. And, and, and I also know you're watching right now and videotaping everything I say so that it can be used for me and not against me. <laughs> but right over here in this section, let's see, which section was it? Where, where, where was that person? What? Right, right next to the usher's room, there was a person dressed in a real plain white blouse and a cotton dress and a blouse and real just indiscreet, very indiscreet. And that was Diane Sawyer sitting right back there, checking it all out. And they got to enjoy a full-blown Pentecostal church service last Sunday. She got in the prayer line, but didn't get prayed for, you know. She stepped out too quick. This year, if you have noticed on Primetime Live, there are more and more investigations with the hidden cameras where I think you really oh. get to see what's going on. There are times when you, when you, there's no other way to see. Mm -hmm. and that's you're very you identifiable. How do, you, how do you do that? Well, I often don't show up if it's, going to, if it's going to destroy the work of everybody else. And we have a brilliant producer on this story, Robbie Gordon, and a great team of people. You'll see some of them tonight on camera. So tonight we're talking about uh, television evangelists. We are. It started because one time I was traveling and I was flipping the channels and I saw one of them on the air, Robert Tilton, and I became intrigued and we started asking questions and we were led to yet another and yet another and people came to us and said, the there's more you should know. And so tonight we have three of them on the air. And, and I want to say, because I know you all know this, everyone and particularly people when you get near the subject of religion, people, people don't trust reporters on this, and they think that somehow we're out to question faith or belief, and it is not true. I mean, this is something very close to a lot of people. What we set out to do was ask the question, is what is being said on the air true? You're Can we show you whether fraud. it's true or not? Mm. It, we want to know if there's hypocrisy, if it's an impression that isn't correct, there are lots of variations that you're going to see tonight. Well, we have some excerpts from uh, tonight's show. We do. I'll tell this you about this one. This is just a tiny fraction of what you're going to see tonight from the three men. And I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. 
Robert Tilton has the fastest growing ministry on television today. Yeah, well, I'm going to beat you up, you devil. I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. Primetime obtained documents indicating Robert Tilton's followers are sending him at least $80 million a year. And it's tax-free. More about his money tonight. And I want you to make a $1,000 vow of faith. Oh, I know you probably don't have $1,000, but bow it. See, that's the other thing. A number of the people who send in money are people who are sick, people who are desperate. Absolutely. People who are And hoping for a the... miracle in their life. Yes, and again, I mean, we're, we're not here to dispute miracles. Mm -hmm. We're just here to question whether or not what is said on the air is true. Well, they send in the money, but the, but the real problem is what he does with the money. And what does he do with the money? Well, as, you, as you're going to see tonight, um, I'm not going to give it all no, away sure, I understand. yet. But uh, one of the things he says is that he gives a huge amount to missions, or implies that he does. Mm -hmm. They're very careful about this. He implies he gives a lot of money to mission. We tracked down a whole series of missions in his magazine, and I think we figured out that he spends about what he, what he spends on billboards for himself in Dallas is what he spends on the missions. Oh. And this, uh, this is a man whose followers are sending him this huge amount of money. And we'll show you where he lives as yeah. well tonight. Sounds like a fascinating uh, topic. Well, tonight sounds like a great show. It's just like uh, the inside edition, get me on the airplane. Uh, <laughs> cheap shot, total yellow journalism. It's just an anti-Jesus Real Jesus, though they let religious people get along, mosey on down the road. But you let somebody start shaking, rattling, and rolling for Jesus, they get all upset. Besides, that's ratings month. They wouldn't, they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't be doing this sensationalism if it wasn't ratings month. I mean, and interrupting Kathy and Regis, what a cheap shot. You know what they were doing? They sent out promos to all the newspapers, got on all their stuff, so to build their ratings, so that they would have the highest ratings on their on the prime time, so that they could sell commercials for a higher cost to all of the commercial buyers. And I wonder how much Diane Sawyer makes to slander men of God. I mean, I wonder how much she makes. I wonder what kind of moral ethics she has. I wonder who she associates with and where she goes and what she does. I wonder if she could stand the, the magnifying glass. November 21st, 1991. I'll tell you something, the harder the devil kicks at me, the harder I'm going to kick back at him. God can get glory out of it. I understand that pain. Tonight, an undercover investigation of televangelists. You've never met anyone quite like Robert Tilton before. He heads today's fastest growing TV ministry. He takes in millions of tax-free dollars. As those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. He says he has divine inspiration about what viewers need and how much they should give him. And you need to make a $5,000 value. But an old buddy of Tilton's remembers how in college it was all a big joke. Oh, dear God, come into this young woman's life here tonight. Tonight, we take hidden cameras into Tilton's ministry from his offices to the marketing company he uses to his luxurious homes. You'll see how the businessman deposits followers' money directly into the bank, but has a shocking place for their prayers and dreams. From ABC News, with anchors Diane Sawyer, Sam Donaldson, this is Prime Time. Prime Time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. Sam is off tonight. As we all know, the United States was founded on a principle of religious liberty, and the laws give wide latitude to religious institutions here. Take television ministries. Even though they use public airwaves to raise tax-free funds, there's very little monitoring of what they broadcast. Members of Congress acknowledge that most of them are afraid of going near these sensitive political issues. So Primetime decided to look around. The following is the result of a four-month investigation. We culled through bank transactions, property records, databases, traveled from the churches of Dallas to the banks in Oklahoma to Poland and Haiti. We want to say right from the start that we are in no way questioning faith or religious belief of any kind. In fact, many of the people who helped in this investigation are devoted members of religious organizations, but believe it's important to know the facts. You are now going to meet a man who takes in more money than the income, we figure, of Madonna and Michael Jackson combined. 
As we said before, it takes a lot of money to keep one of these TV ministries on the air. But we had been told that making money and marketing are what this man does best. People said his organization is a state-of-the-art factory for donations, all for the operations and bank accounts of the Robert Tilton Ministry. <laughs> And I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. This is Robert Tilton. He has the fastest growing ministry on television today. Viewers are riveted by his melodrama, his quirky style. I love you. And he parlays all of it into a high tech church in Dallas and more airtime than almost any other televangelist. I'll say yes, Lord. Tilton takes in so much money, he makes other TV ministers look like amateurs. And I want you to make a thousand dollar vow of faith. Oh, I know you probably don't have a thousand dollars, but vow it. Try to find out how much money Tilton makes and you discover the ministry is shrouded in secrecy. The pastor has bodyguards. His offices are sealed off with armed security and surveillance cameras. But Primetime obtains some of Tilton's financial documents. These are daily deposits, and based on these, Tilton's followers send his ministry conservatively $80 million a year, tax-free. Good morning and welcome to Word of Faith Family Church. Tilton's televised service is an expensive multimedia variety hour, but for all his flashy style, Tilton insists he's still a simple preacher who cares about the sickness and suffering of his followers. Bones, go together! Now move it around. Start moving it around. Start thanking God. Who else in severe pain? He also tells followers he'll pray for their miracles, so they should send him money. Today is a miracle day. In this fundraising campaign two months ago, Tilton told followers he was making a pilgrimage to the mountains just for them. Separated myself from the hustle and bustle of the city life, just as Jesus withdrew himself and went to the mountainside to pray. Like Jesus? The Bible says Jesus went to fast and separate himself from worldly things. Pastor Bob flew first class to a posh ski resort in Colorado three suitcases for five days, a room with a fireplace. He even brought his own television along while asking followers to send in money. Yes, ma'am. So we decided to take hidden cameras to see what we could learn about Robert Tilton's fundraising. It led us first to the nerve center of his ministry, the company that organizes his direct mail. It's called Response Media. Uh, Bob is, is uh, he's, he's doing far better than anyone knows. Jim Moore is president of Response Media. He handles not only Tilton, but a number of big corporate accounts. We told Moore that we were media consultants for this man, Dallas Minister Ole Anthony. We asked him to show us how to start a big money ministry like Tilton's. Give him something free. You know, we want to mail you the latest copy of X and get the name and address. No. New names is the key. Okay. New names, just I think, new names. We learned that Good once God. people give you their names, it's easy to keep them on the hook. You mail them something with a gimmick in it. First of all, when you send an item in it, it gets their attention. That's number one. Tilton sends out an avalanche of things he asks viewers to send back to him. Miracle prayer clause he promises to touch and place upon an altar. Cords he says he'll place on a wall of deliverance arrows he'll use to take aim at a sufferer's needs. A tracing, place your hand there and he'll put his hand there too. There's holy water from the River Jordan, miracle anointing oil. Though Moore said Taiwan. some of the items come from that holy place, Taiwan. The letters accompanying the items are written by ghost writers to pressure followers to write back and make donations too. Does it work? People send them in by the truckloads. It's a great marketing scheme. There is a feeling of obligation to send it back, and they do. And usually if they're going to send it back, oh, I'll go ahead and put $5 in. Uh, it just, I'm not sure exactly all the reasons why it works, but I can tell you from years and years of experience, it does. And when the letters arrive, they're processed so the company knows which fundraising appeals you can use to squeeze followers for the most donations. Okay. 
compliance files and we run them up against demographic information and create a, um, a profile of who their people are. Uh, how many people have cars that are um, new? So it's market research, not God, who can tell Tilton which appeals reach the richest donors, which illnesses create the most dollar opportunities. Someone had a growth. I just saw a growth being healed. And Tilton creates the impression that after he pays for his overhead and all that expensive airtime, the money goes to good works like these, his missions around the world. But we track down every charitable contribution of Tilton we could find, and we calculate he spends more in a year on billboards around Dallas than he does on all of these missions combined. And what about this mission, Tilton's Orphanage in Haiti? Tilton uses three different names for his Haiti orphanages. So when we went to Haiti, we asked the government officials in charge of foreign missions if they'd heard of any of Tilton's orphanages. They said no. So nothing from Robert Tilton here. And Tilton's marketing director made it clear when it comes to money for missions, Tilton is very smart. He's careful not to say what donation goes where, so he can avoid, again, how Jim and Tammy got caught. They could have, they could have taken as much money as they wanted to and never gotten in trouble. Yeah. See, that's why. So you advise clients to sort of keep it non-specific? Well, if you can raise it being non-specific, I always recommend that. Uh, it isn't, and, and Tilton does that, but yeah. I mean, he's, but he's never... He's never raised money for a specific project. I tell you, you never heard a TV preacher asking for money like this before. Robert Tilton, as I knew him, was practicing to become a salesman. That was his concept of success. Was to this man who salesman. wanted anonymity is just one of several old friends of Robert Tilton who talked to us. He remembers when they were in college, they would use drugs or get drunk and go off to tent revivals as a kind of sport. And we'd be drunk and uh, go down front, fall to our knees, uh, speak in tongues. I think that anybody who was there would realize that some people are going to believe anything. And all you have to do is capitalize on that belief. Tilton and his friends started developing parodies, so-called Jesus raps of their own. Oh dear God, come into this young woman's life here tonight. She has a need to find Christ. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we believe in prayer. We believe in miracles. I personally thought I was a lot better at it than he was. Tilton, who never finished college, admits he was a drug user, but says he was saved when some people came to his house and explained Christ. I just changed. I just fell in love with everybody. But he never tells followers how he and his friends talked about running preacher scams and cashing in. We said that when we graduated, that we would buy a good tent, a dynamite sound system, a good amen section and fly around the country and get rich. We sold everything that we had and bought an old ragged tent and a big old truck and a travel trailer and we headed out to tell people about this gospel of Jesus. That was 1974 when Tilton started out and by 1981 he had hit the big time. How? Primetime has learned that for several years, Tilton courted a man news accounts have tied to organized crime and drug smuggling. Herman Beebe, a financier whose banks gave Tilton a $1.3 million loan, though Tilton claims he never met the man. And after Tilton got the money, he got a new image too, a permanent wave for his hair, plastic surgery, and like his good buddy Jim Baker, a talent for tears on demand. He says, I was washing my face this morning, all the cancer fell off. And we were there one day with Hidden Camera, when he made it clear the tears of his followers are good for the TV pitch, too. But I'm thinking so many people crying, you know, the, the ones with the emotion, the crying, the bending over, the, the running, and then the crowd shots, and all that going on. 
I thought I was coming there to really help people and to minister to their needs. And Bill Hardy left the Tilton ministry after two years as a telephone prayer minister, taking calls from desperate followers. In July of 1989, a computer was installed to keep track of our times. And so uh, we had to basically be off the line in seven minutes. Hardy showed us the phone scripts, which directed ministers to get a minimum vow of $100 from each caller. We truly became the McDonald's of ministry. We were selling our ministry for money. And if Hardy felt he was taking advantage of the callers, imagine how this woman felt. Elizabeth Montcalm, a temporary employee at AT&T. When Tilton went to Israel last year, she and others at AT&T were asked to pose as Tilton prayer ministers. I got people calling about their sons being on drugs or alcoholics or husbands being uh, an alcoholic. I mean, people are telling you their most inter intimate secrets, their personal stuff about themselves. And here I am, you know, <laughs> just a temporary employee from AT&T. AT&T has since stopped taking Tilton's calls. He now uses people off the street. The Lord spoke to me and said, Bob, I'm sending you to people that have nothing. And his followers believe what Tilton says about himself in the ministry magazine, that he only gets a salary set by an independent firm and one perk, a parsonage. But could this be the parsonage in Swank Rancho, Santa Fe, California? a $4.5 million Lakeview home with pool, jacuzzis, thousands of dollars in furnishings, a four-car garage for Tilton's Mercedes. Though the title is in the name of Tilton's lawyer, Tilton has lived here for the past two years, and the house was paid for in cash. Or is this the parsonage in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where Tilton has just bought a $132,000 boat? This time, he put the house in the name of a holding company, allegedly for security. But according to bank documents, it's Tilton who owns it. And Tilton's ministry is building yet another home in Las Colinas, Texas, while in the meantime, renting a fourth home, also in Texas, for $6,000 a month. And take a look at this. Primetime obtained a document which shows that, although the ministry is a corporation, Tilton personally has access to all its wealth almost as if it were a sole proprietorship. In his personal loan application, Tilton's bank says he has one and a half million dollars in cash and CDs. He has access to 14 million dollars in treasury bills and real estate bought at a cost of 40 million dollars. That's in all 60 million dollars in assets available to Tilton and those are the ones he puts on the list. There's only his board to hold him accountable. So who's on the board? Tilton, his secretary, and his wife. God gave me this truth. He didn't send me to the rich, fat cats that think they got it made and don't need God or preachers. He sent me to people that are beat up, that are hurting. But how much does Tilton really care about the beat up and the hurting? We kept thinking about something the head of the direct mail operation told us. That the mail doesn't go to Tilton. It's forwarded unopened to Tilton's bank in Tulsa. So the bank opens the follower's mail, not to share the agony, but to get the money. The bank opens the letters that come right. back in. And takes your money and puts it in your account. All we get is the paper document and how much the person gave. And those items that people have prayed over and sent in, believing Robert Tilton would touch them and pray over them too. Well, if some made it to Tilton, there are thousands that didn't. We found them in the garbage at the bank and the marketing research center. The angels of God, the prayer cords, the arrows. This person wanted his aimed at getting a real dad. The tracing where Tilton said he'd place his hand, ripped up by the bank. We found heartbreaking appeals from followers and letters like this one. It came with personal photographs for Pastor Bob and a prayerful message. It also came with a $7,000 pledge. The money probably made it to Tilton. The prayers went in the trash. Robert Tilton refused Primetime's repeated request for an interview. 
By the way, we don't know how much Tilton officially claims as his salary now, but Tilton ministry sources say as far back as 1985, Tilton and his wife clad a salary of $400,000 a year. A special thanks now to Robbie Gordon and associate producer Kelly Sutherland and the others on our investigative team. And a final word of thanks to that Dallas minister you saw, Ole Anthony of the Trinity Foundation, who helped us gain access to key parts of this investigation. His ministry is involved with the homeless and the local community, and he is a fierce critic of big money TV preachers. But before we leave, we'll sit with him for a moment to ask him about followers, the faith, and search for a congregation. The belonging of a man's heart is for community, for a sense of, of being able to lay down his life for something important. That can't happen with a television tube. But there are people who come forward and say, I got a miracle. Because of what the money I gave, because I watched, I did get a miracle. Did you ever see The Wizard of Oz? Dorothy got her heart's desire. The Tin Man received his heart's desire. The Lion received his heart's desire. And the straw man received his heart's desire, even though the wizard was a charlatan. Why? Because the God of the universe was already resident within them. He just had to be let out. So what do you say to the person sitting at home, watching? Let's open your eyes and look at the need around you. Give to that need instead of some faraway evangelist that's talking you into playing a heavenly lottery or a heavenly slot machine. And they'll get those miracles they They'll want. get all the miracles that are promised. They'll get a hundredfold blessing returned onto them. Holy Anthony. This is the News 8 Update. The state of Texas wants to know if Brother Bob is defrauding the faithful. And for the first time, the state attorney general reveals he is investigating popular Dallas-based TV evangelist Robert Tilton for possible fraud and deception. Television preachers take in millions of dollars from faithful viewers, but critics say some of them use dishonest, even illegal methods to fill the collection plate. Now, the Texas Attorney General is investigating the minister called one of the richest and most theatrical of them all. Now, well, I'm gonna beat you up, you devil. I'm gonna cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. Once you catch Reverend Bob Tilton's TV show, you won't forget it. The flamboyant Texan jumps, shouts, sings, pleads, cries, prays, and heals the sick and the lame, or so he claims. But Brother Bob's rarest talent, ABC News reports, is getting his followers to open their pockets and send him $80 million a year. Critics of the Dallas-based televangelist say he doesn't pray for souls, but prays on victims. Now, the Texas Attorney General is conducting a formal investigation of Tilton's Word of Faith ministry, looking into whether all that money goes where the preacher says it goes. Lawyer Steve Gardner of the AG's Dallas office had a preview of the ABC primetime story. We're going to continue an investigation to see what Brother Bob is up to. Our inquiry is going to be directed primarily at learning whether or not uh, this money is going to help people's souls or just line Brother Bob's wallet. If they're talking about our father, and our father isn't, doesn't, doesn't reward greed. Dallas Pastor Ole Anthony has investigated televangelists himself. He helped ABC News get a close look at Bob Tilton. I saw that what they were preaching was like going to Las Vegas. It's going like to, to a spiritual Las Vegas. You send in a thousand dollars and God's going to bless you a hundredfold, but you have to hold your face just right. Assistant Dallas DA Norm Kinney and Ted Steinke of his specialized crime division also watched the ABC report. Steinke said with television preachers, it's tough to prove they're breaking the law. It may be uh, dishonest, it may be reprehensible, but that doesn't automatically make it criminal. Assistant AG Steve Gardner says he's received complaints about how Tilton operates, asking for an investigation. But when it's a faith in God that is being abused, that's the most cold, manipulative, and chilling kind of fraud I know of. And what does Bob Tilton think about all this? Reached by Channel 8 reporter Peggy Waymeyer, Tilton said through a spokesman, I have less than nothing to say to you. The outcome of this investigation may be a long way off. But some feel, if nothing else, it will warn people to be very careful about who they send money to. It's like I've always been taught. Be wary of people who say, send your money to Jesus and give you their address. 
why can't you tell us how much he takes in? Because it's none of your business. I just told you that. You're being repetitious. And I'm not going to tell you that. I will tell the criminal investigators that you will not be invited. Televangelist Robert Tilton and his supporters go on the offensive amid allegations of deception and fraud in the Word of Faith ministry. Well, Tilton's lawyer says he will open Word of Faith's financial accounts to law officers because they are the only ones to which the ministry is accountable. But apparently that doesn't go for those who send Tilton money in the hopes their prayers can be answered. Channel 8's Rene San Miguel has the latest. Robert Tilton's lawyers and followers are beginning to fire back at ABC News and the press in general following Thursday night's Primetime America broadcast. The show alleged that the Dallas area minister and his Word of Faith church practiced deceitful and possibly illegal tactics to get money from supporters. We'll give it to the people that are entitled to know. You're not one of them. In Tulsa, Tilton attorney J.C. Joyce announced he would open the church's account books Tuesday to any law agency that wanted to see them. But he told a Tulsa reporter that the press and even those who send Tilton money are not invited. The people don't want to give money to this church. They don't want to belong to this church. They don't have to belong to this church. People don't have any uh, reason to know where their money goes. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There is nothing that requires that. In the law? Nothing. But you're, you're going according to the strictest... Uh, not the strictest, the broadest. That's freedom of religion. As expected, the ABC report was the favorite lunchtime topic during a Word of Faith luncheon in Las Colinas Saturday. And those attending were quick to come to Tilton's defense concerning the $80 million ABC News says Tilton takes in annually. I think that that's what he preaches, is to prosper. And I've been uh, vowing, making vows, and paying my tithes, and it's working. If there is anybody who is so caring and compassionate, it's Robert Tilton. You have to really take the time to visit with us and find out what exactly we do. A Dallas evangelist who used to work for Tilton before she was fired two years ago says she's not surprised by what ABC found. And I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. The evangelist told Channel 8's Michael Hill that Word of Faith was more interested in getting credit card information from callers rather than hearing appeals for help. That it's more like a carnival atmosphere than a sincere ministry. The ABC report has already prompted investigations by the Texas Attorney General's office and the Dallas County DA. No word yet if they'll be on hand Tuesday when Tilton's financial records are opened. Pastor Bob is doing well. He is full of the Holy Ghost. He's right now in Puerto Rico as scheduled in a revival crusade. Marty will be speaking to you. Marty Tilton will be speaking to you just a few minutes. In just a few minutes, she'll be coming and sharing some things with her heart, what God has put in her heart to say, especially to you. Now, let's join the service already in progress right here at Word of Faith. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You may be seated. In the absence of my husband today, who is on a scheduled crusade out of the country, I would like to address not only our congregation, but our television viewing audience this morning. We've been judged, tried, and convicted since Thursday of criminal charges not by a judge and a jury but by the press we have a man of God who has proclaimed all-out war to bring Robert Tilton down who has stooped himself to the position and fallen prey into the hands of the press to destroy a ministry, we should pray for him today. Amen. One who rolls a stone and tries to dig a pit for another generally falls in it, the Bible tells us. Amen. Unfortunately, this man of God and the press would like to dictate to you what you can and cannot believe by creating stories. 
But since we are people of integrity and we have scrutinized ourselves for the last six years and every staff member can tell you that, they can't pick up a telephone and call and purchase an order or anything without writing it down on a piece of paper and it being approved. And then the attorney scrutinizes everything of that and says, you don't need that. Well, that's tough scrutinizing. And we have done that to ourselves for the last six years. But Bob and I are honest people, and so we have said to our attorney, we waive our attorney-client privileges, and we ask for no subpoenas. There is, it's not necessary. We would like for all people who say they are investigating us, the state attorney general, the district attorney of Dallas, the IRS, the FBI, anyone who would like to look at our books that is an institution that governs us, we invite them to come to our attorney's office on Tuesday morning, November 26 at 10 a.m., 515 South Main Mall, Tulsa, Oklahoma. He has all of our records and our books, and you're welcome to view them and ask any questions that you have. You gotta be quiet, they've given me 30 seconds more. I'm not asking the Catholic Church to be investigated today. I'm not asking the Baptist Church to be investigated today, nor the Methodist, nor this minister who has come against the ministry through the press. We are asking for our freedom of religion to be able to worship our God in the way that we interpret the scriptures. We don't do it at their invitation. It's kind of the other way around. We'll be in touch. No Texas investigators will take up the invitation by Robert Tilton's lawyer, which is to go to Tulsa and look at the financial records. And it appears that at least six law enforcement agencies plan to look into the ministry of the Dallas TV preacher. Since ABC News profiled Tilton and other evangelists on its primetime live broadcast last Thursday, the flamboyant preacher has refused to talk to the news media or answer any questions. Tilton's lawyer has been doing all the talking. Attorney J.C. Joyce told reporters he and Tilton have nothing to hide. He offered to open up the books and let investigators look at everything. But it seems that no one is accepting that invitation. Chenley's Bill Brown is following all of this and joins us now with the very latest. Bill? Well, Chip, the Texas people involved are not impressed with the invitation from Robert Tilton's lawyer. It appears no Texans will be going up to Tulsa tomorrow. The Texas Attorney General's office is leading the investigation into Tilton's Word of Faith family church. In Dallas, Assistant AG Steve Gardner told us in due time his people will contact Tilton's people and start going over the books, but not in the way Tilton's lawyer proposed it. Normally, a part of any investigation that involves allegations of financial fraud does involve uh, going to the banks in question so we can see the records, absolutely. Uh, normally, we don't go out of state to visit somebody's defense lawyer, though. The authorities now expect six local, state, and federal law enforcement agencies to work together looking for evidence that the popular TV preacher practices theft, fraud, or deception of his huge television audience. Since an ABC News broadcast last Thursday, more complaints have come in against Tilton, some from Texas and some from other states. And it has become obvious the investigation will be larger than expected as the other agencies come in. They contacted us, and there may have been one or two instances where we've gone to them. We're, we're just trying to pull everything together, and we will be, uh, I hope, acting as a focal point for uh, bringing the enforcement authorities together. And we're headed down a lengthy and detailed investigation of uh, the practices of Brother Bob and his television ministry. Assistant AG Steve Gardner told us today the investigation of Tilton and his church will eventually involve six law enforcement agencies working together. The attorney heading the AG's part of it in Austin says now the IRS will definitely join also the Texas Comptroller's Office looking into possible tax violations. With Tilton in Puerto Rico, his wife Marty led the service on Sunday. She questioned whether there really is an investigation. No district attorney in Dallas has called us. 
No state attorney general has called us. No FBI agents have appeared on our doorsteps. No IRS agents have come or called. And I ask you about the integrity of the press today. In his absence, Tilton is still being seen nationwide on videotape. After a short halt, his telephone bank is reopened, with church workers again taking pledges for money from the viewers. Robert Tilton charges that postal workers have been caught stealing letters intended for his ministry, and that theft may be the reason some prayer requests have gone unanswered. But postal officials say Tilton is exaggerating. Now, we've had some postal people steal it. My God, we've had postal people steal money. How many? Four postal workers in the last month stealing money out of the envelopes. Now, if you have not been receipted and thanked for your donation, what, Marty? They throw in the request and, in the trash. and they throw the request in the trash of the ditch. We just had a man a few days ago got, found a whole bag of our mail thrown in a ditch next to a drive-in. You know what they do to some of these people? Not much. Slap their little hand. We uh, identified an individual last Wednesday for uh, stealing some mail from uh, Word of Faith, but um, four times in the, in the past month is a little exaggerated. You know, the amount of mail we're talking is, is min, min, minimal. Uh, for example, the individuals might be taking uh, five to ten pieces when we apprehend them versus maybe 10,000 that came in that day for that particular ministry. The postal inspector said five individuals have been caught stealing Word of Faith mail during the past two years. Law enforcement officials in Texas have said they intend to investigate the Robert Tilton organization. But the ministry's attorney says he wants an investigation of his own. Channel 6 reporter Brent Harden has the story. The report accused this television evangelist, Robert Tilton, of fleecing his followers and then failing to pray over their prayer requests as he promises to do. The report said the prayer requests wind up in the trash instead. Tilton's attorney says that report was a hatchet job. And that piece was deliberately presented to make it appear that the Robert Tilton ministry is guilty of mail fraud. So today, Joyce outlined for Channel 6 the process by which Tilton's mail is handled. Tilton's Dallas-based ministry, Word of Faith, sends a list of potential contributors to a Tulsa company called Response Media. Response Media prints the mail-outs, like these samples, and sends them to the potential contributors on the list. By special arrangement with the Postal Service, the return mail from Tilton's followers is delivered not in Dallas, but here in Tulsa. The Tulsa Post Office forwards the mail to Commercial Bank and Trust downtown. Here the mail is opened under tight security. J.C. Joyce says bank employees are monitored by video cameras as they open each envelope, take out the check, record the amount of the contribution on the outside envelope, and then throw what's left in a special bin. Joyce says the mail in that special bin includes the prayer request from Tilton's followers. He says it's picked up daily by another Tulsa company called Internal Data Management. Joyce says IDM keeps a computer record of the contributors and the amount of their contributions. Last week's controversial report on the ABC network alleged that some prayer requests get thrown in the trash after the contributions are removed. But Joyce says IDM separates the prayer requests and makes sure they get to Robert Tilton. Any unnecessary mail that's left is picked up and incinerated. Every single day there's a shipment that goes from IDM down to Robert Tilton. And you say for every one of these things that comes back in the mail from a follower of the ministry, these two pieces are going to go back to the ministry. Yes. Joyce says once they get there, the requests do indeed receive the personal attention Tilton promises his followers. Tilton's mail comes not to him, but to this South Tulsa branch of Commercial Bank and Trust. News 8 has learned details of what goes on inside from interviews with two former workers and others familiar with the operation. They describe it as massive, involving not just Tilton's ministry, but three others as well. Fifteen workers sort through thousands of pieces of mail every day. In a secret room known as the lockbox, they pull out the checks and the cash, hundreds of thousands of dollars every day. On busy days, a night shift is called in. For people who think Robert Tilton actually reads what they send him, Tilton's attorney has an answer. No, there's not any man in the world that can answer 300,000 pieces of mail or read 300,000 pieces of mail. And you know, if you present that like there's something wrong with that, well, then you're a moron.
Primetime estimated Tilton takes in $80 million a year, all of it tax-free. Tilton's attorney was asked how much of that is spent on fundraising. None. Not a cent. This church is about saving souls and reaching people and trying to convert them to Jesus Christ. Everything he does is to that end. None of it has anything to do with fundraising. That's what we're trying to find out. Is there fraud? Is there deception? If so, I think we'll come down with Mike a ton of bricks. Law enforcement agencies investigating evangelist Robert Tilton meet to plan their strategy as the TV preacher returns after a crusade in Puerto Rico. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Tilton still stoutly claims he has done nothing wrong and that he is the target of a media conspiracy. Now, word comes that the FBI has joined others looking into the controversial minister and his church. Jesus said, As the preacher makes his pitch to the viewers, investigators plan how they will take a close look at him and his lucrative television empire. Police officers and lawyers came to Dallas for a kind of summit meeting at the office of the state attorney general. On hand were two detectives from the Farmers Branch Police, lawyers from the Charity Division of the AG's headquarters in Austin, and Ted Steinke, the head of the Dallas County District Attorney's Specialized Crime Unit. Other involved agencies, such as the IRS, did not send their people. They all met here to plot their strategy in what will be a detailed and lengthy investigation of one of the most successful television preachers in the country. Reverend Tilton says all this is a conspiracy, that it's the devil at work, the antichrist, everybody's out to get him, he's totally clean, and people just want to bring him down, a man who's doing good works. What about that? Uh, in fact, we don't want to bring anybody down, but we are out to stop any types of fraud that are being perpetrated on uh, people in the name of religion. Late this afternoon, Tilton flew into DFW airport from San Juan, but nobody saw much of him. The man who says he's done nothing wrong and has nothing to hide did manage to hide from reporters and news cameras. An employee of American Airlines escorted Tilton's oldest son, John, to the plane. Then other American workers helped Tilton out a side door of the aircraft and to a waiting car unseen. Well, we certainly know there's a lot of smoke, and we're just trying to clear out the smoke and, and the mirrors and find out what the truth is. A broad civil and criminal investigation of Tilton and his broadcast empire is now taking shape. We have a, a general duty uh, with regard to our charitable trust obligations uh, to ensure that uh, ministries or those who hold themselves out to be ministries are indeed utilizing funds uh, as they indicate publicly uh, they are be, being utilized. While Tilton has successfully avoided reporters, his Tulsa lawyer, well, J.C. Joyce, has been doing most of his talking. On hearing of the meeting in Dallas, Joyce said, assume that some of those people are going to take us up on our offer to come to Tulsa and look at the records. The list of law enforcement agencies checking up on Robert Tilton keeps growing. In Tulsa, KTUL-TV now reports that agents of the FBI are now being assigned to the case. Meanwhile, Robert Tilton says all of this is a satanic conspiracy by the media. They did everything in their power to bring me down. What? Primetime Thursday. Prime Time, from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening and happy Thanksgiving. We start with a Thanksgiving confession tonight. This broadcast is on tape, so we can be with our families too. Last week, we broadcast a series of reports, a hidden camera investigation of some televangelists. Since then, a lot has happened. Last Friday, Tilton responded for his followers. So what? I never preach poverty to you. I said God would provide you with the best. Am I not supposed to? I can tell you, you can have the best, but I ain't supposed to have nothing. Get that religious garbage out of your brain. If we're going to Tilton changed out of his usual suit for his hour-long defense of the ministry. Diane Sawyer knows what she did. We had shown you how prayer requests sent to Tilton those heartbreaking appeals from people who are sick or in need go instead straight to his bank so the bank can get the money. Though Tilton insisted he does personally pray over every request. And not only that, he says he does it so much he became ill. Those prayer request forms have ink on them and uh, all kinds of chemicals. I laid on top of those prayer requests so much 
that the chemicals actually got into my bloodstream begin to swell my capillaries and I'm sure that, that this is going to be really a newsy thing, but I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell it anyway. It got into my immune system, and I had two small strokes in my brain that brought about some numbness in my body. He said this was also the reason he had the plastic surgery we described. I mean, frankly, folks, it was a serious mess. Messed my bottom eyes up. They mentioned that I had some cosmetic surgery. Yeah, I had the, my eyes worked on to try to get the serious bags out from under my eyes and how all those chemicals had messed them up. Tilton said the luxury homes and the brand new boat in Florida were all because of his illness too. His doctor said he had to relax and he doesn't like the conventional way. And I don't like golf because it aggravates me chasing that golf ball all over the golf course and trying to hit it straight and it stresses me more out than it does than, than when I don't play it. So I just soon fish where there are fish. But if Tilton says he prays over all those requests, what accounts for the thousands found in the garbage? That had to be somebody stole those prayer requests and put them in the dumpster just to shoot that picture. No prayer request is ever thrown in a dumpster. And if it has been, it's been stolen and set up there just for photography. But we didn't plant the garbage. We didn't steal it. In fact, what we showed was just some of what was found not once, but on 14 separate occasions in a one-month period. We also remembered how the manager of the direct mail operation Tilton uses explained to our undercover cameras the way most of the items people pray over are handled when they come back in the mail. Now, what about when it comes back? Do we have to? Yeah, don't touch it either. Okay. It we never have to deal with it. We never have to see it. Okay. No. But we talked to some of the people whose letters were in the trash. I feel like a fool. I really feel like I was taken. People like Tammy Newell of Cleveland, Tennessee, who told us since she didn't have the money for a donation, she sent Pastor Bob her most precious possession, her late mother's diamond ring. Thank you, Robert Tilton, for being a true man of God. I, I'm very disappointed. I'm hurt because I really trusted in him to be standing in agreement and prayer with me, and he wasn't. That, to me, is the worst thing that could happen. I mean, to me, that's even worse than taking my money. Laura Watson of Florida also talked about her letter from the trash. She said she had sent the Tilton ministry the little money she could. They asked me would I make a hundred dollars. I told them that I wasn't able to work and I was on disability. Now, if you sent a donation in thinking you were buying a miracle, get real. You don't buy a miracle. A member of Tilton's choir told us Pastor Bob said he had a modest home. I saw that home on TV, and that's not modest, not by, by anybody's stretch of the imagination. I don't want my money going to that. Robert Tilton, a dynamic pastor. And a former prayer minister for Tilton told our Dallas affiliate WFAA, Tilton's organization was not so much a ministry as a marketing machine. She said there were even special prayer ministers assigned to milk large donors for more and more. And they usually opened their conversation with Brother Tilton was thinking about you. And the people on the other end of the phone I know must have thought that this was sincere. And that really tore my heart. Tilton's lawyer, J.C. Joyce, says what happens to the ministry's money is nobody's business including the business of the people who give it. To belong to this church. These people don't have any uh, reason to know where their money goes. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There is nothing that requires that. In the law? Nothing. It's not fair. When you lied, you don't edit that out. I'm the bodyguard of Bob Tilton. I thought it was a bunch of garbage. I'll still go. Tilton, in that televised broadcast, had these closing words. So, until we meet again, happy trails, I love that song, happy trails to you, until we meet again. And Congressman Jake Pickle of Texas told us his subcommittee will likely hold hearings on all this in the new year.
And finally, we heard from someone you may remember from presidential campaigns, Pat Robertson, head of the Christian Broadcasting Network. Robertson said he had refused to air programs from W.V. Grant and added he personally canceled Robert Tilton four years ago from any appearance on his network. One, two, three! You can't go on the air and say, send me your prayer request, let the, let the checks go into a caging operation in a bank and get thrown in the dumpster in the back of the, of the building. That's disgraceful. And of course, we'll continue to follow this story and bring you more in the months to come. There's much more at stake than burn Bob Tilton. There's much more at stake than to burn this congregation, this church, through malicious lies and slander. There's much more at stake. It is the freedom of religion in this country. It's a spirit that thinks that it can get on television and attack us and kick us and treat us like dogs. That's right. And get away with it. I don't know of any other preacher or church that has decided to stand up against them, but we have made a quality decision to stand up for our religious rights and freedoms in this church and against the malicious attacks of the lies of the media. Amen. And now, I want you to give a word of faith family welcome to our attorney, Dr. J.C. Joyce. Diane Sawyers on prime time, an ABC television tabloid, willfully, deliberately, and intentionally made it appear that my client, this church, committed mail fraud. It is even possible that, ABC tele that ABC's fraud against this church was a result of a fraud perpetrated on ABC. That fraud perpetrated by some lunatic supposed Christian organization whose avowed purpose is to destroy the Christian ministry of Robert Tilton. And believe me, there are such people out there. They are slime that periodically call out from under their rock and make themselves heard. When you don't file tax returns and your information's not available to the press, it makes them nervous. Because there's a conspiracy out there to destroy the Christian church in the United States and there's a lot of people in the media that are leading that conspiracy. The ABC affiliate station in Tulsa interviewed me for approximately 40 minutes and then they showed the piece in Tulsa that if you saw, and I hope you all didn't even bother to watch, Prime Time Live on the second piece of yellow journalism, you saw me say that uh, the press doesn't have a right to know and they said do the partners and I said the partners don't have a right to know. I think I need to explain that statement. We had this problem because we kept having people that would call and write, mostly write, and they would say, you know, I am a contributor to your church. Would you send me your financial information? So I would pull them up on the computer, and sure enough, they were a contributor. They gave a dollar the month before. <laughs> well, these people don't want that financial information for any reason except to hurt this church. So we can't know who is or who isn't, because we've seen what ABC does with their lies and yellow journalism, and if the finances of this church were available to any of you, we don't know. So we would spend all of our time sending this information out and all of our time defending ourselves when the people that belong to this church and support this church are not asking that question. Does anybody here want to know that information? Are you satisfied with what Robert Tilton's doing, running his church the way God has led him to run it?
Did you hear that, ABC? Did you hear that, law enforcement? It's these people's money that goes to this church. It's not yours. Mind your own business and get out of the church's business. The head of a Dallas religious watchdog group predicts that Robert Tilton's television ministry won't be around much longer. Ole Anthony, who worked with ABC News on an expose of Tilton and other televangelists, says more revelations about Tilton's operation are coming. Very important to call and write ABC because we demand a ap public apology. While ABC Robert Tilton and his lawyer, J.C. Joyce, rail against ABC News and Diane Sawyer on television, the greatest object of their wrath really is Ole Anthony, who put the network people on Tilton's trail. Anthony is a former political lobbyist and media consultant who now runs the Dallas Trinity Foundation, which keeps an eye on televangelists. Ladies and gentlemen of this huge jury. Last Sunday, Attorney Joyce held a mock trial in which he asked followers of the church to be the jury and decide if the Word of Faith ministry had done anything wrong. The Dallas Times Herald reported the church pays Joyce $143,000 a month. Joyce never actually mentioned Ole Anthony by name, but his picture was flashed on the screen, as the attorney implied that Anthony's group misled ABC. That fraud perpetrated by some lunatic supposed Christian organization whose avowed purpose is to destroy the Christian ministry of Robert Tilton. And believe me, there are such people out there. They are slime. Anthony and his people say they're the ones Joyce calls slime. They're the ones who dug into the trash dumpsters in Tulsa and then gave ABC the church prayer request shown on the air, which Tilton claims were stolen. Now, they're still going through what they found, including financial documents they feel make up a paper trail that leads to criminal fraud. We never came against Christians. We came against charlatans. We came against caricatures of Christ who are making themselves unbelievably wealthy on the backs of the poor who they say they're trying to help. That's who we're coming against. We're coming against these men of God that are eating the sheep instead of feeding them. Among other things, Anthony showed us a list he says is used to put donors into categories, like people who need jobs, so computers can send them letters back. Letters Anthony says often asking for more money. It's form letters. Computer-generated letters. Made to look like personal. Letters. Made to look like they're having personal, heartfelt advice that he's giving out to these people in dire need. He's Anthony says what he found is a multi-million dollar business using religion to raise big bucks. It's a evangelist factory. It's a money-making machine. It's a wheel of fortune. Anthony also showed us some of the thousands of prayer requests he says he found in the trash. Please pray for him. If he loses his job, he will commit suicide. Ended up in the trash. Many, 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 many. All over the place. Trash, trash, trash. This is one of the Tulsa dumpsters Anthony says he dug through. It belongs to attorney J.C. Joyce, who from his Tulsa office helps run Tilton's ministry. Joyce is asking District Attorney David Moss to investigate how Anthony and ABC got what he calls stolen bank documents. Anthony says it was easy. Well, Joyce was our mole. He's the one that, uh, where this, the, in his trash is where we got most of the documents. It's been nearly two weeks since ABC broadcast an hour-long expose on televangelism. Tonight the controversy rages hotter than ever. There are reports that handwritten letters from followers of the embattled evangelist somehow ended up in a North Salsa recycling plant. This follows ABC's story that thousands of similar letters were thrown in the trash. Tonight, News 8's Scott Gordon reports that Tilton's Tulsa lawyer is finding himself in the middle of a growing controversy. This is Robert Tilton appearing on his Sunday TV show. But for much of the hour, it wasn't Tilton at the pulpit. It was J.C. Joyce, Tilton's Tulsa attorney, who launched an all-out defense of the ministry as if the congregation were a court. Ladies and gentlemen of this huge jury, he blasted Primetime Live's report and repeatedly singled out KTUL. The ABC affiliate in Tulsa joined in the deception, stating that I, J.C. Joyce, 
run this ministry from my office. Viewers of Tilton's nationwide program even saw a short clip of a News 8 story. Tilton's pulpit is in Dallas. His multi-million dollar business empire is run almost exclusively in Tulsa, all by attorney J.C. Joyce. Is this hard to believe? Where did we get that information? The first From none other than Joyce himself. Here he was just nine days earlier talking to reporters in his Tulsa office. So I'm not telling you something I think may be going on. I literally know everything about this ministry. And if there was any doubt about it, here was Joyce the day after that. We buy all of everything the, for the Robert Tilton Ministries. We buy their television time. We buy their pencils. We buy their paper clips. We have, I have... Uh, I guess maybe five or six people that do that. And Purchase everything. Is that a company that you own? No. It's, it's me. It's my law firm. It's it was the same news conference in There's which no Joyce said people who give Tilton money have no right to know where it goes. Joyce also says it's nobody's business how much he makes. But Ole Anthony, a Dallas minister who runs a shelter for the homeless and helped report primetime story, showed News 8 a document he says he found in Joyce's trash. It lists how much Joyce makes from Tilton and other TV preachers. Anyway, he gets $176,000 a month retainer from these preachers. That's a lot of money. If Anthony's figures are correct, that's more than $2 million a year, most of it from Tilton. Joyce also is the attorney for Tilton's bank and for his direct mail company. We don't know how much more he makes from them. News 8 has no way to confirm whether Anthony's document is accurate. Joyce declines to talk about it. He's the common link in what Anthony says is a successful plot that cashes in on poor people's faith. It's an evangelist factory. It's a money-making machine. It's a wheel of fortune. Joyce lives in this house in South Tulsa on the tax rolls at $350,000. He says he's not getting rich from TV evangelism. In fact, I had this office before I ever met this man, and I had my house before I ever met this man, and I've gotten rich from practicing law. I also need you to pray for a job. Need you to pray for a job for me because my unemployment has almost run out. More prayer requests that apparently were never forwarded to Reverend Bob Tilton are found at a Tulsa paper recycling company. The Tilton Ministry says it's a glitch in their system, but the discovery has apparently prompted a new investigation of the Tilton Ministry. Dallas Minister Bob Tilton says he personally prays over every prayer request that viewers send him. And he says ABC News lied when its cameras showed prayer requests that had been thrown into a dumpster. But now more prayer requests that never got to Tilton have been found. Channel 8's Peggy Wehmeyer reports tonight from Tulsa. The discarded prayer requests were found yesterday at the Cash for Paper Recycling Center. A TV crew discovered them when they went there to videotape an unrelated environmental story. The recycling center got the paper from Internal Data Management, one of the companies that handles Tilton's direct mail operations. A recycling center official says he has 4,000 pounds of discarded prayer requests and other paper from Tilton's ministry which he cannot recycle. Well, there, it was not a recycling material that I could make any profit off of. I asked them uh, to discontinue, that I would discontinue the service. Uh, they still bring it to me. Two weeks ago, Tilton charged that someone had stolen prayer requests that ABC News found in two Tulsa dumpsters. But spokesmen for both Tilton's Word of Faith ministry and his direct mail operation say the prayer request found yesterday at the recycling center got there by mistake. Given the thousands and the many documents that we send on a daily basis to uh, Word of Faith, uh, there is that opportunity that some slip through and didn't catch it. Mm -hmm. uh, we, it could be an error on our part. It looks like that there is a glitch and that these may never have gone to Robert Tilton. Tilton's attorney again accuses outsiders. These uh, people that have avowed that their purpose is to destroy Robert Tilton Ministries and have been doing so for quite a while, they could well have caused this glitch to happen in the system. An official at the recycling center said the direct mail company thought the papers were being destroyed. He says he asked them if they wanted to pay to have the document shredded, but they declined. 
By midday Thursday, all the papers had been hauled away from the recycling center on the orders of federal law enforcement agents. The prayer requests and other materials were reportedly taken to a U.S. government compound somewhere in Tulsa. An agent who was at the recycling company today would not say who he represented, but a postal service official has confirmed that his agency is conducting an investigation of Tilton's ministry on behalf of the U.S. Attorney's Office. J.C. Joyce has said that prayer requests and documents seen on ABC's primetime live report may well have been stolen and planted in the trash. And he wonders whether the requests we found today also were planted at the recycling facility. Yeah, I think you got set up too. You know, I think somebody stole these documents and somebody planted them at the recycling plant so you would find them. J.C. Joyce has asked District Attorney David Moss to investigate the documents that ABC's Primetime Live obtained for its report to see if they were stolen. And now, more prayer requests are found in the trash. David Moss has yet to decide, however, if he's going to investigate any of this. Brad, there, were, there was a huge box, three or four boxes of those there. They had staples in them. They were set aside by the recycling plant. And they were mixed in there with all sorts of envelopes. Now, how could those have just been randomly put there by someone? Well, what, what basically what the attorney for IDM has told me is that uh, these prayer requests appear to have just been in there mistakenly. They, they were not marked off in any way. Uh, it was just a mistake, is, is what they're saying. That, that's different than saying we were set up. Yeah, exactly. Now, that, that is different. Yeah. The, the IDM is not saying that at all. Postal inspectors have started an investigation into the Dallas Televangelist Ministry. Jim Travel, a spokesman for the U.S. Postal Service down in Fort Worth, says the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Tulsa has asked postal inspectors for help. The U.S. Attorney in Tulsa, Tony Graham, says he can't confirm or deny the investigation. This development comes at the same time Robert Tilton's lawyer, J.C. Joyce of Tulsa, says he's through answering questions from the media. Tulsa lawyer J.C. Joyce appeared on Robert Tilton's program last Sunday to discredit attacks on Tilton's church aired by ABC's Primetime Live. The main source for ABC's information is Ole Anthony, who runs the Dallas Trinity Foundation, which monitors televangelists. That man through the years has talked to every fired employee of this church. He's talked to uh, employees of the church. And he has never been able to find where this church has done anything wrong. So he tried to frame this church. When we found more letters intended for Tilton at this North Tulsa paper recycling center, Joyce said it was another part of the conspiracy to destroy Tilton's church. Anthony calls that allegation ridiculous. He says he doesn't care about Robert Tilton or J.C. Joyce. Anthony says he wishes Tilton would sell everything he has and give it back to the poor. No questions. I will not dignify this anymore. You have heard the story. You're talking about Thank Ole. you. You're talking about Ole Anthony. You don't hear very well. As far as J.C. Joyce is concerned, he's had it with the media attention and refuses to answer any more questions about the Tilton ministry. Comes up with an allegation. Gentlemen, ladies, you're excused. But if the pastor is weak, the sheep will be weak. If the pastor's healthy, the sheep will be healthy. Yeah. Might as well go the rest of the way. Yeah. If the pastor's prosperous, the sheep will be prosperous. I've, I've seen an old adage come to pass in the last few days. One's man, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. <laughs> that sounds like headlines to me. I'm trying to help you folks out there. I know you need all the help you can get. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spectrum. Is God for sale? Can you buy salvation from a TV preacher? 
A broader question, is it anybody's business except those who believe how a TV evangelist uses the money his followers send him? Well, the top money man on TV today is Dallas Minister Bob Tilton. Some people say what he does with the millions of dollars he hauls in does deserve investigation because of the way he peddles the pulpit of prosperity. Exactly a year ago on this very program, we discussed Brother Bob's ways. Since then, ABC's Prime Time has conducted its own investigation of Tilton, which has fired up prosecutors here in Texas to begin their own investigation. Tilton says this is all a violation of his constitutional rights of freedom of religion. Is it? We want to know if people gave money to what they believed was a charity, such as an orphanage in Haiti, that those children in Haiti saw the money that those people gave, and that the money was not instead spent on some fancy house or a boat or first-class travel for Brother Bob or whatever. Pastor Tilton does live well. He rents a mansion in Las Colinas while his new mansion is being built a few blocks away. He has a million dollar mansion out in San Diego and has a waterfront house down in South Florida, a big yacht out front, and he rides around in nothing less than Mercedes style. Tilton doesn't apologize for his lifestyle. In fact, he says he preaches prosperity and should practice what he preaches. We invited Pastor Tilton and his attorney J.C. Joyce to be with us for this discussion, this empty chair represents their response to that invitation. Now, Ole, they say that you lied to get in there, you know, that you went with ABC and said you were a minister trying to start a big money uh, no, ministry like, like uh, Bob Tilton's no, to get in to respond. That's not right. Okay. We, I went in as myself. We were in negotiation at the time with, with Fox Television mm -hmm. to, to produce a talk show. And we went in to Response Media to ask them what and what's a, what's a way? How would you handle the anticipated large amounts of mail that would come in? That's what the basis upon going in there. Did you ever discuss with them, though, in specific, what Tilton does? They voluntarily use Tilton as the reason that we should sign them, sign with them. They were using Tilton as their greatest success. They showed we we had two hours of, of, on that hidden camera. There was two hours of, of him selling us on how much he has done for Tilton. In fact, his quote was to us that Brother Bob was losing it. He was, he was going out of business until 1986 when he signed with us. We made him. We can do the same for you. Now, when, when you were there, you were going over their ability in computerized lists to go through demographics, match exactly. up people so they can get the most money from, from uh, the what group of people. Did they say specifically that Tilton uses that demographic service to match names with big money contributors? They are in, in a business relationship with another Tulsa company called Internal Data Management. And they, we have memos that show their seminars where they use the, the, the demographics to see how the best way to conduct these mailings. They use what they call in the marketing terms an A-B split. You remember the last time I was here we brought all those obscene posters he sends out? Right. Well, they decided that the posters were too expensive. So they're, there's, in their marketing scheme they had what's called an A-B split to determine whether or not they would get just as much money if they didn't spend the money to print the poster. So they sent half of the, half of the letters with the poster, half of them with just a letter. Ola, you and ABC say your investigation showed the vials of holy water that Tilton uh, offered as being from the River Jordan were actually acquired by response media from Taiwan. That's let me not right. Well, we okay, did what, not what, say that. You think he got the water from Jordan? Of course he gets it, but it's a joke. It's a sh Even if everything he said was right, it's spiritual sorcery. They're going to... You're, you're, but did he mislead people if it's from the River Jordan, whether it's processed water or not? But the point is, we have evidence, we have people that testified on, 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 the, on, a, on, a, on a television station in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Let's say they had all these part-time employees. And that, the, the problem with all these organizations, their weakness are their, is their trash, their janitors, and their part-time employees. Mm -hmm. That say that whenever they run out of water, they just go back to the tap. <laughs> they run out of holy oil, they go down to the, the, to the supermarket and buy a, a bottle of, of, of uh, safflower oil. I mean, do you, do you understand? It's a sham. It's a joke. And you believe that, that that constitutes fraud that should be investigated? I believe that his whole persona, especially the idea of... I mean, do you understand this? He says, he claims that he takes every one of these prayer requests 
lays over them to the extent that the ink from the prayer request sort of chelates into his body and his lower eyes get messed up so he has to have plastic surgery. And he, and he probably, he, he lays on him so strong that his, that his hair gets so messed up that he has to have permanence every week. And he lays on this so bad that, it, that, it, that he has to have make more makeup and on than, than who Tammy Faye that. Baker. And there are people who believe that. I mean, he makes Tammy Faye look like she's sweet. Why is it wrong for somebody to believe that, though? If it's they wrong. believe it, if, if they find Christ that way, what's wrong with that? If that's how they find look, look, Christ. Look, Mike, let's, be, let's, be, let's look at this. Are you greedy? Oh, uh, some say I am. Yeah. Well, of course you are. <laughs> the human race is greedy. And if you can find a spiritual leader that justifies your greed, you will elevate him to the highest point, the highest pinnacle. And that's where you and say Robert And that's what Tilton Robert Tilton is. He's a spiritual leader, allegedly, that elevates greed. The Dallas minister who helped ABC News investigate TV evangelist Robert Tilton today showed reporters thousands of pages of documents collected during the six-month investigation. Trinity Foundation President Ole Anthony says most of the prayer requests addressed to Tilton not only fail to reach him, but are never intended to reach him. At the bank, the money is taken out. If it doesn't have a legible name and address, it goes to the trash there. Here are some of the prayer requests that Anthony said he found in the bank's trash. One says, to be opened by Robert Tilton only, please. Jimmy was supposed to have a personal prayer appointment in October with Tilton. And where did you find that? In the trash at the bank. Both Tilton's bank and his direct mail company, Internal Data Management, deny they've ever knowingly thrown prayer requests in the trash. In fact, an internal 1988 IDM memo found by Anthony orders IDM employees not to throw prayer requests into the shred box. But the same memo seems to confirm that Tilton never even sees the prayer requests of his followers. It says the key is to document each piece and to treat it as though it were to be read and handled by Pastor Tilton himself. What would he have done with this document to serve the people the best way he could? Anthony says computers answer Tilton's mail. If you have a sister that is ready to commit suicide, they put the code in this computer that says, say for instance, AB64. Well, AB64 then will automatically generate a personalized letter from Robert and Marty Tilton that that says we have personally prayed over this problem of yours and here is our answer. Dallas TV preacher Robert Tilton is tonight being accused of spiritual sorcery. A televangelist watchdog today outlined what he claims is Tilton's wheel of fortune. As Texas News 5 chief correspondent Mike Snyder explains. Names and addresses, names and addresses, names and addresses. Names are what feed the wheel of fortune. A wheel of fortune Ole Anthony so claims feeds $100 million a year into Tilton's Dallas-based TV ministry. Money Anthony and his Dallas-based Trinity Foundation claim is fraudulently pried out of believers who send prayer requests to Brother Bob. What she asked for is a real dad. But there was no name and address on it. There was only a first name, so it ended up in the trash. Anthony claims he found these unanswered prayer requests in a dumpster behind a Tulsa, Oklahoma bank that deposits all of Tilton's money. Tilton's attorney claims the prayer requests were stolen and planted to frame the ministry. It has nothing to do with mail fraud being practiced by this church. It has to do with freedom of religion. That's spiritual sorcery. Anthony says he doesn't want to see Pastor Tilton put behind bars. What he'd rather see is Congress pass a new law regulating TV preachers, something like the truth in advertising laws that would require preachers like Tilton to prove their claims before they broadcast on your TV. Far from a TV preacher himself, Dallas minister Ole Anthony has emerged as televangelism's number one critic. At a news conference, he showed off maps, charts, and thousands of documents he says he found in Tulsa trash. To Anthony, it reveals a big and phony business, cashing in on the lonely and the elderly. It's got to break your heart to think about what this is doing 
to the people. You foul, rotten, stinking devil. I'm going to beat you up, you devil. I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. But according to Anthony, it isn't Tilton who really runs things. It's his Tulsa attorney, J.C. Joyce. The maestro. Joyce has a few comments of his own in for critics like Anthony. That it is some supposed Christian lunatic fringe that is slime that periodically crawls out from under a rock. As if there weren't enough strange twists in all this, a man posing as a reporter, complete with his own camera crew, heckled Anthony at his news conference. You know, if ABC prints it, I guess that makes it just right, doesn't it? Anthony believes somebody connected to Tilton put him up to it. The man claims he came on his own. A Dallas-based church continues its assault on TV preacher Robert Tilton tonight. Today it was stacks of documents, more fraud allegations, and a shouting match with a shadowy figure. Almost all of the really damaging material we found on the business of evangelism came from the office of J.C. Joyce. In fact, J.C. Joyce has, I think, a camera crew here today, and I'd like to give him a hand. Minutes later, a man who at first identified himself as a reporter began shouting at Anthony. What? How much is Mr. Joyce paying you? Mr. Joyce is paying me, and I suppose you are working with who, sir? I'm working, my name is Pat Poole, I'm out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, I'm here with Shore Entertainment, and because we got questions... Poole was accompanied by a camera crew. He later described himself as unemployed, then self-employed, and finally as a man who makes movies. He also clashed briefly with a reporter from Tulsa who thought he should confine himself to questions. This is kind of fun. Let, I'm going to hold a press conference later today. You already are. And, well, no. <laughs> Prime Time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Three weeks ago, we told you about the $80 million ministry of Robert Tilton in Dallas. How he promises to in pray the over the personal responses of followers. Most of which, in fact, just go to one of the banks he uses in Tulsa and his data processing plant so he can get the money. And the prayer requests go into the trash. Stop. Tilton and his lawyer immediately went on television denying this Price and denouncing us. ABC is attempting to burn this Christian church to the ground with their lies and yellow journalism. But last week, our story was confirmed when a television station in Tulsa photographed thousands of Tilton prayer mailings at a Tulsa recycling plant in the trash. Tilton said he must have already prayed over them, but primetime obtained receipts showing the requests weren't sent there by Pastor Bob or his church, but went straight from the Professional Data Processing Center to the dump. And it's been going on for years. The former owner of the plant says he saw it. And not only that, the center was anxious to keep it a secret. This was confidential, uh, as far as they were concerned. But it's no secret now, and federal investigators from the FBI and post office have seized the trash and joined three other government agencies looking into Tilton's ministry. You don't have to put anything in the offering if you don't want to. You weren't charged to park on the parking lot. You weren't charged to listen to the music. But come next week, I got to pay the band. <laughs> Mars over there praying, Lord, shut Bob up. Well, I was going to ride my donkey in today. But the donkey trainer said that I was a little heavy for him. So you'll have to come tonight to see the donkey. You want to name my donkey? Holy. That's right, I said it on television. Holy. No, don't say it. No. It's really, te you know what I want to say, don't you? I'm not going to say it. I know the reporters are watching and listening and writing this and, oh, please say it, it makes such great copy. If you say it, you're a liar, because I didn't say it. Robert Tilton's television ministry is under fire once again. 
Accusers say he claims to read prayer requests he never sees, requests that instead get thrown in the trash. Channel 6 reporter Terry Hadley went to Osage County today and visited with a woman who says she's sick of reading Tilton's mail. For some reason, I'm called to look at this camera and look right at you. Right into this home in Winona, Oklahoma. Earlier this year, Beverly Crowley's husband, Tom, was dying. Daddy was diabetic. His kidneys had failed on kidney dialysis. He'd almost went blind. His circulation, he'd lost part of one hand and was going to have to lose his leg and several other parts. Beverly Crowley says her husband was confined to his bed. He watched televangelists constantly, often sending money to their ministries. He died in September at age 38. Now, more than 10 weeks later, Robert Tilton's computerized mail system still addresses letters to Tom. Crowley says Tilton's letters to her dead husband offend her, especially the part where Tilton writes to Tom, I sensed God wanting me to ask you a very special question. Tilton has to be lying to say that because God wouldn't have told him such a thing. And it's in his own letter that he sent to Tom, which Tom's no longer here. And you receive letters like this after your husband's dead, still looking for the miracle and telling you God told him it's on his way, and it'll hurt you pretty bad, you know. But Robert Tilton doesn't know about Beverly Crowley's pain. He just insists he's an honest prophet. Well, it seems if they could really talk to God and God to them, they'd know it is time to stop sending them to Tom, I would think. So far, that hasn't happened. In Winona, Terry Hadley, Channel 6 News. I think it's better not to listen to anything the secular press has to say, because you don't know if they're telling you the truth or not, or twisting, or half-truths, or fabricating, or making it up. It's the truth. And I'll go a little step further. If you work for a newspaper, you ought to believe God for a better job. It's been another rough year for televangelists. Scandals in TV ratings are weighing heavily, as CNN's Brian Cabell reports. For Jimmy Swaggart, it was deja vu. In October, he was discovered with a prostitute in his car. This after his 1988 involvement with another prostitute. His once thriving ministry has been decimated. One-time televangelist superstar Jim Baker made one public appearance in 91 in shackles to get his prison sentence for fraud reduced. Robert Tilton was accused of fraud, of a Dallas-based minister who reportedly receives $80 million a year from his followers, vigorously denied it. I am here before God, and I'm not going to hell for no man. I am here before God. My wife and I are as honest as the day is long. But investigators from several agencies are now checking into that. Televangelism had another rough year. Not surprising, perhaps, when you combine religion with TV. The stories became history. Air raid sirens are beginning. They expect you to believe all that garbage. The pictures became memories. Or is he a tactician? It's just not worth it. I'm a Christian. Images of 91. Showtime! Oh, God. In the name of Jesus. We believe in prayer. We believe in miracles. I was washing my face this morning, all the kids are the Lord. I am weak, but thou art strong. There's a prayer that I will be praying for the next Jesus year. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, be to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Dear Lord, close to thee. I've got some dreams and visions. Glory by Shanda, love of Soto Basata. Oh, da Basata, da da ba da ba da Soto. Hallelujah. That's singing in tongues for you illiterate folks out there. And you media people that are taping this, please don't edit it to pieces and make me look bad again, or your blood is going to be on your own hands. God is my witness on a thousand Bibles. I pray over your prayer request. 
I spent hours in prayer breaking the powers of darkness. I have the boldness to get in front of this television set to preach you the truth and the gospel without being afraid of man, but only fearing that I don't think it's the gospel that God commanded me to preach. Reaching the world. I mean, we got a vision to reach the world. I just don't do it like everybody else does it. And it is flat got the religious world and the devil and the heathen and the unbelieving mad. But they said, we couldn't find the orphanage in Haiti. How weak. And you know what? They expect you to believe all that garbage. They actually think you're stupid enough to believe their lies. You understand this? Then they get on the media. Yes, it's, it is official. Tilton is under investigation by the state of Texas Attorney General's office. So what? Anybody could be under investigation. <laughs> I might look stupid, but I ain't stupid. It says a fool doesn't want to know the truth. All he wants to do is scream. You'd be amazed how many letters come without money in them, and I still pray and believe and agree and, and, and minister to you. So, until we meet again, happy trails. I love that song. Happy trails to you until we meet again. And Jesus is still Lord. God bless you. Marty, come here and join me now. Come here and join me. Just come here. Thanks, honey. You're so sweet and obedient. I tell you, I have gone great, great being. of the only in Dallas used bookstore's exclusive Christmas offer. We have countless Bibles owned by Reverend Bob himself. Remember, you can't squeeze blood from a turner, but you can twist a book to get money. Act now. Send unmarked cash only. Call 555 Contorted Ideals for our floating P.O. Box number. Void where prohibited by reason. Religious commentary has always been with us, but what about when it takes the form of satire? Are some subjects too sacred to poke fun at? Are there topics or personalities too revered for ridicule? For those in our audience who do not know our first guest, let me introduce you to Ole Anthony. Ole became prominent in Dallas a few years ago when his investigation virtually ended the television ministry of Robert Tilton. But there's another side to Ole. He's the leader of, of a small Christian community in East Dallas and the publisher of a religious satire publication, The Door, that is something of a cult favorite among seminary students. Our next guest, Chris Tucker, is also well known in the Metroplex as a television and radio commentator for KERA, a published author and a former columnist and editor of D Magazine. With his tongue planted firmly in cheek, Chris has also been known to take some sharp pokes at everyone from our politicians to, you might have already guessed it, Robert Tilton. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Sure. Why Robert Tilton? What, what, why did you go after Robert Tilton? <laughs> you spent quite a bit of time yeah. working you, on you that one. You started it. Okay. <laughs> you started it. Oh, well, right. what, what, what we, um, we, we did a, an investigation for Primetime Live mm -hmm. and, uh, and were sued more times than I can count over <laughs> it for it. But uh, we, were, we, we started looking, just pulling strings. And, and of course, the thing that everybody remembers as we found the, the, the thousands of prayer requests that had been discarded uh, in the bank trash in Oklahoma. And that's what did him in. Well, what started you, one of the things that started your interest was your work with the homeless people, and you had met some who had right. become homeless. Right, and, and one in particular had, had given his last $5,000 back to Tilton and went to him for help and uh, was turned away, told to go to a social this, service agency. This puts you right at the heart of why satire is a difficult and sometimes right. misunderstood thing. Right. I come at this, I guess, from a somewhat different vantage mm -hmm. point than Oli does. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I, I, while I feel very sorry for all the people who gave their life savings and placed all that hope in Bob Tilton, to me he was always a comedian. Mm -hmm. I mean, I sort of hated to see him go. <laughs> uh, I, I'm sorry that he mm -hmm. built people. On mm -hmm. the other hand, uh, those people are there, and they're going to... The they're bilkies are going to be found by the bilkers One way of the, the world, other. like Bob Tilton. Mm -hmm. I just always saw him as an amazing showman, and mm -hmm. I can see how he probably pulls some people in that way. To me, he seems so blatantly phony from the start, mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine ever placing one, one bit of belief in him. The Reverend Bob Tilton of Texas is more than just a passionate preacher of the Holy Word. He's a man of many robes. To some, he is a learned ethnologist. You don't have to be black to make a vow. It's absolutely amazing sometimes the whites that sit back when the blacks and the browns and some of the other folks get out there and they're believing God for miracles in their life. Sometimes I'm ashamed of how the whites draw back and use their intellect and miss the very blessings of God. I rebuke some whites right now. A competent medical practitioner. We're gonna hit arthritis today. If you got any form of arthritis, you need to call. We're gonna hit hernias today. We're gonna to hit growths today. We're gonna to hit problems with teeth today. Oh, a proud entrepreneur. And if I wanted to go out there and work in a secular job, believe me, I wouldn't be a pauper. I would be a multi-billionaire, okay? And a man of honesty. Satan gave me this mess. I mean, it's a lie of the devil. I shouldn't have said that. God gave me this message. But to most people, he's just plain folk. I'm John Bloom, and this has been God Stuff. But I tell you, I, I just love just to have a good old picnic with all of our partners. I mean, that's what I feel like. I'm actually feeling that. I'd like to just sit down and eat some fried chicken with you and some corn on the cob and some real good rolls and some fresh pecan pie. You know, I just like to have a picnic with you and some enchiladas, too, and guacamole. We won't leave that out. For sure won't leave that out. We can't make it anymore without nachos. Robert Tilton called you a mealy mouth drunkard adulterer. True? That was the best thing he said about me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to these mealy mouth preachers. I know one in particular. That's not at all, not a minister at all, but an adulterer and a drunkard and a womenizer that's been caught in the clubs having the audacity to touch a prophet of God. Do you want to listen to that garbage pumped out by the garbage press? Texas Attorney General Dan Morales has tonight given flamboyant preacher Bob Tilton an ultimatum. Morales tonight is demanding Tilton open the records of his television ministry to prove he's not defrauding any of his followers. Texas News 5 Chief Correspondent Mike Snyder joins us now from the newsroom. Mike, is Morales preparing to file charges against Tilton? Well, it's too early to tell that yet, Jane, but Assistant Attorney General Joe Cruz says this is a serious investigation. And this morning, we obtained a copy of a seven-page notice sent to Tilton ordering him to produce a lengthy list, as you can see, of tapes, documents, and records that should tell all about his ministry and his business dealings. Our pastor, Robert Tilton. Back in December, Bob Tilton took center stage at his Word of Faith Church in Dallas to defend himself against what he called malicious, unprovoked attacks by lying reporters and detractors. So that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Well, we have opened ourselves up and we are not ashamed of what our books say. We're not ashamed of what we're doing. But that was before a paper recycling plant up in Tulsa found some 10,000 pounds of prayer request that Tilton tells his viewers he personally prays over. Attorney General Morales has now notified Tilton he has reason to believe that Word of Faith Family Church and World Outreach Center has engaged in trade practices and charitable solicitations which may violate provisions of state law including the Texas Consumer Protection and Deceptive Trade Practices Act. The Attorney General also says that he's got reason to believe that Tilton's activities violate state laws relating to the proper operation of charitable entities like raising money for Haitian orphanages. But Jane, this afternoon, Tilton's Tulsa lawyer told me that the church gives lots of money to lots of charities, 
but does not do fundraisers on behalf of any single charity. Tilton's lawyer says state law doesn't apply to the church and says he will challenge the attorney general's right to those documents and tapes. Televangelist Robert Tilton has his face on billboards all over the Metroplex, but take a close look at this billboard near the eastbound lanes of I-30 at the Trinity River. Vandals painted horns and the satanic symbol 666 on Tilton's forehead. No one is claiming responsibility. Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church plans to file a countersuit tomorrow against the state of Texas. Attorney General Dan Morales is suing Word of Faith for financial records the church refuses to show investigators. News for Texas reporter Sean Rabb says in the wake of the AG's action, only a handful of ministers will talk about what's at stake. The controversy over Word of Faith's financial records has renewed the battle between church and state, with both sides seeking a higher authority. I'm distressed that um, uh, the Attorney General can come in uh, and walk into a church, commandeer that church, say we're going into your records. Since shining in the network spotlight, Tilton's been investigated by Morales for possible deceptive trade practices. The church argues it does not sell or trade anything. And while dozens of ministers refused to comment today, others felt the message from the Attorney General is clear. I would hope that it would be a signal to all of us in churches that uh, we have to be accountable to our members, uh, we have to be accountable to the public, and that we will uh, operate our churches in a responsible manner in which uh, we would have no reason to uh, fear anybody looking at our books, uh, checking out how we do what we do. I don't think it has anything to do with the church. It has to do with someone that's claiming to be a church. Ole Anthony is the reason Tilton's been under investigation. He says the Attorney General's legal actions in no way threatens the church. I hope it says that you cannot commit commercial fraud in the name of God and expect to be protected by the First Amendment. Television evangelist Robert Tilton sued Texas Attorney General Dan Morales for two million dollars today, accusing Morales of bigotry and harassment. Channel H Robert Riggs is in our Austin bureau tonight with an update. Robert? Tracy, a federal judge issued a temporary restraining order this afternoon blocking an investigation into allegations that Tilton misused charitable money. The Attorney General was seeking records, including contributor lists, and had threatened to seize church assets if the documents were not produced. The investigation has been halted until a hearing in early March. Robert Tilton's lawsuit accuses the Attorney General of conducting a vicious news blitz to make it appear the televangelist was guilty of mail fraud. The suit claims that mail donations to Tilton's Word of Faith World Outreach Center Church have dropped by $2 million that 1,000 people have asked to be removed from the church mailing list and rolls, and that 7,500 fewer people have expressed positive interest in joining the church. We say that he's trying to violate the church's constitutional rights, freedom of religion, and we're trying to enjoin him from doing so. The lawsuit answers deceptive trade practice charges, saying that Tilton does not sell prayer and never asserted any person would receive a miracle in exchange for a contribution. Tilton's attorney says church membership has been falling off daily as the Attorney General has publicized the investigation. The Attorney General's office is not commenting until next month's hearing. This church is having a major attack by the Attorney General's office of Texas. If this can happen here, it can happen anywhere. They want our records. Well, Tilton, why don't you give them to them? Are you trying to hide something? If I was trying to hide something, we would not have opened our books up to the FBI and the postal authorities. The FBI is the, is the big guys. Texas State Attorney Generals is nothing but a, a flea compared to the authority of the FBI. So it's not like we're trying to hide something. They just don't like me some, some. Personally, I think it's political, and I think somebody's throwing some fuel on this little guy's fire. That's my personal opinion. If you want to quote me on that, you quote everything else. Doesn't make any difference whether I said it or didn't say it. Whether it's upside down, backwards or forwards, or whether it's spelled right or not, go ahead and quote it. TV evangelist Robert Tilton today declared victory in his battle with State Attorney General Dan Morales. Morales wants to take a look at the ministry's financial records, but a judge has temporarily blocked that action. 
Night Beat's Betty Smith reports. Tilton told followers at his Word of Faith church that our founding fathers' blood would boil if they heard what was going on. I believe that there would be some great founding fathers would turn over in their grave. I believe if they knew what was going on, the attacks against our Constitution and our amendment rights in this hour, I think some of them would come back from the dead. Tilton, who has filed a lawsuit against the Attorney General's office, says his church is protected from state inquiries under the First Amendment, but he claims he has nothing to hide. They don't know Pastor Tilton the way we know him. The man is a great man, and what they're doing to him is awful. I really think it should stop, and they just leave him alone. Let us practice our religion. All this time, people have been griping about separation of church and state. But then you've got this liberal Democrat, or whatever you want to call him, standing out there who's sticking his nose into the church affairs. I think it's a crock, and I don't think they had no right to do it. And, uh, you know, we have freedom of religion in, in America and freedom of speech, and, uh, and that's just the way it is. Churchgoers say they're tired of the controversy, and they'll support Tilton all the way to the Supreme Court. It's back to court next month. The judge has set a March 4th hearing to determine if Tilton must turn over the ministry's records requested by the Attorney General. Some new developments tonight in the legal tug-of-war between televangelist Robert Tilton and the state of Texas. Austin reporter Ken Camps joins us now live with the exclusive details. Ken? Well, Dale, this paperwork was filed very quietly in Austin today, and there are some big changes inside. What's Tilton trying to do? The Attorney General won't speculate, but we have some clues. Robert Tilton says he thinks the Attorney General is trying to destroy his church. The state wants to look over the financial records of Tilton's multi-million dollar ministry. Tilton says Attorney General Dan Morales doesn't have the right to do that. He says Morales' actions violate his First Amendment rights of freedom of religion. But in this newly filed court document, Tilton drops his civil charges against several key people in the fraud division of the AG's office and drops his $2 million damage claim against the state. Two weeks ago, he told his congregation he wanted Texas to pay for trying to discredit his church. The church, you are at least $2 million, and the clock is ticking every day until they shut their mouths and acknowledge that there's nothing wrong here. Attorneys for both sides are being tight-lipped on judges' orders. The sources inside the AG's office tell me they think this is legal maneuvering by Tilton to avoid having to give a deposition, to detail his claims he's losing millions of dollars and thousands of members, or to be helpful at all before his March 4th court date here in Austin. News 4 Texas has also learned Tilton was due to give a deposition in Dallas this morning and didn't show up. His wife is scheduled tomorrow. She's not expected to talk either. Television evangelist Robert Tilton was ordered by a federal judge today to answer questions about his controversial ministry in Farmer's Branch. Tilton failed to appear yesterday for a deposition to be taken by the Texas Attorney General's Consumer Protection Office. Channel H. Robert Riggs reports the Attorney General wants to question Tilton about his fundraising practices. Televangelist Robert Tilton will have to do what he has fought so hard not to do. Answer questions under oath about the fundraising practices of the nation's fastest growing TV ministry. It appears Tilton's $2 million lawsuit against the Attorney General may have backfired. Tilton's attorneys had temporarily halted an investigation into whether Tilton's ministry used deceptive trade practices or violated charitable solicitation laws. But the lawsuit gave the Attorney General a legal opening to take a deposition about Tilton's lavish lifestyle and explain how prayer requests got trashed outside the Tulsa Bank where Tilton deposits donations. My experience as a prosecutor leads me to believe that when someone acts as though they have something to hide, uh, they may very well have something to hide. Uh, and I'm a little bit troubled by the degree of resistance uh, that we have met with so far in simply attempting to determine the facts. Tilton's lawyers say the Attorney General is trying their client in the media. They will tell Tilton not to answer questions during Saturday's deposition if the Attorney General asks about anything other than the sincerity of Tilton's religious beliefs or the harm to his ministry. Tilton leaves after the deposition on a crusade to India. Where have you guys been for the last 15 years? Oh, we were here waiting for you. <laughs> Robert Tilton jokes with some of the reporters he claims have sided against him recently. The televangelist met today with lawyers from the state attorney general's office. Hey guys, where y'all been? Television minister Robert Tilton was in front of the cameras again, but he was not in a pulpit. En route to a foreign crusade, he arranged his court-ordered meeting with state officials at DFW airport. 
We talked about God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And After five hours behind closed doors, a confident, upbeat, smiling Robert Tilton emerged. He again charged the investigation is instead religious persecution. You, you guys, I want to tell you something. One of these days you're going to figure out that we've not done anything wrong. Uh -huh. One of these days you're all going to figure out that this whole thing, you guys have just been led by these folks saying stuff. The Attorney General's office would not confirm if Tilton discussed any financial details about his ministry. I can't really comment on the, the content of the deposition. It was fairly standard procedure for a lawsuit. It's not like we've tried to hide things from people. We opened our books up to the FBI and all the government authorities. But when someone abusively exerts their authority on us when they don't have that specific area of authority, we're not going to do it. I'm happy with it. I didn't feel any really serious areas of problems. They believe what they believe. We believe what we believe, and we'll just find out in court. The next step in the case is a March 4th hearing to determine if Tilton must release church financial records requested by the state. I want to welcome all the television stations, the reporters, the newspapers, the radio channels. I w why don't you come here in person instead of sitting at home and watching it on your recorders? Why don't you come on here and get in the middle of these services? I, b I dare all of you reporters to get in the middle of these services because there's no telling what I'll able to say today. Why, it could be quoted halfway around the world. There's no telling what I might si say today. And many of you I know are being paid to watch this program. Well, thank God that I'm here so you can have a job. Televangelist Robert Tilton will find out next week whether the courts will order him to release records that the Attorney General wants to take a look at. He answered investigators' questions for several hours yesterday. Tilton says the media is being misled by authorities, and today in his sermon he had this message. I'm talking to you in television land, you reporters, you television people, newspaper people, you attorneys. What is it if you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul? TV preacher Robert Tilton has some connection in Tulsa you might find surprising. They include a convicted money launderer and a banker who's in trouble with federal regulators. We've been looking into some of the Tulsans who do work for the controversial evangelist, and you might be interested in what we found. Reporter Scott Gordon begins tonight with the, story of a, in, with the inside story of a Tulsa banker who's a key player in Tilton's Tulsa Connections. When Robert Tilton goes on TV, viewers go to their phones and give him money. The mail may be addressed to Tilton in Dallas, but it isn't open there. Instead, it comes in big mail bags to Tulsa and this bank. It turns out the man ultimately in charge of the operation is in trouble with government regulators. He is John A. Baker. He is the bank's board chairman and chief lending officer. Baker is named in this lawsuit filed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the government agency that regulates banks. The FDIC blames Baker for the collapse of another bank he headed for 12 years, American Bank of Muskogee. The bank lost more than $4 million when it went under in 1988. Regulators claim Baker and nine other executives drove the bank to failure by knowingly making bad, sometimes illegal loans. They include loans to so-called insiders, people with direct connections to the bank, and to others who were not making good on previous loans. One of the loans listed as improper is one to Baker himself. In written responses to the government suit, Baker denies doing anything wrong. What America needs is a revival of the so-called Christians to put God back into their finances. The FDIC lawsuit has to do with things that happened years ago and don't involve commercial bank. But they do involve the same banker, unsettled allegations of misconduct, against the very man who is now responsible for counting and holding millions of dollars in evangelist donations. An ex-convict is now employed by a Tulsa company that does work for Robert Tilton and other televangelists. He's a former banker who got caught up in a government investigation into money laundering. Scott Gordon has spent weeks looking into all this to report our Oklahoma's News 8 Extra, Tilton's Tulsa Connections. This is Arlen Plender in his 1988 mugshot, not long before he reported to federal prison. He's a convicted felon and admitted money launderer. And now he's working for Response Media, the Tulsa company that prints and mails Tilton's letters. The company specializes in computerized mass mailing and does work for a number of corporations. But Tilton and other televangelists are some of their biggest customers. 
Plunder's troubles started when he was president of Limestone National Bank in Sand Springs. He was busted in a nationwide sting operation aimed at people who launder money. According to Plunder's indictment, here's what happened. Two undercover IRS agents came here to the bank he headed, posing as drug dealers with money to hide. Plunder agreed to launder it, hide it from the government, and for his work, kept some of the money for himself. In federal court in Tulsa, Plunder pleaded guilty to two money laundering charges. He said he thought the undercover agents were mobsters, not drug dealers, and cooperated only out of fear. Other charges were dropped in a plea bargain. At the time, prosecutors said Plunder was not set up. But the law is quite clear that if you give a person merely an opportunity to break the law and he has the criminal intent and seeks to ways to promote it for his own personal gain, for his own benefit, then entrapment is not the issue. It is greed, it is motive. We got these pictures of Plunder at a ribbon cutting for Response Media four years ago. Here he was with Jim Moore, the owner of Response Media. Moore hired him knowing of his arrest. In fact, at Plunder's sentencing, Moore testified on his behalf. Plunder was sentenced to three months behind bars, a relatively light sentence, even for white collar crime. Plunder isn't the only person with a criminal background linked to Tilton. Primetime reported Tilton once got a $1.3 million loan with help from Howard Beebe, seen here on the left, a former Louisiana financier and ex-con. Beebe is linked in news reports to reputed New Orleans mob boss Carlos Marcelo. Ironically, the same sting operation that targeted Plunder in Tulsa also snared relatives of Marcelo in Louisiana. The devil likes to make something out of nothing. But Jesus makes nothing out of something. Hallelujah! Woo! Exactly what is Plunder doing for Tilton and other televangelists? In a hand-delivered letter to Oklahoma's News 8, Response Media's owner, Jim Moore, told us Plunder has no title, but said his work includes negotiation of financing and special projects. Moore describes Plunder as a valued employee, but adds he's not allowed to sign checks. Moore also writes, quoting now, Mr. Plunder, as well as his family, has paid the price for his past error. I, as a business owner, believe in our judicial system and believe that every person deserves a second chance. In fact, there are no allegations or evidence to suggest Plunder has engaged in any crimes other than the ones he pleaded guilty to four years ago. An Oklahoma woman is filing a lawsuit against evangelist Robert Tilton. She's a former follower who says Tilton is a fake. And the lawsuit asks for more than $80 million, claiming the evangelist is a fraud and he caused emotional distress. Beverly Crowley and her attorney announced the suit at a news conference this morning. She says Tilton keeps sending her husband letters saying God talked to him about his troubles. Her husband died in September. Robert Tilton tells his TV viewers he can bring God's blessing down on them. The poor, the troubled, the sick. Beverly Crowley says with her husband Tom, he went too far. The couple lived in Winona, Oklahoma. Ill with diabetes and hoping for a miracle, Tom Crowley sent money to Tilton. And then Crowley died. But Beverly says months later, the evangelist letters kept coming, asking for money. Tilton saying, God spoke to me specifically about you, Tom. Tom, he wants to restore your health. When letters like this are going out to people that's been dead for this many months and God's told him to tell him such thing, it's lies. And people need to know it and they need to stop and they don't even need to listen to the man. The grieving widow sent Tilton a letter telling him to stop writing, that the letters were just causing her more hurt and pain. I love you and I look forward to you writing me. What the Crowleys didn't know is that Robert Tilton doesn't write any letters. They're generated by the tens of thousands from mailing lists by computer. The letters didn't stop, so Beverly is suing Tilton in federal court for $40 million for fraud and intentional emotional distress. The uniqueness here is that Robert Tilton is telling uh, uh, Tom, anyway, who's dead, that God's still talking to him about Tom Crowley. It just can't be. This is the first such lawsuit against the Dallas preacher. The woman's lawyer feels other Tilton next followers will soon join in. Church officials contacted had nothing to say. Tilton's Tulsa attorney couldn't be reached. Beverly Crowley says if she could talk personally with Robert Tilton, she'd ask him one thing. If God really does talk to him, then why didn't God tell him her husband was dead? The Texas Attorney General is still grappling with Tilton and his lawyer regarding handing over church records. Tilton continues to say he has done nothing wrong and that the investigators and journalists are doing the work of the devil. 
Looking more like a revival than a trial, hundreds of Robert Tilton followers flocked to the state capitol in support of the embattled televangelist. In a classic battle of state versus church, Tilton and his wife came to Austin today to explain why they won't turn over ministry records. News 4 Texas reporter Ken Capps is just back from the courtroom. Ken, what is going on? Robert Tilton has been inside the courtroom all day. His supporters have been right here behind me outside. They brought their band, they brought their Bibles, and they brought their faith. Faith their preacher is not taking their money. Robert Tilton's believers wrapped the courthouse in their religion and in red, white, and blue. Believing, like their pastor, the Attorney General has no right to see the financial books of the church, that it violates the First Amendment freedoms of the faithful. So we actually felt that this was something that went way beyond our church and went into the real, real heart of what America is all about. Marty Tilton testified as the preacher's wife and church administrator. We're honest people, Marty told Judge Sam Sparks. But the Attorney General still wants to see where the money is going. Suspicious many prayers are never seen by Bob Tilton, much of the money never going to church work. I think the church will support him all the way. We're here for uh, freedom of religion. Tilton is not won in court yet, but busloads of church members hailed him as victorious tonight. In testimony that at times sounded like a sermon, Tilton told a federal judge the Attorney General is playing dirty with his church. But Tilton did admit he doesn't pray over every piece of paper that comes in. Sometimes he prays over a computer readout of requests. And, uh, not that we don't make mistakes, we don't think we have, but uh, we try real hard. Marty Tilton said the church brought in $65 million in 1991. Supporters believe the Tiltons are worth every penny. Because he's bold, he speaks out the word and he gets people saved. Tilton brought hundreds of supporters to the courthouse with him. They say they're fighting for religious freedom. Sonia Van Sickle has been covering the demonstrations out here. You just came from court. Can you give us an update on what Mr. Tilton says, the humiliation that he's suffered throughout this process? Well, Robert, just a few moments ago, Robert Tilton testified that he has been constantly harassed since the primetime live broadcast back in November. He says, quote, they yell at me from the golf course, they yell at me from the parking garage at the mall, their house has been papered with monopoly money. He says we live continually on guard. Now, as you possibly can see behind me, there's still a couple of hundred of uh, Robert Tilton's supporters outside this courthouse. Tilton's well-wishers have been peaceful, but very determined. They want to bring a strong show of support for their minister and their church. An estimated 400 to 500 people, at least nine chartered busloads of Robert Tilton's followers and supporters, arrived in Austin this morning. They gathered around the U.S. courthouse, filling up the front sidewalk and lawn. A 17-piece drum and fife corps kept the vigil outside, playing patriotic music and drum cadences as supporters waved flags. Students from Tilton's religious school were also here, one member calling this a field trip for the group. Followers who waited outside all day long to see the Tiltons finally got their wish. The Reverend addressed them and members of the media. I believe had a good day in court. As I've said before, I believe when the dust settles, all of you will know that we have committed no crimes. Even after eight hours of testimony by the Tiltons, this hearing is far from over. Seven others are expected to testify tomorrow. One of them is Ole Anthony. He's considered to be the thorn in Tilton's side. He's the man who went undercover to expose the Tilton ministry. Now, you saw the, the crush of Tilton followers in Austin, but not all of his fold stuck behind their shepherd after Primetime Live accused him of fraud. Today, we spoke with Roger North, a former church member, and he says ABC convinced him to get out. Yeah, but is that what God and Jesus Christ is all about? No, not at all. The opposite, you know. God and Jesus Christ are about giving money away, not making money. Roger North and his family left Tilton's flock after Primetime Live's expose on the Farmer's Branch preacher. The Norths played an active role in worship for the two months they were members. Roger even sang in the choir. But for the Norths, no church hymn could drown out the news of Primetime's report. It was emotionally upsetting, that, that show. <laughs> and the very next day, and we were supposed to go, when my wife was supposed to go to a ladies' luncheon that they were having, and she said, take the tickets back. 
Rogers says one of the main problems he has with Tilton is his constant asking for money, which he thinks goes against Christian principles. God also wants us to, to give of what we have to, to others a lot more than he wants us to be prosperous for ourselves. And that's the message that, that Pastor Tilton is missing. The mess TV evangelist Robert Tilton returned to federal court today trying to stop a consumer fraud investigation by the Texas Attorney General. And Channel 8's Robert Riggs joins us now live, live from our Austin newsroom with an update on the testimony in the second day of the hearing. Robert? Gloria, Marty Tilton, the administrator of the 8,000-member Word of Faith Church in Farmers Branch, showed her first emotion in court today. The wife of the TV evangelist smiled as the ministry's chief critic was called a liar and forger. Good morning, everybody. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. TV evangelist Robert Tilton confronted his principal antagonist at the U.S. courthouse in Austin. Ole Anthony of Dallas, a self-appointed watchdog of TV ministries, testified that he found thousands of letters to Tilton in trash outside the ministry's banks. Anthony says he told the Texas Attorney General's consumer fraud investigators that the trash mail proved Tilton was not keeping promises, such as praying over prayer requests. Tilton's lawyer countered that Anthony consistently lies and accused him of forging the letters. Anthony traded charges with a Tilton supporter outside the court. Weren't they forged prayer requests? You gotta be That's kidding. No, I'm not kidding. It was brought out in the court today that they were forged. Prayer request. Right, the 400,000 pounds of forged prayer requests, that's ridiculous. Take a look at who your minister is. If he would pray over every one of the letters, he receives 10,000 a day, he'd have to be praying every 2.8 seconds. But it's not just one thing, it's a whole raft of things that he promises and he delivers on nothing. It's commercial fraud in God's name and it's time that it stopped. When he's in 235 markets of the United States raising money on his infomercials, then it it's the public's responsibility to look at it with a question just ask you though about this document that you forged and how do you respond to that of course i didn't forge a document that's crazy if you believe that go file charges well i bring you greetings from the land of india 800 million people strong and i'm sure you're wondering what happened to my suit get a full full length picture of this on tv this is called a Nehru suit. And all of the uh, executives, prime minister type of people in India wear an outfit like this. And I figured since the prime minister would wear one of these in India, I figured the prime time minister ought to wear one of these in India. couldn't resist the temptation. TV evangelist Robert Tilton and his lawyers are engaged in a battle they say will test the constitutional separation of church and state. But some would argue another problem in this case, the separation of church and school. Night Beats Richard Ray explains. It was 4 a.m. last Wednesday when 11 buses left for Austin. On board, supporters of Reverend Bob Tilton and his wife, Marty, including most of the high school students from Lexington Academy, the private school owned and operated by Word of Faith. Good morning, everybody. The Tiltons came to do battle with the Texas Attorney General over the release of financial records. The students, we were told, were part of a spontaneous outpouring of support. It's a voluntarily expression of religious freedom by all of the people, it's to show solidarity with our pastors, Bob and Marty Tilton. But when reporters attempted to ask members of the Drum and Fife Corps about the field trip, a school official quickly intervened. No question, let's line up, this is business. Now at least some of the students and their parents say they were less than enthusiastic about the trip, that all 8th through 12th graders were given a choice, go to Austin or stay behind and do five reports. Fearing retribution, the disgruntled students and their parents asked not to be identified. Lexington Academy also denied our repeated requests for interviews. But Superintendent Larry Lindsay did tell News 4 Texas over the phone that the choice was not five reports, but a five-hour project and one report. We worked it out. With every parent that called, we excused every student who had a note, said Dr. Lindsay. We were not arbitrarily coercing kids. 
when we were upstairs and the, the, the fife and drum corps were playing the songs, <laughs> it was hard not to cry, <laughs> you know, it was so beautiful. Even the parents who complained about the Austin trip were quick to point out that Lexington is a good school academically. But a majority of the upper grade students do not attend Word of Faith, and a few at least were not eager to be enlisted in the very public battle being waged by Pastor Tilton and his lawyers. The state is trying to force the Tiltons to turn over certain financial records for an investigation into possible marketing fraud. U.S. District Judge Sam Sparks has given both sides until tomorrow to submit more evidence. He's promised to rule sometime in the next two weeks. Okay, Rich, thank you very much. While they're coming, I want to show you my Bible. My Bible got wet yesterday, and so I had this brilliant, inspired idea. Put it in the microwave. New legal trouble tonight for Robert Tilton. The flamboyant Texas TV preacher has been hit with a second $40 million lawsuit by a widow in Oklahoma. More from Channel 8's Bill Brown in Tulsa. When you love somebody as much as I love my husband, and you put your sort of trust in somebody, and that's just like a slap in the face. TV evangelist Robert Tilton claims God talks to him, but some say the preacher goes too far when he says through him, the Lord can heal dead people. 67-year-old Dorothy Reese is the second widow in Oklahoma to brand Tilton a fraud and sue him, seeking millions. In the last stage of throat cancer, desperate with pain, Dorothy's husband Fred asked Tilton for a miracle prayer to save his life. The 70-year-old man died in January, but his widow is still getting letters from Tilton, suggesting that a cash payment will buy him life. Tilton gets the name wrong, saying in the form letters, Reese, God spoke a clear prophetic word to me for you. Reese, he wants to restore your health. It wouldn't hurt me as much if he'd walked up to me and hold on to hit me. And to get that letter saying that God was going to heal him. Because I'd already given to God. We tried, but we couldn't reach Reverend Tilton or his lawyer to see what they think about the lawsuit. Tilton has often said he's done nothing wrong. He calls investigators and reporters covering him agents of the devil. Dorothy Reese's lawyer, Gary Richardson, says he may use the federal Racketeering and Influence by Corrupt Organizations Act to get at Tilton and take his wealth. Richardson told us eventually he thinks hundreds of people nationwide may sue the television preacher. And the widow was asked how she would deal with Robert Tilton. Well, I'll put it this way. Every snake I see, I kill it. Dozens of Texans who gave money to Robert Tilton also now want to sue him for fraud. We've learned that the first Texas suit is expected to be filed in Dallas next week. Robert Tilton has reason to rejoice today after a partial victory in an Austin court. But it was not a total win for the Word of Faith ministry. Attorney General Dan Morales will be able to look at some of the Reverend's records. Joining us live now from our Austin Bureau is Joe Cruz, head of the Attorney General's Consumer Fraud Division. He's playing a key part in the Tilt investigation. Mr. Cruz, thanks for joining us today. Sir. Does this ruling mean that your fraud investigation of Robert Tilton is essentially dead in the water? Absolutely not. The uh, uh, investigation uh, will continue. In fact, it now has new impetus because the federal judge has given us specific authority to go after specific financial records of the uh, ministry, and that's uh, basically what we've been looking for from the beginning of this investigation. Does this ruling today have any larger implication for other churches out there? Does it uh, somehow uh, put new restrictions on uh, what records the state can look at uh, at a church? This ruling with respect to uh, our ability to continue our investigation has uh, no impact at all and it's not any change uh, in the law. There, there were some other rulings made by the court that we intend to appeal to the Fifth Circuit uh, that we think uh, dramatically changed some aspects of the law that limit our uh, investigatory authority under other consumer protection statutes. Okay, so despite the ruling today, uh, Texas Attorney General's office is going ahead with its fraud investigation of Robert Tilton. Full steam ahead. Cheering church workers and members hailed him as a conquering hero as Robert Tilton walked in, basking in the glow of victory. Amid reports of fraud and deception of television viewers, the Texas Attorney General has been digging into Tilton and the way he does things. The minister has battled back, refusing to turn over his records. Now, a federal judge has slapped down the AG's office, and citing separation of church and state, sharply limited the records lawyers may have. All of it makes the Reverend a most happy man. 
is a tremendous victory. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest victories in recent years for the First Amendment rights of freedom of religion for all of us. Two widows in Oklahoma are now suing Robert Tilton for $80 million, saying after their husbands died, Tilton still sent letters asking for cash, offering the healing of God. Clearly, Tilton did not want to talk about that. Uh, I'm not going to make any statement. Can I heal dead people? No. I'm not going to make any statements along those lines, but you'll see that that will be just basically squashed and thrown out toward that. We will say, end. Do you have anything to say to those women? Yes, I, I love them. And I'm praying for them. If you personally <laughs> pray over every prayer request, I pray over every why wouldn't you know that the man has been dead for five months? Oh, if, you're, if your attention is so personal, isn't that something that a minister should know? Request. You can't know everything, but God knows everything, and that's Amen. what's important. All right. <laughs> Once again, Tilton blasted the press as slanted and biased against him. He said he just presided over a revival in India with more than half a million people there and says no one reported on that or the other good things he does. The evangelist says now he'll press on, saving souls and spreading the gospel. And no lawsuit or investigation is going to stop him. March 19th, 1992. We have news now about some things that have happened as a result of our undercover investigation of televangelists. Here's the latest. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. After our report, the FBI, the Postal Service, and three Texas agencies, including the Attorney General, started looking into Robert Hilton. Well, this week, a federal judge ruled that the Texas Attorney General can indeed have access to church financial records to determine whether it really is a non-profit corporation. But the judge criticized Attorney General Dan Morales for making the accusations public. But it was a great victory for us and for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At a news conference, Morales defended his actions and said he would appeal to get access to even more documents. I am not a tool of Satan. Uh, no one in this office uh, is operating at Satan's directive. Prime time will continue in a moment. Someone was talking about how Tilton writes all these letters, but they're not personal. Well, what about the Apostle Paul? Is this a farm letter? I mean, is this a... Is a the, the epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Ephesians, is that a farm letter? It's, been, it's probably been printed a, 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 a billion times. Here you go. Come on, reporters. You're looking for it. This farm letter has been sent out a, a billion times. And probably m hundreds of millions of people have read this as a farm letter to somebody else. But there's been millions more read it, and it wasn't for somebody else, that other billion. Even though it had been printed the same way a billion times, all of a sudden it became one letter to that person. When I write you a letter, I'm writing hundreds of thousands of people. At the same time, I'm writing you. Faith on trial. Faith on trial. That's the court case that's going on. And it's more than in the natural. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. Legal troubles continue to mount for TV evangelist Robert Tilton. In recent weeks, we've told you about two Oklahoma widows who are suing Tilton, charging fraud and emotional distress. Now their lawyer has come to the Metroplex looking for others who want to sue. News 4 Texas reporter Richard Ray says there's no shortage of interest. What we're going to try to do is, is get as many people get as we can. Gary Richardson is a former U.S. attorney from Tulsa, a much sought-after lawyer with a record for winning big, including the largest liable verdict in U.S. history. Now he's set his sights on Robert Tilton, what he says could be a class action involving hundreds of people. There are a lot of angry people, a lot of people that feel like that they have been lied to, that they've been defrauded. 
I, I've been involved in, in Christian work for years. My dad was a minister before he passed away. I've never seen anything like this in all of my life. Richardson has already sued on behalf of two widows whose husbands kept getting letters from Tilton after they died, letters saying, God wants to restore your health. Rose Rowney of DeSoto is another who feels victimized by Tilton mailings. They started when her son developed a heart problem and continued despite her written and telephone pleas to stop. And I said, my son died two months ago and I don't want anything to do with you. I said, you people have harassed me till I'm sick. Rose never gave the ministry money, but Pegeen Vega did. Eight or nine thousand dollars, she says, until hard times forced her to ask for help. On the phone, they were behind me a hundred percent. But when I showed up at their front door, they wanted nothing to do with me. Richardson believes he can prove commercial fraud in court, and if he does, the plaintiffs in the lawsuit could win everything Tilton has. This mission is far more than just about money, far more. We welcome all of you that are joining with us this beautiful Sunday morning right here at Word of Faith Family Church. And if I were you, because I know what's going to happen today, some of it, if I were you, I would not change that dial. Today is going to be a history-making service. It's going to be the most unusual service, as far as I know, the kind of service that has never, ever happened before in the history of Christianity. And by the way, all of you reporters in media and press people, we're so glad you're in our services today by videotape. And I just pray that when you make your edits today, you'll always find the best views and shots and that you won't turn things around. And uh, frankly speaking, the more I get to know many of you that are reporters, many of you are, I've found to be just really great people working very, very hard to earn a living. So really, I, I don't have any problems with you, but I do like things put in the protect, correct uh, uh, sentence structure and to and to and to say the good things I want you to say. I've asked uh, our attorney uh, J.C. Joyce to be here with us today, and we have some things that uh, have uh, happened, and he does a better job explaining them legally, and I do a better job explaining them scripturally. Old Pharaoh just won't let God's people go. And he just keeps putting, making us want to make more brick without straw. And trying to make things tougher and harder on us to stay in the ministry to, to help more people and save more souls. So I've asked uh, Dr. Joyce, he is an attorney, he's a doctor, uh, to come here and to go through a little bit of a scenario of what's been happening here at our church and uh, what the Egyptians have been up to and uh, uh, <laughs> anyway we do have some very serious matters to deal with today and uh, uh, JC is going to go through them with you and uh, and then I'm going to come and I'm going to have some more things to share Thank you, so, Dr. Joyce the pulpit is yours and the press, the cameras, the media, I'm sure they're on the phone by now. <laughs> I'm just JC, and I'm honored to be here again today. I came before you a few weeks ago, and I talked to you about religious persecution. And I think that you have seen by now what I said was all but prophetic. You have seen the religious persecution of this church. You have seen it beyond anybody's comprehension. I want to cover Ole Anthony. I hate bitching the man's name in the house of God. But I'm going to show you, because this man's been the darling of the media, and the thousands of words that have been printed uttered out of his mouth, are appalling to me and what I'm going to show you just easily and quickly what a liar this person is and I'm not prone to stand up and call a person a liar if I don't have the proof I've got it out of his mouth and the Bible says you'll be convicted out of your own mouths and you'll remember this and media you'll remember this they started off this yellow journalistic piece that Diane Sawyer's saying 
We told this man, we were media consultants for this man, Ole Anthony, a Dallas minister, and that we wanted to set up a big-time ministry like Robert Tilton's. That was a lie. Testified under oath that Diane Sawyer's ABC came to him, and they wanted to do an investigative report of Robert Tilton and these other ministries, and that's why they were there, to do an investigative report, not to hire the man. And so you, everything there is a lie. When you start with a lie, it goes downhill. Another little lie, you'll remember that you've seen this man on television. He said, we were getting the stuff out of the dumpsters. Employees came by and they said, what are you doing? We said, oh, man, nothing, man, we're just getting cans. Well, that's just a lie. You know, lies just trip out of his mouth just like that. That man, every time he opens his mouth, tells a lie. And that man is a religious bigot. He doesn't believe in this religion. He has made it his goal for 12 years to attempt to destroy this church. He told this lie, and he made the lie so big that people believed it. He got all the governmental agencies together, led and orchestrated by the attorney general. And now he's got an attorney that's going to file civil suits against the church. And I say, he's got it. That man was on television release recently, and I looked, and sure enough, in the background there was Ole Anthony, and that was Ole Anthony's office, and that was Ole Anthony's garbage that was on the wall. And that man is also a bigot because he said he came to this church twice, and it made him sick. Now, if that's not a bigoted statement, I don't care what the man believes, but to go into someone else's church and say that this religious service makes him sick is proof positive of bigotry. This church, Marty and I, our family, has been ridiculed, persecuted, bullied, muscled by religious bigots. We've seen them consorting together, and we know that they have one agenda in mind. And that's to come of anything to save their face, to say there's something wrong. So we have made a decision today. Actually, we made the decision Friday. We decided that we did not need the Texas Nonprofit Corporation. Listen closely. So what we did, we opened a brand new church that is not incorporated as a nonprofit corporation in the state of Texas, but is simply a legal, legal church. We are not under the authority of a Texas nonprofit corporation any longer because we are not. What is that? You say, Bob, does that mean we're t no longer tax? No, we're still tax exempt. You still get to write off your income taxes. We're still respected by the IRS. We're still under the authorities of, 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 of criminal authorities or the authorities of, of, uh, of the United States, like the FBI. We're not saying that we've done this so that, that we're not uh, under uh, any longer under uh, government authorities, but we're saying the Attorney General does not have jurisdiction over us as a church. Well, why did you sign up on that nonprofit corporation to begin with? Because we were just told to in those days. We didn't know it didn't buy us anything. And I'll tell you something, you pastors and parishioners of other churches, if you're incorporated in the state of Texas, you better get rid of that thing, and you better get rid of it in a hurry. You say, it can't happen to me. You don't know when they're going to zero in on you and try to put the heavy hand. You don't know when all is going to get after you and decide he doesn't like you or lie about you or try to stir up lies about you. This is the News 8 Update. So at this particular moment, you, those of you that were members of Word of Faith, Inc., uh, you don't have a church anymore. That would like to... The embattled Word of Faith television ministry changes its name and its status. Pastor Robert Tilton says the ministry is no longer a nonprofit corporation. Tilton says he and his followers are going to cross the Red Sea to a place where his enemies cannot go. But as Channel 8's Anita Venetti reports, the formation of the new Word of Faith Outreach Center Church won't protect Tilton from legal questions he still must answer. If there is any fixed star, I'm sorry, but this is just so 
fundamentally wrong what's happened to this church. Word of Faith attorney J.C. Joyce gave a sometimes emotional summary of legal problems facing the ministry. The lesson in law preceded preacher Robert Tilton's announcement that he's taken legal steps of his own. That is, the Word of Faith nonprofit corporation is dissolved and the new Word of Faith Church is born. We gave all of the assets, all of the facilities, all of the legal liabilities, is that right? Yeah. We gave everything, now listen closely, press. Word of Faith, World Outreach Center Church Incorporated, gave everything it owns, has, and owes to a new church. A spokesman for State Attorney General Dan Morales says the paperwork switch of assets won't make any difference in an ongoing fraud investigation. The Word of Faith must still turn over its records to the state by Tuesday. Assistant Attorney General Roseanne Reeser, who handled the recent federal district court hearing on the matter, says it's a move that doesn't surprise us. I don't see how it's going to change the document request we've made. Tilton and the church also face an $80 million lawsuit filed by two Oklahoma widows. Their attorney, Gary Richardson, in Beaumont for a trial, says the new church status won't protect the Tiltons from liability. You, as a lawyer, you become suspicious that uh, maybe they're trying to hide ass assets. Uh, I don't know what Tilton's attempting to do, but I can assure everyone that it will have absolutely no influence on us as far as us moving forward with what, we, what we're doing. Richardson says two more people from the Dallas area will join the lawsuit this week and predicts several hundred people will eventually take part. Robert Tilton maintains that Satan is to blame for baseless allegations against him and his church. So do not let the deceit and the trickery and the half-truths and lies as of others, saith God, stop you from trusting in me and trusting my word, saith the Lord of hosts. The minister says the change in his church's status is simply a way to keep the attorney general's office out of his business. But the state warns it won't be that easy. Anita Vanetti, Channel 8 News. Dallas TV evangelist Robert Tilton now faces a new criminal investigation by the Texas Attorney General. And tomorrow morning, two Dallas women who claim Tilton harmed their lives are expected to sue the preacher. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. He is defrauding the people of, of, the, of America, defrauding the people of Texas. Um, he has elevated himself to be the prophet of God. Dallas Minister Ole Anthony was happy when he heard the Attorney General is launching a criminal investigation of Tilton. The question raised here is not whether I uh, am a tool of Satan uh, or the Antichrist. Uh, the question is whether this ministry and whether Robert Tilton is violating consumer protection statutes uh, charitable trust statutes and possibly even criminal fraud statutes. In a battle that sometimes resembles a legal contact sport, A.G. Dan Morales took a tough shot at Robert Tilton. Morales says he will not only see if the pastor has broken the law, but he will share what he finds with federal investigators with the IRS and the U.S. Postal Service. Dan Morales did not call me to preach and he didn't hire me and he came fire me. We wanted to get Reverend Tilton's side of the story, but he is said to be in Hawaii. His main lawyer, J.C. Joyce, is also unreachable in California. Tilton's attorney in Austin claims Morales is doing this because earlier a federal court ruling went against him. She said, the attorney general is intent upon continuing to persecute this church. The Tiltons are appalled that Morales would try to save face after losing miserably in court. There is no legitimate basis for a criminal investigation. I'm very proud of the Attorney General that he took this action. It took a lot of courage. Anthony feels Morales is simply doing what he has to do. He didn't want to file criminal charges at first because he didn't want to embarrass the Universal Church. The idea of filing criminal charges against a pastor is an embarrassment to all of us that name the name of God. I think he was trying to be kind, and I think now he's taking the gloves off. The Dallas minister claims in every piece of mail he sends out, Tilton commits 16 counts of postal fraud. On Friday, the first Texans will file suit against Tilton, joining two widows in Oklahoma who earlier sued. We've learned that two Dallas women will now sue. One is dying of cancer and sent money to Tilton after seeing his television show.
After she came down with cancer, she will claim, she was so swayed by the preacher, she turned away from medical help and felt a miracle from Tilton would heal her. The other woman, we're told, who will sue is from Holland. After tithing for years to Tilton and his church, she came to Dallas to be near the pastor. She will claim in suit she later had hard times and sought help from Tilton, but was turned away. And how does Tilton's chief accuser feel all of this will turn out? This way. But if he doesn't do the act of beginning the process of selling what he has and giving to the poor, I believe he'll end up in jail and this church will be a parking lot. Now, Pastor Tilton has asked me to uh, read a statement that he has prepared for you this morning. I am shocked and appalled by the continual abuse and unethical actions by the Attorney General of the state of Texas, Dan Morales. Once again, he is harassing us and making negative statements about me, our church, and my ministry. He is now publicly saying he is investigating me for criminal fraud. Obviously, he has not read, nor does he show respect for the federal judge's permanent injunction along these lines. It appears his motives are political, and he is slandering our church to draw attention to himself. The Attorney General's office has met several times with a garbologist, a man who has lied about my ministry for years. <laughs> but neither, his, neither he nor his associates would take the time to meet with our attorney, J.C. Joyce, Marty, and myself to give our side of the story. Obviously, he does not want the truth. End of quote. Another former follower of television evangelist Robert Tilton has decided to sue. Cancer patient Mary Elizabeth Turk says she sent Tilton nearly $1,500 believing she would be healed of her pain and her illness. She says she had delayed medical treatment because she trusted Tilton. I was in terrible pain, and I turned on this program for the first time, and, uh, and he was promising me everything that I needed and desired right there. Well, I thought this was just God speaking to me. He said, I've got the faith. All you need to do is, do is obey and send the money. And uh, I've got the faith, you know. And he said, because he was God's prophet, he just said, you know, you send this money and you're going to be healed. Turk is seeking $50 million in damages from Tilton. She is one of four women who now have lawsuits pending against the television evangelist. Tilton's lawyers say, quote, we certainly feel sorry that she feels the church has harmed her. It was certainly not our intent. I'm real disappointed today. I really am. All you reporters and stuff, I didn't have my full color picture in the left hand top corner of the morning news this morning. I'm real. My feelings are hurt. And I heard they were going to picket us today, you know, and going to have all, I mean, you know, just hundreds and thousands were going to come, and I heard one was out there. These folks watch this on TV, they're standing by, <laughs> just waiting for some morsel of something to roll out of my mouth that'll make the six o'clock news. Still ahead, putting your faith, your health, and your money in the hands of televangelist Robert Tilton. I want you right now to make a vow of a thousand dollars. It's a plea that's paying off, but for whom? The Texas-based television evangelist is under criminal investigation for the way he operates his Word of Faith ministry. In addition, Tilton faces civil suits from people who charge he did not deliver on a promise of miracles for money. CNN's Tony Clark reports. There's people out of jobs. There's... Mary Turk spends most of her time lying down. The 67-year-old widow is terminally ill with colon cancer. For much of the past two years, she avoided going to the doctor waiting instead for her illness to be healed through televangelist Robert Tilton. He said, um, whatever your need is, if you need healing, or if you need a financial miracle, or whatever your need is, you can have the desires of your heart. I'm telling you, this is the way you can break the curses. But as Tilton says repeatedly in his television programs, there is a price for miracles. 
I want you right now to make a vow of $1,000. T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D. Why do you say a thousand, Bob? Well, I've given hundreds, and I've given fifties, and I've given five hundreds, and I like a thousand. Once on the mailing list, Mary got a flood of letters from Tilton's organization, and she responded with checks. But as the weeks passed, there was no miracle, only more letters. And when the letter would come in the mail, I think, oh, wonderful, this is the day. I'll get my miracle today, you know? And, um... But I have to write another letter and send another offering. Mary sent Tilton around $1,500 from her Social Security benefits and her husband's life insurance. And though she was in pain, she refused to go to the doctor, believing that that would be a sign that she lacked faith. We believe there are thousands of Mary Turks out in the hinterlands of America. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a nonprofit group he set up nine years ago to, among other things, monitor the activities of religious broadcasters. Later this month, Anthony plans to have a toll-free number available for people to call who feel they've been victims of televangelists. It's one of the saddest things that exists in our society that these alleged men of God have taken advantage of the widows and orphans that are in our society. And I believe that that means... You know, Four women, including Turk, are now suing Tilton and the Texas Attorney General is pursuing a criminal investigation. Tilton's attorney says the church meant no harm. TV evangelists may read from the Bible, but an angry preacher named Ole Anthony says some of them have forgotten a very important lesson from the good book, the one about a rich man not getting into heaven. Ole has declared war on wealthy televangelists, and as Frank Grimes discovered, he's leading his troops into battle with the cry, Onward, Christian soldiers. Television preachers, they latch on to the Bible, tell you that if you send them some money, they'll talk to God for you. When God's got your money, he's got your heart. They promise miracles. They will heal your legs, your eyes, and your pocketbook. Yes, you too can have the jewels, mansions, and boats. Just do what the Bible says. Pay them. Pay them. Brother Bob says, number one, poverty is a curse. The evil of Robert Tilton, the evil of the televangelist, is that they trivialize suffering. Only Anthony has only one thing in common with televangelists. He, too, reads a Bible. Psalm 76 says, bow and pay. His knowledge of scripture is limited to those that justify you sending him money. Only Anthony says the faithful do send Robert Tilton money. According to Anthony, about $120 million worth every year. Welcome to real Christianity. Not so, says Ole Anthony. Twenty years ago, he created the Trinity Foundation here in Dallas, Texas, as the antithesis to and a watchdog against televangelists. Trinity has grown into an organized community, but Ole Anthony does not solicit money. He offers no miracles. Anybody that would come here has to be off his rocker a little bit because you don't get anything here except a sense of peace. You promise nothing. You have to work your little butt off 24 hours a day. Many of these folks were crack addicts, convicts, and homeless before coming to Trinity where material rewards are meager. It's friendship. That's the biggest payoff. Man. Being accepted without... You know, Unconditionally, you know, without any strings. Yeah. Ole Anthony mocks religious bigots by describing himself as a Jew, a Muslim, and a Christian. He is using his talents as a former U.S. intelligence agent and businessman yeah, to wage a holy war against TV uh, preachers, especially Robert Tilton. Ole Anthony has a whole room dedicated to explaining how Tilton works. This is the televangelist Wheel of Fortune. It starts out in Dallas at the television studio where they have 800 people working, most of them taking phone calls 24 hours a day. The object is to get names and addresses, names and addresses. Names and addresses are what feed the Wheel of Fortune. Anthony says every two weeks, Tilton's people send stuff like this to 880,000 households. A prayer cloth or maybe a prayer cord with attached literature explaining what to do and where to send it with your vow. According to Ole Anthony, vow means money. And that, along with the thousand dollars you send him, will cause your miracle to come to pass. It's just, it's a heavenly Las Vegas. 
It's worse than Las Vegas. Only Anthony says it only gets worse. He says that during a month and a half period, he and others found 15 tons of these prayer requests in the garbage behind a building involved in Tilton's operation. These are prayers, prayers, prayers that we found in the trash. Bundles, thousands of prayers. And of the people's sincere prayers that they sent in, they just took the money out and ran. Robert Tilton has denied any fraud in connection with his organization and claims that someone planted the prayer requests in the garbage. The Trinity Foundation has established an 800 number for alleged victims of televangelists. Tilton is currently under investigation by the Texas Attorney General's office. I've said this often that I don't want to see these men in jail. I don't want to see Robert Tilton in jail. What I'd like him to do is sell all he has, give to the poor, and start following the real Jesus. There are more legal problems for the embattled TV ministry of Robert Tilton. A fifth widow has filed suit against Tilton. Norma Smith's attorney calls the lawsuit against Tilton the pledge from the grave. Norma's husband Tommy mowed yards to send money to Robert Tilton. Tommy dies, but continues to get mail from the ministry telling Tommy to pay up his pledge. The problem, the date of the pledge, is after his death. I think that he's a fraud. I think he's ungodly. I don't think he's a, a true disciple, like I thought he would and made other people think. He don't know us. If he did, like I said, he would know that my husband was dead. Either God or Reverend Tilton has got, their, got the wires crossed. And I want a jury to determine who's telling the truth. If more lawsuits are filed, Tilton may be spending more time in court than here at his church. Tilton's Tulsa attorney tells me today in response to this latest suit that Tilton meant no harm to Mrs. Smith. My mama didn't raise no fool. It was my bulletproof vest. Said, this is my bulletproof vest, the word of God. That'll make a nice bite for you. If you, if, if you cannot handle your pastor prospering, then you need to find another, another church. Because you're in the wrong church. We have purchased all of the airtime on a television station here in Dallas. 24 hours a day of television broadcasting from Word of Faith. We're going to have our own TV broadcast 24 hours a day right here in Dallas! 24 hours a day! It's called, we're going to call it the Power Channel. Sin now prosperity. And you know the whole city is going to tune in and watch it. You know with the kind of press that we have, everybody watches everything we do. I bet those other networks are shaking their boots. Television evangelist Robert Tilton today is facing still more multi-million dollar lawsuits. And the colorful preacher is getting ready to preach on television around the clock, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. I believed in his ministry, and I was hurt. Andrea Johnson says she turned to a man of God for help on healing, and instead was handed lies and cheating. The Dallas mother of three is on welfare. She suffers from polio and a mental disorder, and turned to television preacher Robert Tilton for a miracle to fix her left leg and to ease the family's poverty. She gave Tilton money, she says, even sent him her food stamps, but says she never got any kind of blessing. Did you deprive yourself and your children of things you needed to contribute to Tilton? Yes. How so? Clothing, um, food. Some of my bills, I felt that um, that he was a true prophet. But that's, 
that's not true. Tilton is also being hit with a lawsuit by Curtis and Patsy High of Dallas. In a custody battle, they lost their four children. Desperate to get them back, their mother sought help from the TV evangelist. The way he was running it down, it was just like it just fit right to me, so I just took it like that because I was deeply depressed, and I was just looking out for anything. You know, he's just like... The first person you're going to turn to is a man of God. What I couldn't understand, figure out in the whole thing, if God sent him, his own son, him, you know, die and save the world, why would he turn it over to Tilden? At one point, uh, Curtis, even he's a contractor, uh, received $800 for a, a job that he did. They filled the car up with gas and took the balance of that money to Tilton's church. The couple gave Tilton $15,000 and ended up so poor their electricity was turned off. They say when they really got down and out, they asked Tilton for some help, but he sent them away. In a total of seven lawsuits now, former Tilton followers are asking for more than $200 million in damages. The Dallas preacher is the target of a criminal investigation by the Attorney General of Texas. And now, Tulsa lawyer Gary Richardson says he'll give the U.S. attorney evidence that Tilton has broken federal mail fraud laws. I still believe in God. I always will. But now he'll be the only one I do believe in. The pastor of this church really doesn't talk to the press much, but this evening he invited us out here, and Reverend Tilton continues to insist he's done nothing wrong. I'm here to say I think when the dust settles, we will have been totally vindicated. Uh, I think that uh, we have not done anything legally wrong, and uh, uh, I can't really comment, comment on what I haven't seen or heard. It amazes me that these uh, attorneys always have a press conference to announce uh, more things they're doing. And uh, I think uh, it's just people getting on a bandwagon thinking they're going to get a bunch of money. And I, I have uh, several adversaries out there that uh, um, I think, prank, frankly, are just very jealous of our success and uh, have personal vendettas to destroy this church and ministry. And battle television evangelist Robert Tilton said today he will take his ministry around the clock. He is booking a cable channel on which he will do his religious programming. The evangelist made himself available for questions late this afternoon. And Texas News 5's Bob Serkin joins us now live from Tilton's headquarters with the latest. First of all, Bob, what did Reverend Tilton have to say? Well, Reverend Tilton is right here, and he's in the control room of his TV operation, which uh, he is going to take worldwide. But uh, <laughs> You're prophesying. Well, uh, first of all, I've got to ask you about the news of the day, and yeah. that is uh, two more lawsuits yeah. filed against you, a total of seven, uh, a woman who claims that she sent you $2,000, food stamps yeah. uh, well, first in of return all, we, for healing. We don't uh, receive food stamps. Did you and take the food stamps uh, I, have, I have no idea about that. And you didn't we get don't any food take, stamps from this woman? Not that I know of, and we don't. And that's not part of the issue. But we feel like what these is the lawsuits... Issue? What is the issue? They're very frivolous. There is no legal content or substance to them. But a woman says that she gave you $2,000 in food stamps. Yeah, I know nothing about that. And that, you know, right. and, What you know, about the couple who says they gave you $15,000 to reunite them with their four children? I know nothing about that. And I'll tell you something. Is all of the this out of thin air? Where I, does this come from? I think it just comes from some, some people being victimized by attorneys and people with hidden agendas. I think, totally I think, baseless I think it's baseless, frivolous. Now, I don't doubt these women do not have sincere hurts in their lives because I help hurting people yeah. but I think they've been victimized but seven by lawsuits seven, seven lawsuits they're all could they all be wrong absolutely and that we oh. will be vindicated when the dust settles I hope you put us at the top of the hour all right there it is uh, Reverend Robert don't forget Tilton. the 24 hour channel that's what <laughs> you said you're going to talk Tilton, about uh, telling us uh, giving <laughs> us his reaction to these lawsuits numbering seven now this reporter was interviewing me this week the one that was such a jerk on channel five He says, tell me about this 24-hour channel. I said, oh, it's going to be full of documented testimonials and good news and videos and news and weather and this, that, and the other. And I says, we're probably going to have some, uh, we're, I say, we're probably going to have some of investigative reporting. <laughs> we're probably going to have us a bunch of hidden cameras. We're going to investigate the investigators. <laughs> He ought to be the first one investigated, anybody disrespect like that. You know, we've got some folks right now that are real aggravated because they didn't get their prayers answered that they sent in to me. And uh, 
actually suing me because they didn't get their prayers answered. Believe me, that is ignorance gone to seed. <laughs> Basically, what they are, they are being taken advantage of by glory-seeking uh, attorneys. So you folks don't get nervous about coming here in your church being divided up by eight people. If anybody are to sue anybody, you folks are to sue somebody Amen. trying to steal your church. TV evangelist Robert Tilton says he doesn't answer people's prayers, God does. And if God doesn't give you what you want, Tilton says, don't be mad at him. Why it works for some and doesn't work for others. And if you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at God. Don't sue me. We base our healing and our prosperity on faith, and faith is something you cannot see, and you cannot sue something you cannot see. It has nothing to do with faith. It has to do with commercial fraud in the name of God. He's ludicrous. Of course, there's, he's going to be sued so many times it's going to make his head swim. There's hundreds and hundreds of lawsuits that are forthcoming. Only Anthony says the trouble for Tilton is just beginning. Later this month, Anthony will have an 800 number for people to call to report problems with televangelists. I'm going to be talking about financial breakthrough financial breakthrough. You mean we don't have to be sick and tired of being sick and tired and broke anymore? Oh, you don't have to be broke anymore. That's the choice that people make is being broke. When you get into the Word of God and you find out what God's Word has to say, it changes your life. I can hear someone right now in the religious crowd. Watch out for those prosperity preachers! Can't you hear it? Just that going. No, watch out for those that tell you God wants you poor. Amen. You can't preach the gospel if you're poor. Amen. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You know what that word, you know, I, I, I was reading that word green. Boy, I mean, I got to thinking about dollar bills. <laughs> then I got to thinking about five dollar bills. Then I got to thinking about twenty dollar bills. Then I got to thinking about hundred dollar bills. Lord, just make me lie down in the green. Oh, yes, Lord, let me lie down in the green. I want to be in the green, Lord. That'll make good television coverage. I think I've been misled. <clears throat> yeah, I feel betrayed. It's getting to be a familiar oh, scene. A disgruntled Robert Tilton off. supporter sits next right. to Tulsa attorney Gary Richardson and announces a lawsuit. Eileen Gaines used to tune in religiously. Yeah, I was listening to him every morning. I made him up business to get up every morning to hear him. I prophesy abundance into your life. Gaines says she believed sending Tilton money would solve her financial problems. She says she paid him about $2,500. At Christmas, she says she couldn't afford presents for her kids. And I asked for a loan. And I told him that we would repay it when I never heard from him. This makes at least eight people who are now taking Tilton to court, accusing him of fraud, and the number just keeps growing. So far, none of the cases has actually gone to trial. Attorney Richardson says he's still considering what's called a RICO lawsuit against Tilton that would accuse the entire ministry of being a scam. We tentatively uh, are trying to uh, schedule a deposition for Robert Tilton uh, around mid-June and we will be seeking uh, uh, all kinds of records and documents. A federal judge up in Tulsa has tonight rejected a plea from Dallas TV evangelist Robert Tilton to shut up his critics. Tilton went to federal court up in Tulsa today trying to silence those who claim he defrauds his followers preaching the gospel of greed. Televangelist Robert Tilton admits tonight his ministry has lost viewers and lost contributors since a number of former believers started filing fraud suits against him. In Tulsa today, Tilton's lawyer, J.C. Joyce, asked a federal judge for a restraining order to stop the TV preacher's enemies from making alleged libelous and slanderous comments that are chasing away his followers. Among those Tilton wanted to shut up is Ole Anthony, whose Dallas-based Trinity Foundation has led the way in exposing Tilton's style of preaching. But he's taken the teachings of Christ and based on half scriptures developed a theology that justifies greed. 
justifies commercial fraud even. The lawsuit, as I read it, is an act of fiction. He accused me in it, as you saw earlier, that uh, uh, I duped ABC News, Primetime Live. I, I duped Diane Sawyer into uh, believing that uh, Tilton was a bad man when he was, in truth, this wonderful, wonderful person. Science! Evidence! Proof! Reverend Tilton is furious at things people are saying about him, and in federal court, he fired back. Tilton claims his enemies are out to destroy him and his church and deny him his constitutional right to practice his religion. He asked the judge to force them to pay an unnamed amount of money, plus order all of them not to make false and malicious statements about him or imply he has broken the law. Let him go talk to Mary Turk, who's going to die of cancer because of his activities. Let him talk to the uh, hundreds of people who gave him everything they owned and then came to the church for help and they were turned away because they said, uh, we don't help people here. Our mission is to preach the gospel. Uh, that's just ludicrous. We figure that we've cost him $5 million a month since uh, we started uh, exposing his fraudulent activities. And are you suggesting that he's retaliating because you're taking money out of his pocket? Oh, of course, that's the only reason. In his lawsuit, Tilton's attorneys write, quoting now, the firestorm of negative media coverage is being fueled by Ole Anthony and fanned by Gary Richardson for the purpose of destroying Tilton and his religious rights. In Dallas, Ole Anthony had this reaction to being named in the lawsuit. Well, we're not out to destroy him or his church. In fact, if he would stop his television fraud in the name of God, we wouldn't care about what he did. Tilton's attorneys wanted a judge to issue an order against what they consider false statements designed to destroy the ministry. Judge James Ellison denied that, but did seem to question Richardson's use of a PR firm to publicize his lawsuits and agreed there is enough to hold a trial. The holy thing is not the piece of paper. The holy thing is the prayer. Tonight on the News 8 Update at 10. New information in a News 8 exclusive, Robert Tilton's controversial prayer requests. And what happens to the actual document? It's all Okay. It's been read, it's, it's been answered, they've now prayed for the prayer request. News 8 has uncovered video depositions that could answer some questions once and for all. This is the News 8 Update. When we see this intentional abuse, bigotry, intentional, directed verbiage to stir up the media and stir up people against me and my church and my members, then that makes me fighting mad. TV evangelist I, Robert I, Tilton I, unleashes his anger under tough questioning by state investigators. In a videotape never seen before by the public, Tilton also has new revelations about how he runs his church. Tilton now says he does not personally pray over all the prayer requests that are sent to his ministry. That admission comes in a new videotape deposition obtained by Channel 8 News under the Texas Open Records Act. In this exclusive report, Channel 8's Bill Brown reports Tilton's testimony differs from what he and other church officials have said publicly in the past. Evangelist Robert Tilton bills himself as a messenger of God, one who brings hope to the hopeless. But an intriguing piece of videotape reveals a different Bob Tilton, one who contradicts the one we see in his TV sermons and in news conferences. Earlier, when accused of not reading the prayer request from his viewers, but just taking the money they send, Tilton said, Every prayer request that comes in, that gets into our office, that gets into our mail, I personally pray over. On flyers mailed out to the viewers, Tilton urges them to place their hands on the paper and send it in. He then promises to place his hand on that same spot as he does a special prayer for the person. So you physically touch each prayer request that comes in? I lay my hands on top of the prayer requests that come in. And I do not personally always touch every sheet, but I lay my hands on every sheet. But here, Tilton admits he never sees many of the actual letters asking for prayers written by desperate people. He says those go to a company called Internal Data Management in Tulsa, where the employees read them, then put them in categories such as marriage, job, and health, and list each one on a computer printout. And they send me the prayer requests. The original prayer requests themselves? Not all of them are the original prayer requests. Some uh, are on a computer printout with their specific kind of prayer that they want me to pray. Okay. So I don't get the actual 
document of some of them. And what happens to the actual document? Some of them. Okay. It's been read. It's, it's been answered. They've now prayed for their prayer request. The holy thing is not the piece of paper. The holy thing is the prayer. Tilton's videotape testimony differs from statements made by other church officials. In fact, according to the church's own attorney, if Tilton doesn't pray over every prayer request, he is committing a federal crime. If that ministry says you send your prayer request in and Reverend Tilton will pray over that prayer request, and if he doesn't, that is mail fraud. If we take prayer requests and we don't answer prayer requests and we throw them in the trash, we're guilty of mail fraud. Absolutely. Yep. We welcome a criminal investigation. Because Absolutely. we do not throw prayer requests away. On television, I Tilton just, seems ready to shower everyone with miracles, just, if they only ask. But under oath, he admits he delivers very few miracles. I know it's God that answers prayer. But the miracles happen through you? Through God. You're not necessary to the procedure well, I pray. I don't know however you want to define that. I pray and God heals somebody. Not all the time, every now and then. You foul spirit of deafness! As for those who sought a miracle but never got one, the Reverend says, don't blame me, blame God. One. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. Four. Tilton is now facing 10 lawsuits from unhappy former church members seeking more than $200 million. The flamboyant TV evangelist continues to insist he has done nothing wrong. I know many of you are watching right now and you're just not sure whether or not what all I say is scriptural. Well, I want you to get your Bible. Let's find out what God says. So often we listen to what the press says or what uh, people that unscrupulously edit things out or in say or write or slant things in the direction they want a story or copy to go in. But let's find out what God says today. Oh, it's one of the greatest days that the church has ever lived in. In fact, in the morning, this church is launching out into the deep again with 24 hours of mountain moving power. The Power Channel 55. Yeah, what's up? It's I'm gonna kick it with the mind, y'all know. It's Yo, Slim, can I kick it right now? Here we go. It's, 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 well, it's time. about that time. Oh, time to make the change. Yeah, yeah. We are the people who can do better. People of the world today are fading. All of us have our ups and downs. You better think about it or you won't be around. It's what we need is a little bit of love. Send by one from heaven up above. Take a pity, it's simple and plain. This ain't no game, you know what I'm saying. What is time? Yep, yeah. Here we go. We are the people who can do it. Oh, yeah. It's time. Time to make a change. Time to make a change. It's time to make a change. I like that, don't you? <laughs> Tilton TV is on the air. The controversial Dallas tele uh, televangelist Robert Tilton took over his own TV channel today. We probably will do some investigative reporting, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, to just really get what we believe from our perspective is the true story. Pastor Tilton took a shot at reporters who have been digging into his ministry as he took over the airwaves at KDLT-TV Channel 55 in Louisville this morning. And during the first moments of his 24-hour-a-day religious-based format, Tilton unleashed on what he perceives as his mistreatment by the media. Take water and turn it yellow, yellow journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone can slant things or edit things or do a hatchet job on somebody. And that's not our intention at all. By the way, KLDT does not carry paid advertisements, but it does solicit funds. One Tilton critic, Oli Anthony, says the effort is nothing more than a fundraising vehicle for Tilton. Anthony says Tilton's donations are down about 50% since allegations of fraud were leveled at him earlier this year. Television evangelist Robert Tilton launched a 24-hour religious programming channel today. Channel 55 will now carry Tilton's religious shows around the clock seven days a week. But as Channel 8's Peggy Waymeyer reports, now that Tilton is easier to watch, there are probably fewer people who want to watch it.
KLBT, the Power Channel. Robert Tilton advertises it as the Power Channel, non-stop programming that includes religious talk shows, news, and Christian music videos. I see that Christ is your conductor. Though you won't see commercials or paid advertising on Channel 55, you will see the kind of programming that has made Robert Tilton so controversial. He'll be asking for money. Tilton's expanded television programming comes at a time when he says attacks on his church are hurting the ministry. He lost nearly 39% of his television viewing audience in a recent ratings period. In a videotaped deposition obtained by Channel 8 News under the Texas Open Records Act, Tilton accuses the Attorney General's office of damaging his ministry. What is the damage, though? Last church. Uh, less people responding uh, to our ministry through television. Uh, the mail has dropped considerably more death threats. Uh, people are more, our church members are tremendously upset and feel very damaged by this. Under questioning from the Attorney General's office, Tilton also compared himself to Jesus Christ, who was persecuted by his government. Religious Pharisees and Sadducees that didn't like him because he was messing up their religion and their tradition, stirred up the authorities of Jesus' day to, to try to trick him, to catch him in words, which is exactly what you're trying to do to me right now. This is just history repeating itself a thousand times it's over. No one from Tilton's ministry would respond to us on camera, but a spokesman did say that Tilton is calling Channel 55's debut a great new beginning that's creating plenty of energy and is stimulating an abundance of positive phone calls. I have a very, very special announcement I'm going to be making today, and I don't know if we're going to do it on the air or not, so you might need to be here so that you can hear the most powerful announcement that has been made since the church started. And it is exciting. I've just been about to bust my buttons off all week. I wanted to tell it last week. If you only knew what I had in here. Secret, I got a secret, and I'm not gonna tell. Next Sunday, when I said, I heard Tilton's going under. Tilton is not going under. No, he's going over. A few weeks ago, Mar and I went away, and we spent a, quite a bit of time alone in prayer and seeking God on what He wanted. We came back. We, we decided that we wanted to be on that television station. And we got on it. Second thing we decided was Farmer's Branch was too small for us. So I got one of my servants, one of the men in the church, I got and I says, go find us some property somewhere. Find it someplace nice. Find it with trees. Find it beautiful. Find it accessible to everybody in the Metroplex. Find something befitting our big God. And you know what happened? Bring those screens down. We're going to show you what happened. We're going to show you what God said. Rule in the midst of your enemies till I make them your footstool. And you know what's so exciting? Listen, it's not 20 miles that away out in the country where the land is cheap. The new home of Word of Faith World Outreach Center, Robert Tilton Ministries, the new 21st Century Apostolic Center is right here on the corner of LBJ and Stimmons Freeway. 56 acres, watch this. Roll the tape. There's the intersection right there. 56 acres, 
all bought and paid for. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on Sunday Morning Live here at Word of Faith Family Church. What an exciting Sunday service. So much going on. The advent of our new television station here in the Metroplex TV 55. We invite you to join us weekdays uh, around the clock on Channel 55. Just point your antenna in the direction of Louisville. You should be able to pick us up loud and clear. And then the announcement, the exciting announcement today of our new property uh, located actually southwest of where we are located right now and as we begin to grow and go in that direction there we'll keep you in the weeks to come informed as to what's happening there we want to make you an active part in the growth of this exciting new apollo stock <laughs> new church okay <laughs> don't want to forget about next weekend here at word of faith family church Apop apostolic i'll get it right one of these days apostolic thank you rick apostolic center Western Day, next Sunday here at Word of Faith Family Church. Bring your rope, your cowboys, your six-shooter, but bring your family and friends and come join us here for a wonderfully exciting day. Lots of rides and attractions for the whole family, plus all the barbecue you can eat. Television preacher Robert Tilton says he's pulling out a farmer's branch and will build a new multi-million dollar complex in Dallas. Tilton calls it a message of victory over Satan and his enemies. Pursued by investigators and besieged by lawsuits, Robert Tilton promised his flock some good news. They were ready for some, as Tilton battles what he calls a plot by Satan to destroy him at his church through the press and the Attorney General of Texas. But while some say it's just a matter of time until he falls, Tilton is now vowing to be bigger than ever. He says he's tired of land disputes with city leaders of Farmers Branch, so he's leaving the town and moving into Dallas. The preacher says he'll sell everything on the present site, north of LBJ Freeway and east of I-35, and move south to the southwest corner of the two freeways. Tilton says amid all of his troubles, he went away to pray, and God told him to move and rebuild. I hear that Jesus said, rule in the midst of thine enemies until I make them your footstool. That's what I hear. But while publicly, Tilton says all is well, under oath a while back, he told an assistant attorney general, investigations are badly hurting his ministry. You've further alleged that uh, over 1,000 members of the plaintiff church, because of the actions of the attorney general, have asked to be removed from its roles and mailing list. Yes. Okay. You further allege that uh, the church has suffered a substantial diminution in the number of new people joining this religion. Okay. Um, do you have any numbers on that? Yes. Okay. What, do you have an estimate that you can tell me today? 7,500 to 10,000 maybe. Tilton will call his 56-acre site the 21st Century Apostolic Center. He says it'll have a 10-story office building, a 10,000-seat auditorium, a student academy, an athletic complex with swimming pools, tennis courts, a gym and a track, plus a new broadcast center. The minister said money is needed now more than ever, and he urged his followers to give more than they ever have. We are having Western Day Cowboy Day here at Word of Faith Family Church, and I'm Pastor Bob Tilton, and this is one of my special friends just kind of walking through here. What is your name? D.W. Phillips. D.W. Phillips, and D.W., where are you from? Well, I'm from Jacksonville, Texas. You know, that was the first town that Marty and I preached in after we went into ministry full-time, and uh, we preached in a funeral home there. Really? And had a lot, actually had a lot of miracles. Only prayed for one dead person and didn't come back to life. But uh, we had a lot of miracles and a lot of people saved. This would be great on Channel 8 tonight. <laughs> I dare you guys out there. I know you're watching. I dare you to put this on. <laughs> Do something honest for a change. Earn an honest living. <laughs> this is News 8 at 5. He is digging and digging and digging like a scavenger for dirt, and there is no dirt. He needs to get a clue. Texas Attorney General Dan Morales is publicly admonished twice, once by a federal judge and a second time by a TV preacher's daughter. A federal judge in Austin blasted Morales' release of a videotaped deposition by Robert Tilton, calling it unjustifiable. The Attorney General's office had agreed not to release the tape, but then released it anyway. Tilton cried foul, and today a federal judge agreed, reprimanding the state's top crime fighter. 
Robert Tilton um, never wanted the public to see him giving testimony to the Texas Attorney General's office. So his attorneys got the state's attorneys to agree not to release this videotaped deposition to the media. And then last month, Channel 8 News received and broadcast portions of the deposition after a request had been filed for it under the Texas Open Records Act. It was the Opinions Committee in our office that made an independent determination, a distinct determination, that these were public documents. A nobody can override Texas law. Tilton's lawyers cried foul and went to federal court arguing Morales' office violated the agreement in bad faith, acted unethically, and sought to discredit Tilton's ministry. He is a very spiteful, a very vengeful man. But Morales argued the two attorneys who made the agreement were not the ones who decided to release the tape. Federal Judge Sam Sparks said he could not comprehend Morales violating his own attorney's agreement. Judge Sparks hammered Morales for what he called unprofessional and unjustifiable conduct. He publicly reprimanded the state's top attorney but would not impose any monetary sanctions. Morales disagreed with the judge but took the occasion to blast Robert Tilton. A Robert Tilton is raping the most vulnerable segments of our society, the poor, the infirm, the elderly, uh, those who, who uh, are so ignorant as to believe uh, his garbage. The term rape is outrageous. It's, you know, he, he has no clue of what the freedom of religion is. And um, the day Mr. Morales is out of Texas, I think will be a very happy day. It's really sickening to see poor people, to see elderly people, to see individuals who believe some of these claims that the Reverend is going to heal them if they'll just send them money. So as another battle in this legal scuffle ends, the Attorney General's office says the investigation into the Word of Faith ministry will continue. And I really don't like getting into it, but many of you are questioning what happened. What happened was there was a, a video deposition when we were suing the Attorney General. We made an agreement with their attorney generals, four of them, three or four of them in a room, that they would not release the deposition to the media because they had already been releasing stuff to the media, attacking me in the That's what one of the re th things the whole thing was about, was attacking me in the media through their public relations office. Then they released it, though, without even phoning us and giving us an opportunity to legally block that injunction. And those of you that saw Channel 8, they edited it up just like some of those idiots know how to do, turned it all around and made it look like I was saying things that uh, I um, didn't say. And they did exactly what we thought the press would do if they got a hold of something because they're not interested in the truth. Well, the Attorney General comes right back out on the steps of the courthouse and starts running his mouth again, which he's going to, he will eat those words one way or another. He will eat them. But anyway, I do apologize uh, for having to bring this into the service. I think it's important. I think many of you are wondering what has happened. Uh, the bottom line is the Attorney General would never meet with us in the very beginning of all of this. Uh, they would meet with uh, uh, Ole Anthony. They would meet with the press, but they would not meet with us. I have found the secret to being happy in the midst of storms. Oh, I could get sad. I could, if I really wanted to work at it, I could get real depressed. I mean, I could just really tribulate. Oh, I could think about people mocking me on radio and television, writing lies about me in newspaper articles and magazines. I could, I could get all upset about songs written about me actually being mocking me on the radio and stuff. But I don't let those things bother me. You need to make a vow of faith of a thousand dollars. Oh, Bob, couldn't you say twenty-five? No. See, I like a thousand because I know I got. I got you. Glorify me. You believe that's in the Bible. You got a Bible.
than I've ever been. Just seem like the wilder and the bolder I get, the bigger I talk, the bigger the wilder the miracles happen in people's lives. <laughs> I used to drink lots of alcohol and do lots of drugs. I know how to live by faith and operate in the spiritual weapons of the spirit, I'm continually victorious. Yes, I'm living in victory now, even in the midst of a storm or a hurricane. Did you know that that's scriptural? Well, if I were you, I would stay tuned for the best <laughs> is yet to come. talking about religious satire, and no, it's not an oxymoron, as well as a satire in our society in general. Only satire is part of your ministry. It's part of the way that you communicate the message um, that you feel is important for people to understand. What are, what are the kinds of things that you're trying to say through the door? Well, satire <laughs> is, the, is, to me, the, 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 the missing link that the modern church has lost in, dis in destroying uh, idolatry. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Pride and vanity are so rooted in our hearts that when we come to God, we then think that our own ideas become God's ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have these people, every God. other word they say, oh, God is telling me. Well, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Jesus was his only son, and he only spoke to him three times verbally. Uh -huh. I mean, this is crazy. Uh -huh. And we're leading millions of people astray. Well, lack satire. I mean, we, we, we make fun of guys all the time who say, oh, God told me. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't tell them. I mean, that's it's just a lie. Okay. Well, you, you wrote a, a piece, a satirical piece on, on Bob Tilton. Why was he good material for satire? It was called A Letter from Hell. And I guess <laughs> okay, it was my, it. my small attempt to do something like C.S. Lewis did uh -huh. with the screw tape letters. Uh -huh. Basically, it was a letter from a demon in hell congratulating <laughs> Tilton for all his good work here on Earth. Mm -hmm. uh, so the whole thing comes from, from that, that point of view. Uh, and I just found, it, it was written while Ole and, and Primetime Live and all were having their battle with Tilton and while he was showing us how he not only prayed over those prayer requests in the dumpster, he would lie <laughs> down on them and wallow on them. And so he, he even showed us, I remember, the ink on his hands, like the, the stigmata <laughs> here, you know. That the point of satire is not just to hurt or to criticize, it's also to suggest a solution, a way of moving past a problem. Uh, a satire of Bob Tilton is, uh, while it may seem on the surface, uh, somewhat vicious is a way of saying why do we need people like Bob right. Tilton to to lead us by our checkbooks to God <laughs>
Rejoice, friends, as we cast a glad eye upon the ministry of Reverend Robert Tilton of Dallas, Texas. I'm not a dirty dog. I'm not a thief. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a flake. I'm a born-again son of God, child of God, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. My hands are anointed. My words are anointed. My eyes are anointed that God's touched me. He's blessed me. He's healed me. He's delivered me. He's prospered me. The Spirit truly moves Brother Tilton in mysterious ways. May the angel of rhythm not pass by his door. I got something to dance about. I got something to sing about. Hold it. I got some more stuff to shout about. Better stop while I'm ahead. That'd make the six o'clock news. And most likely the 11. Not content to dwell in his feet, the joyful spirit makes a pilgrimage northward to bless his tongue. Isn't that something called a moshokoto mazata? Mata toto moton doiti ki shakada kapokoto koto kalaka moshiti. Kali shikado bokoto la bakatai shakabo chokoleka mokotea. I love you. Nor are his eyes immune to the passion of his faith. I love to accept the Lord, don't you? So it's all he's just making those tears up. No, you don't make this kind of tear up. It just comes from somebody that knows somebody real special. The Lord. And Jesus wept. I'm John Bloom, and this has been God Stuff. You see, como sacofa so la matin, que je colo la matin de je colo bocosoya. I wait for this program to come on the air, saith the Lord, the same way you do. Well, the controversy surrounding TV evangelist Robert Tilton seemingly just won't go away. Today, lawyers on both sides were back in court. In a heated legal battle, Tilton's attorneys are now suing the lawyers who are suing them. We don't know what happened today because the judge held the hearing in secret. Scott Gordon is doing his best to cover the story. Right this moment, I need to know who's on the large side and who will help us with a $100 gift today for months now, Robert Tilton's fiery sermons have attracted both attention and controversy. Now he's at the center of a confusing legal battle that seems to be getting more bizarre at every turn. Tilton's attorney, J.C. Joyce, arrived for the latest court hearing, and so did Gary Richardson. He's the attorney suing Tilton on behalf of several former followers who now say the evangelist is a fraud. But what was supposed to be a routine court hearing is shrouded in secrecy. Without explanation, federal judge James Ellison barred reporters from the room where lawyers were meeting. Today's closed court hearing comes after weeks of heated and sometimes behind the scenes legal posturing. It turns out the judge hearing the case at one time worked for Tilton attorney J.C. Joyce. Well, lawyers on the other side cried foul when they found that out. And last week, U.S. Magistrate Jeffrey Wolf removed himself from the case. Isn't God good? Hallelujah! Well, the Tilton legal fight has been the subject of recent articles in at least two national lawyer magazines. But despite the high interest, people may never find out what's going on behind closed doors. Here's what's happening tonight. A federal judge throws out a lawsuit filed by Robert Tilton against his main accuser. A big setback tonight for evangelist Robert Tilton. A judge has thrown out the evangelist's countersuit. That paves the way for earlier lawsuits against Tilton to move forward. Hallelujah! Robert well, Tilton has a lot you, less to celebrate after losing the latest round of legal sparring. His attorney, J.C. Joyce, had filed a lawsuit against those suing Tilton. But today, federal judge James Ellison threw out that countersuit, agreeing with Tilton's critics that it lacked merit. The suit had named attorney Gary Richardson, and it also named others including Dallas Minister Ole Anthony, a leading Tilton critic. Tilton had claimed his constitutional rights to operate a church were being violated. I want to know who's on the Lord's side today. With his lawsuit, Tilton had clearly hoped for a slam dunk, a ruling effectively throwing out all the lawsuits against him. Now, the dismissal means the long, heated legal battle is far from over.
Now, those who accuse Tilton of fraud will get to try their cases in court. And with millions of dollars on the line, the very future of Tilton's TV empire is at stake. Trouble. I need to know who's on the large side. It's very important for a $100 gift today. Howdy. I'm Laurie Pike, and welcome to Made in the USA, the show that samples American television. This week, we're in Dallas. <laughs> Anyone who thinks that televangelists were all disgraced in the 80s is wrong. Rising like a phoenix out of their ashes is Robert Tilton, who leaves Jimmy Swagger and Jim Baker in the dust. Bill Judkins went to check out Tilton Mania. Robert Tilton, a local Texas kid with no formal education, could have easily wound up pumping gas. Instead, he wound up pumping for Jesus, forming America's fastest growing television ministry. His success in life show is seen in over 200 markets across the country and pulls in hundreds of millions of dollars a year. Of course, it goes without saying he's under investigation for fraud. He's preaching the word. I know the word, and he's preaching the word. The Lord is just somehow using him to help me. Do you know the Lord as your savior? Robert Tilton is not speaking to the press. Matter of fact, we're not allowed to take three steps backward onto his property. He did, however, decide to address some of the accusations that have been brought against him on his weekly television broadcast. And you critics out there, if you don't like me, you don't have to watch this TV show. Turn that zapper. Zap me. Go, go watch Donahue. Go watch Ofer. Go watch uh, Murray Povich. Go watch Ted Koppel. Go watch all that stuff they put on TV. Don't, you don't, nobody's twisting your arm to watch me. Nobody's twisting your arm to send a donation in to support this ministry and the work of God. Whether you think Robert Tilton is an angel or the devil, there's no denying he makes some pretty terrific television. But for many, it's Reverend Tilton's eclectic brand of media-savvy performance that makes him worthy of praise and devotion. Come with me as we meet the unauthorized Robert Tilton fan club. The thing about Robert Tilton to me that's so good is that he's so over the top, so unabashed, so blatantly insincere and downright evil that it's refreshing. I'll drink to that. The bigger trouble Bob gets in, the more demand there is for Bob products. This is uh, the uh, Robert Tilton paddle ball set. It's something that's just going into production. This is kind of the prototype. A few new names are being added to the lawsuits against embattled televangelist Robert Tilton. The names include Tilton's Tulsa attorney. Scott Gordon has the latest twist in the high-stakes legal saga. Until now, the lawsuits accusing Robert Tilton of fraud have named only him. Until now, Tilton's Tulsa attorney, J.C. Joyce, has defended the evangelist in what's become an all-out legal battle with attorney Gary Richardson. Now, the latest twist. Richardson is adding Joyce as a defendant in the case, along with two Tulsa companies that do work for Tilton. Response Media, a direct mail company, and Internal Data Management, a computer company. They will be accused, uh, generally speaking, of being part of the Tilton operation that we have accused of defrauding these people. Joyce had little to say as he left the courthouse. Now that he's a defendant in the case, he may not also be able to serve as Tilton's attorney. Already, this case has dragged on for months of twists and turns, suits and countersuits. This latest move, adding new defendants, is likely to push back the timetable even more, meaning it could be many more months, even years, before the case ever goes to trial. This is News Watch 11. There's a new attack called Robert Tilton tonight. Flack from a familiar flank. Televangelist Robert Tilton and media watchdog old Anthony have been at odds for more than a decade now. And tonight they're at it again. Anthony has started a hotline for Tilton's alleged victims. And as Newswatch 11's Rich Isom shows us, Tiltonites are fighting back. That's what you get when you call 1-800-229-VICTOM. The hotline's the latest weapon in an ongoing battle with TV preachers. It's run by Ole Anthony, who's made Robert Tilton his prime target. It's, it's fundamentally so to cause a, a, an exchange between the people who've been victimized. It's not by natural intellect. Tilton was not available to comment on the hotline. 
but his spokesman Dan Moroso did. Well, I think it's pretty obvious that Ole Anthony has made it apparent he's out to destroy Christianity in America, and this hotline is another example. At this point, the hotline is getting about a call a minute. Many of them are harassing. Anthony believes they are coming from Word of Faith supporters. God is going to get you. He's tired of you missing. He's tired of it. You're going to burn in hell. Anthony showed his phone company records listing the first few weeks of incoming calls. Word of Faith's main number in Farmer's Branch is listed again and again. A 1-800 number is not an inexpensive venture. It costs thousands and thousands of dollars. This coming from a man who says he's taken a vow of poverty and he has no money. People dismiss him as a, oh, they're just a southern cultural phenomenon. And the people that get taken, they deserve to be taken, you know, because they're dumb or something. I mean, that's crazy. Anthony vows to keep the pressure on Tilton. Tilton claims he's done nothing wrong and says Anthony and others are jealous of his successful ministry. Rich Isom News, Watch 11. And tomorrow night, uh, ABC's Primetime Live will rebroadcast a report on Tilton's ministry first aired last November. Ole Anthony played a key role in ABC's probe of Tilton. Unprecedented. For the third year in a row, Primetime has won the prestigious Investigative Reporters and Editors Award. Diane Sawyer's tough undercover investigation of televangelism recognized as the best of the best. What's happened to these televangelists since Primetime exposed the way they get money and live like kings? You need money? Open nine miles wide! He's a phony. He's taken people. New information on our investigation. Primetime, next. July 9th, 1992. And tonight, new information on the three televangelists. He has got to know inside that he's a phony, that he's taken people. I think he has become cynical. Including more former employees of Robert Tilton, who come forward to say he's not what he pretends to be. look stupid but I ain't stupid the day after our report Tilton flatly denied that prayer requests are thrown away before he sees them I lay my hands personally on every prayer request that comes in either the phone center or comes in through the mail but four months later here is Tilton in a videotaped deposition with the Texas Attorney General's office which they recently released to the press over Tilton's objection in it Tilton admits he doesn't really pray over every prayer request at all not all of them are the original prayer request. Some uh, are on a computer printout with their specific kind of prayer that they want me to pray. Okay. So I don't get the actual document of some of them. And what happens to the actual document? So do we. And in her deposition, Tilton's wife acknowledged that Tilton's so-called personal letters were not handwritten by him. Is the handwriting on the bail pieces actually Mr. Tilton's handwriting? No, it is not. Is it part of a, a graphics program that you have? It's one of the artists. And who answers these letters asking for spiritual guidance, advice, miracles? Not Tilton, nor his prayer ministers, but people hired by that data processing center in Tulsa. And does Word of Faith specify what kind of training they'll receive? No. The orphanage in Haiti, the people's names on there that run the orphanage and support it if the idiots would just read it. Also, after our broadcast, Tilton attacked us for what we said about his missions. The ones he implies are his own. Like this one. Here's how he promotes it on his TV show. Wings of Mercy, a center sponsored by Robert Tilton Ministries. The promotion makes you think this is Tilton's center. But listen to his deposition. You know what Wings of Mercy is? Not really. No wonder, since Primetime has learned that Tilton's contribution to that mission is just $300 a month. And what about something else Tilton said in his deposition? He claims that his contribution to his mission in Guatemala is 100% of their needs. You were going to provide 100% of the support that they needed to maintain their operation. So we checked this out. We spoke to the on-site missionary in Guatemala, who told us, in fact, Tilton is only a partial sponsor. And the Guatemalan government has gone public to say that Tilton and his promotional material exaggerate his contribution for personal gain. 
including his claim of a special invitation. I've been invited to be in the inauguration, the ball, and all the celebrations. And why That's not true, according to the president's spokesman, Fernando Muniz. No. no. That the president has invited him to attend the inauguration is by all means false, nor does he have any relation with the government. But we cannot take action against a swindler of this caliber. We are going to take this good news of Jesus Christ around the world. You get to help make it happen. Amen. Through your tithes and offerings. Amen. And something else about Tilton the missionary. Repeatedly he tells his viewers that their donations enable him to win souls around the world. And we totally, Word of Faith Ministries, you the family church, underwrites totally this particular evangelism unit. Tilton tells followers they finance crusades in countries too poor to pay themselves. He's come all the way from America. America. So Primetime decided to follow Robert Tilton to India this past March. Do you want to please God tonight? Well, there was Tilton passing the collection plates nightly. If each of these people gave just a few pennies, Tilton would get back hundreds of thousands of dollars. Money taken from the people he himself calls the poorest people on earth. Tilton said, please donate money, please donate money. So everybody got disappointed and then everybody whispered, this is not a crusade, it's a business. And before we leave you, we wanted you to meet two people who decided recently to speak out, to confirm Robert Tilton is not the devoted minister he claims. I never saw him visiting the sick, I never saw him counseling, I never saw him with anybody from the congregation. And I'm not Connie Cohn was the Tilton's personal secretary in the early 80s. She and her husband were so devoted they donated $30,000 to the church. She says she started out in awe of Tilton until she saw the real man up close. She says Tilton had a library filled with get-rich-quick books which he even used for his sermons, though he told her not to tell. I saw some of the sermons and some of the quotes from the books. It's like he takes some of the things out of the books, incorporates them into the sermons, and uses it as the Word of God. Hey, I'm quoting to you what God said. They had a swim pool put in, spent lots and lots of money. Brenda Reynolds also saw Tilton at home. She took care of his children for six years and was head of housekeeping at the ministry for two more. She says Mrs. Tilton ran things at home and the ministry, and the two of them lived like royalty. Oh, yeah, she had diamonds and furs, and I think every pair of shoes she had cost at least 100 bucks, and she had about 150 pair. Him, same thing. And Brenda Reynolds also saw something else. She says the ministry sent over boxes and boxes of prayer requests to Tilton's home for him to look at and pray over. But she says he didn't want them in the house. He had told me to just put them in the garage when they bring them out. Did you ever try to bring them in the house? Well, like I said, I did one time. What happened then? And from then on, well, uh, he just told me to just put them in the garage, and they stayed in the garage, and they stacked up and stacked up. And I told him, I said, well, that, those are things that you're supposed to be praying over, you know. And he told me, he said, well, just take them to the trash, throw them away. I laid on top of those prayer requests so much that the chemicals actually got into my bloodstream. I know for a fact that he did not pray over them, and he, that I took them to the trash myself. And I would look at her and, and I would remember thinking to myself, boy, if these people only knew, you know, what they were doing. He has got to know inside that he's a phony, that he's taken people. I think he has become cynical. And Connie Cohn, a devout Christian, is speaking out because she wants to urge people to follow the Bible. Not, she says, false prophets like Robert Tilton. I just want everybody to know that Bob Tilton is not the only kind of Christian in this world. What he holds up as Christianity is totally false and totally opposite of what the Bible says. You should know we called Robert Tilton last week and his attorney refused our request for an on-camera interview. A few other things. Robert Tilton is being sued by nine people, former followers or families of followers seeking at least $250 million for fraud. He is countersued.
Our original report triggered investigations by the FBI, the IRS, the Postal Service, and the Texas Attorney General's Office. Tilton first said that he'd be open with his records, but then he got a restraining order to keep the Texas Attorney General's Office from obtaining his records. However, the Attorney General says he'll continue his investigation. And finally, in a deposition to the Attorney General's Office, Tilton said that since the investigations began and since our broadcast, his donations are down by as much as one-third. To say the very least, the Robert Tilton story has been up and down all around. And can very confusing over the past nine months or so. We invited both attorneys in this case, Gary Richardson, who represents some of the former followers, and J.C. Joyce, who represents Tilton, to our studios tonight to watch the primetime live segment concerning Tilton. Mr. Joyce declined, saying that he was going to be out of town. But uh, Mr. Richardson did join us, take us up on our offer, and is here tonight. Thank you for joining us. You My had pleasure. an opportunity to see Primetime Live tonight. What's your opinion of the coverage? Was it fair, unfair? What's your assessment? I think it was very fair based on what, uh, what I know. I, I think they were very fair. Why does this case just get longer and longer and longer? The guy's either guilty or not guilty. Why can't they button it up and uh, uh, either go away from it or uh, prove him guilty? Well, the system doesn't work that way. As most people know, our system is quite slow. And particularly in a case such as this, there's never been a lawsuit filed in the history of this country like the lawsuit that we filed in the Robert Tilton case. And uh, everyone is so concerned, and rightfully so, about the separation of church and state. However, as we continue to say, this case has nothing to do about religious beliefs. This case is very simple, and it's about fraud. Well, there are a lot of people that would say that it has everything to do about religion, because that's what they believe in. He represents religion to those people. It has to do with the methods that Robert Tilton is using. The, the conduct. It doesn't have to do with what he believes. A person can believe whatever they choose to believe. But, uh, you know, the question is, is how he goes about uh, causing other people to react and, and give their money, telling them that he's going to do certain things. Certain things are going to happen. Mr. Richardson, uh, excuse me, we've reported on several cases that people are suing, and you are representing most of those people. Where's the scorecard now? I know it's been several. How many people are you representing well, How many lawsuits are, are we talking about? We're talking about, we have filed seven, but there are several more, and, and uh, uh, I'm sure we'll be filing some more. KLDT, the power channel. It is really a sad day in American history, in American journalism, when we see broadcasts and reports like the one we saw last night on ABC. You'll remember that there was a man shrouded in a dark shadow who claims to have been a uh, young school buddy of Pastor Tilton's. Would prime time give the public the name of this person who alleges that they knew Robert Tilton in his youthful days, who alleges that they mocked tent revival meetings? Of course not, because it never happened. Up until that time of the new birth, I'd laughed at preach about preachers. I'd sit in a bar and drink beer and, and, and imitate them. <laughs> I think the Holy Ghost must have been listening, don't y'all? <laughs> he pulled my file. He said, I think one of the angels ran up and said, hey, there's a good candidate down there in the bar. He's down there drink, getting, he's always filled with unholy spirit. <laughs> if he'll get filled with unholy spirit, I believe if he decides to follow Jesus, he'll be filled all the time with the Holy Spirit. And that angel was right. Reverend Robert Tilton says since November, he has borne the cross of controversy and worn a crown of lies placed on his head by what he calls tabloid journalism. Tilton says the allegations have hurt him, and this Sunday is the last broadcast from Word of Faith. But in a program to air tonight on Tilton's religious channel, there is no mention of Sunday services being dropped from national television. In a program called Prime Time Lies, Tilton attacks those he says have attacked him, Ole Anthony, a network television program, and what is referred to as tabloid journalism, the most scathing attack against Ole Anthony, suggesting Anthony's Trinity Foundation is a cult. It hit the airwaves today. Reverend Robert Tilton's attack on the media and his nemesis, Ole Anthony. 
Only Anthony has gotten a lot of mileage out of his little stint. As During the one-hour-long show, Tilton responds to allegations made by the primetime live program that aired last November. Only Anthony assisted ABC News with the program and says he stands by it. He thinks all the publicity from it and all the time Tilton spent in court is wearing Tilton down. I think he's lost it. Really? I think he's about to... You know, he's going to have another small stroke in his brain if he keeps this up. Anthony says he hasn't watched Primetime Lies yet, but in response to why Tilton won't be broadcasting his Sunday morning worship services, he says... I think what they did is his managers are afraid of him as a loose cannon, that he can't be trusted to be live, unedited any longer on the air. And J.C. Joyce and Marty Tilton said no more. A spokesman for the church and spiritual leader Robert Tilton says it's no smokescreen, no defensive device. The one thing that we have simply been asking for is a fair, unbiased, ethical, truthful report. And obviously we didn't get that back in November. It's the same thing that Jim and Tammy Baker, Baker did just before their fall. They, stood, they started accusing, and then they'll circle the wagons, and then pretty soon they'll fall. Tilton's battles with Attorney General Dan Morales are also documented, and Channel 5's Spectrum program takes a direct hit. Is he a spiritual fraud? Robert Tilton, is he a spiritual fraud? Robert Tilton is, is, is uh, I think, blasphemous. If you need a miracle, jump and shout hallelujah! Churches use the Bible to teach spiritual lessons. Tilton's church believes the media has been misled and confused, and hopes to teach the media something through its expose. I'm Julia Jackson. It's a billboard that's bold. The question is, is it beautiful? We'll have the story coming up. More controversy tonight for the Reverend Robert Tilton. A silo that bears his message is the center of a controversy in Carrollton. Some people say it's time to bring it down, while others feel that word of faith is something everyone should see. They're a sign of our times. But some Carrollton residents say more than a decade is long enough for this message, and they're ready for a change. Looks a little dirty at this point. It's been, been there for a while. For some, it's not just how it looks, but what it says. For me, the message is overwhelming because I think, you know, religion is a personal thing. Others object not to the message, but to the messenger. You guys are a big joke anyway. Some of these guys object to what they say is a not-so-subtle attempt to raise money. Well, that's not Jesus' number up there, that's Tilton's number. I personally would prefer the city logo be displayed on the side. The Carrollton City Council has met informally with the owner of the sign space. They plan to meet again in a few weeks. After a year-long battle, evangelist Robert Tilton takes on Diane Sawyer and ABC's Primetime Live. Good evening, Tulsa and all of Eastern Oklahoma. I'm Judd Hambrick. And I'm Carol Lambert. Tilton is suing ABC, accusing the network of libel. Now, Tilton's attorneys filed a lawsuit in federal court right here in Tulsa. Tilton alleges ABC's expose of his ministry last November was nothing but rumors, gossip, half-truths, and lies under the guise of an investigation. ABC has no comment on the lawsuit. Tilton's Tulsa attorney, J.C. Joyce, declined to be interviewed for our report. Evangelist Robert Tilton says some of his holy bread could have come off of Tulsa grocery store shelves. The embattled evangelist also says his personal sounding letters have been, in his words, personalized by computer. Tilton's revealing comments came in a formal question and answer session with the attorneys who are suing him. Scott Gordon obtained the videotape. Robert Tilton stares straight into the camera as an opposing attorney fires away. Where does the so-called anointing oil he sends to followers really come from? Could it be cooking oil? I would say that it makes no difference to me if it's old crankcase oil. It's oil. Tilton's answers are in response to questions by Tulsa attorney Gary Richardson. He's suing the evangelist on behalf of several former followers. Richardson asks if Tilton's so-called holy bread really comes off the shelves of Tulsa grocery stores. I have no knowledge to where the bread comes from except I bless it. Tilton also is asked about his personal sounding letters he sends to followers. He admits they're, in his words, personalized by computer. He also admits he sometimes prays over computer lists and not always the actual letters people write to him. You don't tell the public when you communicate to them on television and in your correspondence that you're praying over computer lists, do you, Mr. Tilton? No. He says God speaks to him about people generically and not by name. 
This despite his letters to followers in the past telling them that God has spoken to him about them. Tilton admits using drugs many years ago before he says he found religion. What type of drugs did you use? Tilton pauses but finally answers. Uh, marijuana. What else? A little LSD. And uh, some different uh, barbiturates. Also on the tape, Tilton admits ripping off thousands of dollars from a fruit stand where he worked as a high school student. Again, that's before he says he found religion. The evangelist is serious in most of the tape, but at one point in the questioning, he got the giggles. <laughs> at a more serious moment, Tilton admitted some of the letters people have written to him have been thrown away in Tulsa, just as his critics have charged. But later, after a break, Tilton changed his story and said he had it wrong. Scott Gordon, Oklahoma's News 8. I got to thinking about people looking at me, watching me. Well, a lot of people are watching me right now. You know, just seeing what, how I'm going to stand up to all this. Our family, our kids, how we stand up to all this. You know, Marty, there's a lot. And we are beginning to hear more and more people are saying, Bob, y'all are so encouraging to us because we see the tremendous pressure and the, and the fiery trials and all the, hear all the lies of Satan and, and, and you continue to stand and you continue to smile and you continue to glow. You're, you're, you're an example of perseverance. And, you know, I got to thinking, there's a mountain I want, I want to get removed. And this morning, I'm dealing with the mountain of debt and lack and poverty. We uh, had to balance our budget, and we were in a situation where we uh, had to lay a few people off. And, um, and we laid uh, some television people off. And I'm hearing now that many of these television people are getting contract jobs, more jobs than they can handle, because the people that are using them in their contract jobs knew they worked for Word of Faith, and we are noted for the best graphics and the best television-looking programs there is. Hallelujah. <laughs> Want some money up there? Catch it! Don, you need to do this, because you're the one who get written, gets written up in the paper on this. Oh, let's get something bigger than that. Pastor Tilton is, is conserving. Our, our producer on Sunday morning, Rick Appleby, is, is teaching students how to run cameras, how to conserve, how to save money. We are actually doing everything we know to do here to cut corners but yet bring you the best. I was reading a book on the importance of saving. And uh, if this church hadn't had a savings account, uh, we would have uh, sank. Without getting into a long dissertation on that that I don't like to regurgitate, but if we hadn't had a savings, we wouldn't have been able to weather the storm that uh, we weathered. If we hadn't had, if this church hadn't been debt free, we wouldn't have been able to handle uh, the cash flow. And uh, so, this particular television station in Tulsa, I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is, it's Channel 8 in Tulsa of all things, it's an ABC, just like Channel 8 here in Dallas is ABC. And this station in Tulsa for months has just uh, really, uh, just really didn't, try to present the evidence and the truth unbiased. I believe in the freedom of the press. I just want it unbiased. Okay? But this particular station had a, had a reporter that uh, had a, a camera in his hand and he just used it like a gun. But uh, we called the hand of the station and they have now decided to apologize for the things that they said about me on television and the way that they edited it up. And so in the next few days, they will be on the 5 o'clock news, 6 o'clock news, and 10 o'clock news apologizing to Robert Tilton for any mis...
impressions we may have created in airing those reports. Big deal, people, big deal. The worm is turning. The cookie is crumbling. The mountain is being removed. Rock by rock, pebble by pebble, boulder by boulder, dirt by dirt. Up in Tulsa, Oklahoma, those three news anchors had to get up and look at that camera and admit that they did a bunch of garble on television making me look like a loony bird and had to apologize and had to say the word apologize. Last November, Oklahoma's News 8 ran stories about a videotaped deposition given by evangelist Robert Tilton. During one of those reports, we showed video of evangelist Tilton laughing. At the same time, we talked about Tilton's admitted use of drugs during a time in his life before he was saved. Showing that video may have created the false impression that Tilton was laughing while talking about taking drugs, when in fact during questioning about his past drug use, the evangelist was straight-faced and very serious. We apologize to Robert Tilton for any misimpression we may have created in airing those reports. It's happening everywhere. The AP wire service picked up some of the good news that had happened in Dallas this week and it went all over America. More good news for Tilton. You just don't want to live. You want to live happily, healthy. Might as well throw the rest of it in. Prosperous. <laughs> I know my critics was waiting for me to say that. I know they're out there. It's okay. We're triumphing over all of our critics, and we're going to have their head in a basket before it's all over with. I believe that. They are bred for us. I like that part, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did Tilton preach on Sunday morning? I can just hear the news in the radio station. Mm, he was licking his chops and lips and saying the defense has departed and they are bred for us. I wonder who he was talking about. Mm. <laughs> David Glory. went up at once when it was time to do his thing. He was ready. He didn't sit around and say, well, let's talk about it a little bit more. <laughs> when it was time to fight, he threw the first blow. The early bird gets the worm. <laughs> David was agile. He wasn't sluggish. He was agile. You see those boxers on their feet, they're light on their feet. They're just keeping it, keeping everything moving. <laughs> Pow to the moon. It looks like the fight between TV evangelist Robert Tilton and the Texas Attorney General is back on. A federal judge has allowed Dan Morales to go through state courts to try and subpoena certain documents from Tilton. Documents the Attorney General believes show Tilton violated consumer laws by mishandling money from his contributors. Reaction to that decision out of Austin is positive but guarded. Morales says there is still a lot of legal ground to be covered before any convictions, but he does plan to move forward with the Tilton case. My Robert Tilton's attorney, J.C. Joyce of Tulsa, says he isn't worried about the recent decision. All along, he's claimed his client has done nothing wrong. We'll go through state court, we'll go back to the federal court, we'll go to the United States Supreme Court, but we will not subject ourselves to an attorney general that gets up in front of the public and says what my client preaches is garbage. We're not after a Reverend Tilton. We simply want to make sure that nobody uh, gets away uh, with thinking of himself as being above the law. Uh, that's just not the way it is in Texas, uh, at least not so long as, as uh, I am the Attorney General. Everyone has to obey the law in our state. Uh, the next step for Morales is to get the state courts to let him subpoena Tilton's records, but Tilton's lawyer, J.C. Joyce, says that is unconstitutional. And in his words, we will not give them any documents, period. They are not entitled to anything. We've won that ruling before, and we will win it again and again and again. Another legal setback for televangelist Robert Tilton. Today, a judge denied Tilton's request that a lawsuit be dismissed as frivolous. William Harrison accuses the minister of fraud and intentionally causing emotional distress. Harrison says Tilton's ministry continued to send letters asking for money and offering to cure his wife's cancer long after she was dead. 
Earlier this week, an appeals court ruled that Texas Attorney General Dan Morales could resume his investigation of Tilton. How many of you have seen that movie, The Rocketeer? Well, it's, it's, it's just kind of a strange movie. This guy puts some tanks on his back and, and he flies around. He's got rockets on his back. And it looks like this guy's plunging to his death. And the, the, the MC, the, the master of ceremonies, he's trying to settle the crowd. And he comes up and he says, don't worry, folks. It's all a part of the show. <laughs> now listen, the people didn't know the guy had rockets on. Sometimes they think Tilton's falling out of an airplane and he's plunging to his death. <laughs> folks, don't worry. It's all a part of the show. They don't know I got rockets on. Hallelujah. This week, there was an article published in the, the Dallas Morning News talking about one of our cases being dismissed or uh, 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 stopped. And the article was absolutely the most ridiculous article, slanted, biased, prejudiced, opinionated, vicious article that I'd ever read, did not say anything about the fact or the truth and the press release this particular gentleman uh, had, uh, had released. Why the press cannot print this, I have no idea. It tells me that they've got a big problem. And they're about to have a bigger problem. And I hope there's someone here today that can write it down. I'm sure they're here. And there's some of these people's here. The other press is here. Dig a ditch, you fall in it yourself. You dig a pit, you fall in it yourself. I met personally with Reverend Robert Tilton on April the 15th, 1993. During that meeting, Reverend Tilton presented certain documents to me and assured me that he and Word of Faith World Outreach Center Church honor every prayer request. Reverend Tilton personally assured me that he and the church do not throw away any prayer requests or prayer items until they have been properly prayed over. He says, I have no personal knowledge to the contrary. I have no knowledge that Reverend Tilton or anyone associated with him ever threw any prayer request away. The lawsuit I previously filed against Reverend Tilton has, in this ministry and the church has been dismissed. This matter has been resolved to my satisfaction. I fully authorize Reverend Tilton to use this statement in any way he chooses. And he signed his name at the end and notarized. That's the truth. I said, that's the truth. I just don't understand why the press just can't just tell it like it is. Strong doubts about Robert Tilton's version of the settlement of his lawsuit. Night beats that. Reverend Robert Tilton is making headlines again tonight, but this time he's paying for the coverage. A full-page ad in today's Dallas Morning News. It's a copy of an affidavit from a man in East Texas who's dropped his $50 million lawsuit against the Reverend and his Word of Faith Church. So Pastor Tilton felt that it was just simply time to uh, let the public know that we are in fact having victories, that uh, Mr. Harrison did drop his lawsuit, and uh, that we are a, a decent, uh, Christian Church. News for Texas asked Mr. Moroso if the agreement to dismiss the lawsuit was fueled by a financial settlement. His response was absolutely not. But a representative for Mr. Harrison says that response is an absolute misstatement. Robert Tilton's ratings have plummeted, and that means harder financial times for the embattled televangelist. A new ratings report shows Tilton has lost 84% of his audience since a national news program accused him of fraud. J.C. Joyce, Tilton's Tulsa attorney, says those numbers add up to lost jobs. Joyce says 600 of Tilton's 850 employees have been laid off. Meditate. Meditate means to ponder, to think on, to imagine, to mutter, even to moose. Muse. Muse, not moose. You moose your hair, you <laughs> muse your mind. I don't know about you, but I moosed my hair today. <laughs> and I'm musing, musing, something like that, my mind. Don't forget the roller skating tonight at 6.30. I mean, we're gonna have church at a roller rink. Church on wheels. Holy rollers. 
As uh, many of you have kind of been keeping up with what's going on, um, last, let's see, we filed a lawsuit against ABC Primetime, Diane Sawyer, and Robbie Garden, several of the producers, and we sent a documentary, Primetime Lies, to every one of their major board of directors several months ago. And uh, before they played the second Primetime Live, a repeat, uh, they, we sent them documents and evidence and proof that uh, what they were saying was lies and they didn't correct any of it. And so they began to run commercials again the last few weeks showing my face saying the best of the best is coming this summer. And so we filed another suit against them, uh, preliminary temporary restraining order stopping them from playing that until we can go to court and show all of our evidence. They picked on the wrong preacher, they pick, picked on the wrong church, they picked on the wrong attorney, and they picked on the wrong God. Hello. The battle between the Texas Attorney General and television evangelist Robert Tilton is headed for the highest court in the land. In an effort to block the AG's investigation, Tilton is going to the U.S. Supreme Court. In another legal maneuver, the Dallas TV preacher says that he wants to stop ABC from rerunning the expose on him on Primetime Live. That's pitiful when we in the United States of America have to get up and continually straighten out the lies of the press. Pitiful! Robert Tilton, whose voice once thundered out across America, now it's little more than a whisper. I want to say something else. I, I want to say... Still, I'm the a, Dallas TV preacher continues to rail black, against those he calls his enemies right and to do battle country. in the courts. He was one of the top 20 of the TV evangelists. Now he's fell off the charts in terms of any impact. In Tulsa, Tilton is asking a federal judge to stop ABC from re-airing what he brands that pack of lies they told about me. ABC says it has no plans to show the segment again, but it won't be put off by threats. Tilton is promising a full-scale attack on the network at a court hearing on Wednesday. The man's chief critic predicts soon the colorful TV preacher won't be on the air at all. He's going to be in the same position that Jimmy Swaggart or Jim and Tammy Baker were. They're going to just slowly sink into shame and oblivion. Amen. TV evangelist Robert Tilton is back in court. He's suing ABC and telling reporters that he feels like he's been, quote, raped and castrated by news coverage of his ministry. ABC Primetime and Diane Sawyer framed our church and me, and we've got more than enough evidence to do it, and we wouldn't be here suing them if we didn't think we were going to win. And that's what we're up to. It's bigger than the GMC gas tank. Tilton is asking a federal judge for an injunction to prevent ABC from rebroadcasting its expose on his Word of Faith Ministries. During a break in testimony, Tilton told reporters the November 1991 airing just about destroyed me. It's like being raped. Then they showed the rebroadcast, and it was like being castrated. Well, as of his, the last Arbitron ratings, he had lost 84.4% of his audience. By his own admission, he's lost in excess of two-thirds of their income. Ole Anthony, whose anti-Tilton crusade spawned much of the negative publicity, says Tilton's TV-based empire is crumbling. But, Anthony says, he's not satisfied yet. He's still on the air. He's still committing fraud daily in the name of God. And uh, we, we, we want that to stop. A Dallas judge today ruled that Tilton must answer detailed questions about his ministry's finances, questions he's tried to avoid for almost a year. Lawyers battling Tilton say the ruling will allow them now to map the path that a dollar takes once it enters Tilton's hands. Now I'm getting ready to go to court. Robert Tilton and one set of attorneys is fighting ABC News in a Tulsa courtroom. In Dallas, two other Tilton attorneys lost a round, and the fight started by this letter. Then he goes and says some of these letters, Dear Tommy, God spoke to me last night and told me to write to you. Tommy Smith received several letters from Tilton's ministry after he asked for help with his illness. Mailings talked of his miracle day. Others asked for money. Only one problem. Of course, Tommy Smith had been dead two months prior to this day. Smith's distressed widow hired attorney Tony Wright, who sued Tilton. Last August, Wright and five other attorneys took Tilton's deposition. Wright says Tilton refused to answer 170 questions, most about money. The impasse then went before State District Judge Eric Moyer, and Moyer ruled that Tilton must answer most of the questions. 
The judge also ruled that Tilton must turn over what his attorneys indicate are between one and three million pages of documents detailing the ministry's finances. Analysts say this could be Tilton's Pandora's box. On the witness stand, evangelist Robert Tilton says ABC television has all but ruined his church. He appeared in federal court in Tulsa again today, trying to prevent a repeat of a 1991 primetime live expose. And Scott Gordon is just back after covering day two of that hearing. Scott? That's right, Carol. Tilton faced a few hours of cross-examination by ABC today after answering some questions from his own attorney. He admitted he doesn't always touch all the prayer requests that people send him, as his critics say he has claimed on his TV broadcast. He says he does touch them all spiritually, but not physically. And he said, quoting here, my hands have the power of God in them. What the evangelist does with prayer requests is key to the case. ABC reported it found some of the letters in the trash in Tulsa, the letters minus the money. Tilton claims ABC staged the whole thing. ABC's lead attorney says the network was right. I think he's angry. Uh, no one likes to have uh, tough things said about them. These were tough things, but they were true. On the witness stand, Tilton says ABC ruined his credibility with the public. He testified, quoting here, people laugh, they jeer, they give me the finger, they think I'm a crook and a thief. Now, also today, Tilton was asked by ABC's lawyer about his uh, prayer closet, what he calls the prayer closet in his home, where he says he has prayed over followers' letters. On the stand, he said his prayer closet is also the closet where he keeps his clothes and shoes, and he says it got messy, in his words, messy, with all the prayer requests on the floor. And Tilton's former housekeeper interviewed by ABC said, uh, told a different story. She says Tilton kept prayer requests in the garage and once told her to throw them away. Uh, more about all this on Monday. The judge hearing this case uh, has another matter tomorrow so this will continue on Monday. Hello? Hello? Hello out there in satellite land. Hello out there all you uh, reporters tracking and listening to me. Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? What spirit do you have? Get your Bible. See if what I'm saying is in there. Trying to figure me out in the natural, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for their foolishness unto him. How can I pray for thousands of people at one time? By the Holy Ghost! How can I touch prayer requests that are underneath the prayer requests that I'm laying my hands on? By faith! How can I know what these people need that write me prayer requests? How do I know what, how to pray for them? By speaking in tongues. The question of whether Robert Tilton has actually prayed over followers' letters surfaced again today. Tilton is on the stand again in his lawsuit against ABC over a 1991 primetime live expose. Scott Gordon's been covering the hearing into whether ABC should be involved in rerunning the story. What happened today, Scott? Well, Charles Tilton and ABC's attorney are really going at it. One of the key questions continues to be what happens to these prayer requests that people send in. Under cross-examination by ABC's lead attorney, Tilton admitted more than 200,000 handwritten prayer requests were thrown in the trash in Tulsa with him never seeing them. That was in one mass mail run alone. Tilton says he did pray over people's actual letters sometimes, but other times prayed over computer summaries. Meanwhile, the minister and the network attorney are engaging in a war of words on their way into and out of the courthouse. And we'll prove once again this week that we were framed, that it was deception, that it was libelous, that it was slander, that it was intentional malicious harm to hurt our church and to hurt my reputation. And we felt really good about what happened last week. And this week, I think, is going to be the best is yet to come. If Reverend Tilton thinks last week was a great victory, uh, I think he has an odd view of what, uh, what's a victory and what's defeat. We think we proved last week that uh, I prayed over 99.9% .9 of all the prayer requests. The only percentage that were not prayed over were the ones that were stolen out of our system and placed in the dumpster behind the bank. Well, that's just not so. I mean, the, the evidence that came in last week showed that uh, over 200,000 prayer requests uh, which were sent to Dallas and then sent uh, here to Tulsa uh, were uh, thrown in the trash here uh, on purpose. That the American public only knew how much the press influences with negative half-truths, false light, 
false evidence, they would be appalled. I think we're doing fine, and uh, I'm hopeful and confident that at the end of the day, the ABC will... management the firm Tilton uses to categorize and computerize viewer mail. IBM President Mike Connors testified 200,000 prayer requests from an autumn 1991 mailing were trashed and shredded in Tulsa, requests that Reverend Tilton never saw. He never saw them. He never touched them. He never prayed over them. Uh, and when you talk about 200,000 prayer requests on one sort of mailing alone, by Reverend Tilton. You're talking about an extraordinary amount. Abrams says ABC's expose has been proven true by such testimony uh, uh, and by evidence that Tilton actually prays over computer printouts, not handwritten notes, and responds to viewers' prayers with an alphabet soup of pre-printed form letters. AIDS victims receive the same letter as prayer partners wanting a new house. At most, they were the briefest sort of summaries. Health, money. These people these people let their hearts out to Reverend Tilton. On the stand last week, Tilton said God knows the specifics. Our response is that the people who wrote in expected and had reason to expect Reverend Tilton to read their prayer requests and to pray over them, and that that didn't happen. Asked if he's confident the judge will prohibit ABC from rerunning its report, Tilton didn't sound overly optimistic. Win, lose, or draw, we feel good that we're once and for all getting our evidence out as completely as possible at this time. The case is giving us an unusual inside look at the big business of television evangelism. Witnesses use words like reply devices and batch records. Mass mailings are measured by the thousands of pounds. And, of course, in a general way, it's also putting on trial the business of investigative journalism, the techniques of using hidden cameras and deception to get information. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton was excused from his last day in Tulsa Federal Court today because of a cream pie in his face. Tilton is trying to stop ABC television from rebroadcasting an expose on his ministry. His lawyer says some of that pie, thrown by a man outside of the courthouse last night, stuck in Tilton's ear. And the preacher had to go home for medical attention. Marty Tilton walked to court without her husband Wednesday morning. As he was leaving court Tuesday evening, someone threw a piece of pie at Robert Tilton. He was hit in the side of the head. Mrs. Tilton says her husband was shocked. Uh, obviously very humiliated. We're just glad it wasn't a gun. Is he okay or was he right? I believe he's fine. His, he couldn't hear for a while. The courthouse sidewalk and door still bear traces of the pie. Tilton's lawyer says the preacher still has pie in his ear and got him excused for the rest of the hearing. Whatever it was that they threw caught him in the side of the head and it drove the substance up in his ear and uh, he couldn't get it out so he's had to go to the doctor. Joyce says the pie incident is typical of what's happened to Tilton since the primetime live segment critical of his ministry first aired and one of the reasons Tilton needs an injunction to keep ABC from running the segment again. I'm not surprised he'd say that but uh, it really it has nothing to do with anything other than the willingness of some people to break the law. One of the issues of this hearing is whether Tilton's organization knowingly tossed prayer requests in the trash in Tulsa without reading them as ABC claimed in its expose. In the courtroom Paul Nunn testified tons of trash prayer requests would come into his North Tulsa recycling plant along with trinkets like miracle cloths, sand and holy water. Federal Judge Thomas Brett could take weeks before deciding whether to issue an injunction against ABC. Scott Thompson, Channel 6 News.
at all these rock throwers. There's just a lot of rock throwers out there. A lot of pie throwers out there. Lemon meringue pie throwers. <laughs> Second, by the way, we had a great week in uh, Tulsa. Many of the press that was there said it was obvious to them that it was a major frame job. Did they write it in the papers? The pie made it on the news. The pie made it all over the world. Said I had to go to the doctor. Thought something terrible had happened to me. Only thing that happened to me was it embarrassed me. TV evangelist Robert Tilton could be headed to jail for defying a judge's order. A Dallas lawyer says Tilton should be held in contempt of court for missing a deadline to turn over church financial records. The case involves a Dallas widow who says Tilton sent promises of healing and miracles to her husband long after the man was dead. I remember him putting his hand against the TV screen as Mr. Tilton prayed for someone with a liver problem. Norma Smith says as her husband, Tommy Lee, lay dying, he turned in his final desperation to TV well, minister Bob Tilton. Smith sent what little money he had to the preacher, and soon after, he died. But much later, his widow says, Tilton was still sending her husband mail, offering miracles for money. As others did, Norma Smith sued Tilton. Citing freedom of religion under the Constitution, Tilton refused to answer some questions or to turn over church financial records. Dallas District Judge Eric Moyer ordered the preacher to produce the documents by 4 p.m. Wednesday. The deadline passed. No papers were produced. Smith's lawyer says Tilton is stonewalling. I will ask the judge for either sanctions, such as striking their defenses, granting us a declaratory judgment. Which means you win. We win, they lose are ordering them to produce the documents here at this office and are holding Mr. Tilton in contempt. If the judge finds him in contempt, could he go to jail? Certainly. Tilton's Dallas lawyer, Rhonda Byrd, did offer to let the lawyer see some records in her office. When they went over to meet with her, Byrd told him the Texas Supreme Court had just issued a stay, barring Judge Moyer's order. Wright said he'd like to see it on paper. Byrd wouldn't speak with us. Tilton could not be reached. Wright says if they did get a stay, it wasn't until almost two hours after the deadline, so Tilton should still be held in contempt. It appears the Smith trial now will be delayed by all this. Both sides, meanwhile, start meeting with a mediator on Thursday, that could bring a settlement. I want to introduce to you a man that God has called, that God has anointed. He has operated under the gift of faith. He is an apostle of faith, prophet of prosperity, and founder of Word of Faith, Robert Tilton. Some of these uh, atheist heathens that are trying to get on my case, they said, well, if you're a prophet, how come you don't know everything? Well, according to 1 Corinthians 13, 9, we know in part and prophesy in part. So at least prophesy what you know. Hey, you know what's funny? ABC with their hidden camera up in Tulsa accidentally left their camera on in the back seat of their car and we got the conversation of what they were saying in the back seat of the car and they got a problem oh it's looking good i see the victory i see the hundredfold return 
Yes. I see it. I see victory. And every lawsuit, I see victory over ABC. I see ABC paying out a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. See what's happening with this music? You reporters out there, don't you edit up this stuff. I'll come after you. I got a lot of attorneys, and we, this church got a lot of money. So don't mess with us. Well, the leader of the Word of Faith Church, the Reverend uh, Robert Tilton, has called a news conference for this hour. And we understand that he is responding to a contempt motion filed against him. And Texas News 5's John Garcia joins us live now with the latest on this ongoing story from the Church and Farmers Branch. John? Yeah, indeed, Brad. We are waiting for uh, Robert Tilton to come on down and uh, speak with us uh, shortly. He's uh, got a news conference scheduled. A very uh, unusual situation, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tilton, as you probably know, usually shies away from the media. We've not seen a whole lot of him lately, but he has called this news conference specifically to uh, respond to uh, charges of contempt of court follow, uh, filed by one of his former followers. He is uh, approaching the microphone right now, and we're going to listen to what he has to say. We have voluntarily given all records and financial documents to the IRS, the FBI, and postal authorities. All the records except the names, addresses of our church members have been supplied. The Attorney General Morales tried to bully and intimidate this church into handing over this protected information to his office. You may recall that a federal judge ruled that Ms. Morales' actions were unethical, had been done in bad faith, and were harassing and harmful to this church. The federal judge ruled that the Texas Attorney General had no right to order this information and enjoined him from further doing so. Now, a Dallas lower court has demanded that I turn over the same names, addresses, and medical records of the church members. We have complied with all request, document request, this court has asked for, except these names, addresses, and medical records. The U.S. Supreme Court has consistently held that a person's right to belong to an association, our church, is protected by the United States Constitution. According to this freedom of association provision, all church members in this country have a right to belong to the church of their choice without the fear of harassment from government agencies. Right now, I am responsible to protect my church members, and I'm doing so. Until such time that the U.S. Supreme Court reverses all prior decisions regarding the freedom of association, I will protect the right of my church members. Thank you very much, and God bless you. If you have any questions, you may ask my legal counsel, Ron DeBerg, at this time. TV evangelist Robert Tilton is vowing to defy a judge's order and risk being held in contempt to protect members of his church. As legal troubles close in on the embattled preacher, he's looking for help from the nation's highest court. Robert Tilton talking tough as he faces legal trouble coming at him from all sides. A judge now says he must reveal the inner workings of his television church. Tilton says no. That stand could get him held in contempt. Dallas District Judge Eric Moyer and the Texas Supreme Court order Tilton to produce many of the documents. Since he did not, the judge now says he must show why he should not be held in contempt and possibly punished. In his latest move, Tilton is now asking the U.S. Supreme Court to overrule the courts in Texas. He is getting to the end of his rope. I want the stuff. We're entitled to it. We will not quit. We will not back off. They are personal records. They contain medical records. They contain private correspondence with church members, uh, prior physicians. The lawyers want the names of people like these who claim miracles change their lives. Reverend Tilton says he will not give up the names. He is doing his dead-level best to hide behind the First Amendment and his 
he is running out of rope. Ole Anthony, who is president of the Dallas-based televangelist watchdog group Trinity Foundation, says tonight that Tilton is using the Freedom of Association Act as a smokescreen to avoid releasing the names of people that he has claimed to have healed. Dallas Judge Eric Moyer will hold a contempt of court hearing on July 23rd on Tilton's failure to produce those documents. Television evangelist Robert Tilton struck out today at the U.S. Supreme Court. The preacher is being sued by former follower Norma Smith of Dallas. She's demanding to see records of Tilton's church. Claiming he is protecting the privacy of his members, Tilton asked the high court to block that disclosure. But today, Justice Antonin Scalia turned down the request. Well, something new involving some of the lawsuits against televangelist Robert Tilton. Tim Ryan joins us live now from Tilton's headquarters with details. Tim? Um, we have just been uh, ejected. Tim, can you hear us? We are live here in the noon show with Tim. Tim, can you bring us the latest on what has been an evolving story with Reverend... We've been ejected from Reverend... Pastor Tilton's uh, headquarters. Apparently, uh, for some mysterious reason, he's declaring victory and someone's unplugging our uh, audio and video cable right now, uh, declaring victory in a lawsuit that... Lost our signal with Tim Ryan. We'll have the very latest for you in that story this afternoon at 5 and 6. A victory for Robert Tilton in round one of lawsuits filed against him. A district judge in Tulsa has dismissed three suits filed by former followers who claim the televangelist defrauded them. But Texas News 5's John Garcia tells us this is not the final word on the matter. He defrauded them, and I'm sure they're going to win in the end. Without question, justice will prevail. A Tulsa judge, however, doesn't see it that way, ruling today to dismiss three of the lawsuits. In a brief statement to reporters, Tilton claimed victory. These cases have totally been thrown out of court. <clears throat> In the court's decision, the court found that our motions for summary judgment were based upon our religious freedoms. It's just silly. Nobody believes him. Tilton's chief critic predicts the three Oklahoma women will appeal. Tilton's cases, these cases have nothing to do with religion or freedom of religion. They have everything to do with fraud. And so there is no question that this case is going to be overturned in the Tulsa Court of Appeals or in the Oklahoma Court of Appeals. I characterized them when they were initially filed as frivolous. Uh, I have done nothing to change my opinion, and the judges are vindicating my position every time they throw one of them out. Tilton refuses to answer questions about the cases from reporters. However, the attorney who represents the three clients in Oklahoma says he plans to appeal. And on top of that, there are still six additional cases filed in Dallas County. So it is still quite possible Tilton will have to answer in court. You can't be any more confident of what will happen on the field on, on this issue. And aside There's from his no appeal, way. Gary Richardson says two of the other cases are already set for jury trials later this year. Attorneys for the plaintiffs say the Tulsa district judge who ruled in favor of Tilton says he did so in order to clear his docket before retiring. Well, a legal setback for televangelist Robert Tilton. A federal judge in Tulsa says ABC may replay an episode of Primetime Live that criticizes the Tilton ministry. Attorneys for the televangelist want to stop that rebroadcast, claiming it's libelous. Tilton suing ABC over the segment. How many of you saw, well, you shouldn't be watching some of that news, but anyway, how many of you saw we had some great victories this week and some lawsuits? Three more lawsuits thrown out of court. Go ahead and get real happy. That, I, I, I think that's nine now that either been dismissed or thrown out of court. And the judge in Tulsa said that they were so frivolous that they never should have been in the court system and process to begin with. So frivolous. Ridiculous. And uh, so that, that made a lot of news. Of course, we had a press conference. Last week, we also had another great victory. The press didn't report it as a victory, but actually, it was a great victory. You know, we had that six days in court with a federal judge concerning uh, the, our lawsuit against ABC. And you don't sue somebody like that unless you think you got something, you know. But uh, the judge said that they could still show the program again, which we weren't too excited about. But the deal is we've already presented most of our evidence to this judge, and he sees the fallacy. And the press saw the fallacy of the frame job that ABC did on us. But there were four more things, there were four things ABC was trying to shut down, and they only shut down one of them. The press didn't report the other three that we did get. And uh, they first warned us to just shut, uh, shut down the lawsuit, which the judge says, nope, there is legitimate reason for this suit to be here, and it is going to trial. <laughs> now, 
Hallelujah. Number two, Diane Sawyer is going to be here. <laughs> Sitting in Tulsa, Oklahoma, along with some of her cohorts, to answer our questions of the statements that they said against me in this church and the gospel. So it may look like we lost something by stopping them from rebroadcasting it. I don't think they will, but if they do, who cares? But ask Diane Sawyer if she won. Because she's going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and she's going to answer those questions. Either that or they're going to write a big check. A big check. Everybody say a big check. So that was, a, to me, that was another token or sign of God's goodness. Also, you know that uh, they, they want our membership list. The, the judge, a judge here wants a membership list. Well, you don't have to give the membership list to any government organization. But we've got one judge that doesn't understand that. And so we went to see Barefoot Sanders. How many of you ever heard of the infamous Barefoot Sanders? I thought him and Billy the Kid were long gone, but he's still alive. <laughs> and so we got to see Barefoot Sanders this week. And the back of the courtroom was just filled with all these people. And I thought it was the press, but they didn't look like the press. It looked like a bunch of young attorneys. And what it was, it was the court clerks, which are our young attorneys. And they'd all come back in the back to see this happening that went on in this courtroom Friday with Tilson showing up to meet with this federal judge. And I said, well, what are they all doing here? He says, he says, normally it's not very exciting around here. But with you here, it's exciting. They all come to see what's going to happen. You know, the big issue is, is Tilton going to jail? The answer is not. Everybody say not. A federal judge today rejected Robert Tilton's latest attempt to avoid a Friday court date. The TV preacher wanted an injunction against Dallas uh, Judge Eric Moyer so Tilton could not be forced to surrender church records. But Tilton's request was denied, and the evangelist has been ordered to appear in Moyer's court on Friday morning. Good evening. Controversial evangelist Robert Tilton could claim victory today, but at least he did not end up in jail. Tilton avoids a contempt of court charge, but is under orders to turn over church documents he says are privileged. Tim Ryan reports. The flamboyant TV preacher said he would not turn over the documents, but faced with going to jail, he's willing to back down. And this is not the final sight here, you know. Hey, I'm gonna obey all the laws. So if it comes down to it, you've exhausted everything and they say you gotta turn this stuff over, you turn it over? Absolutely, absolutely. You won't like it? No, no, and my members won't like it because they're really up in arms. You would be too if you were a member of a church and you did, if you gave out, uh, if you were a pastor and they asked you for your church membership list. Judge Eric Moyer overruled Tilton's arguments. He ordered the preacher to turn over the papers and 2,000 hours of tapes within a week. Tilton's feet are to the fire. And if discovery is not by August 2nd, uh, it's going to be some fireworks. I'm going home. I didn't go to jail. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Y'all don't have a story. <laughs> were you willing to go to jail? Absolutely. I don't make statements unless I mean them. Tilton says he'll keep trying to withhold the records and is appealing to the Texas Supreme Court. And all of you that are watching by satellite, this just blesses me that you would take the time to turn on your dish, be a part of our satellite home church membership group. And thanks to all of you for continuing to support the satellite feed uh, financially and to continue to pray for us that we'll continue to be victorious over all of our enemies. And I think we've got nine lawsuits thrown out now and about three or four left to go, or nine people uh, who sued me are no longer suing me. Let's put it that away, either dismissed or uh, thrown out of court. I think there's three or four left, but uh, those are very insignificant. And we're just going to keep pursuing our enemies until we conquer ABC in prime time. And uh, all these attorneys that tried to clog up our legal system, judicial system, we're going to go after, continue to go after them on the conspiracy charges. So we're pursuing, overtaking, and without fail, we will recover all. Amen. God bless you. And you know, we had a little court thing yesterday, day before yesterday. I'm not sure what happened, except I'm not in jail today. That's all I know. And they didn't get the membership list. <laughs> Amazing. So Bob, they asked me, said, Bob, what happened? I said, I don't know, except I'm going home. <laughs> and they didn't get anything new, you know, so just got to turn one-inch tapes into half-inch tapes. That'd take about 10 years, but anyway. 
be a good job for somebody for 10 years. Anyway, I'd like to make a, I would like to make a statement this morning for the press and those that are watching up at ABC. We know you watch and monitor the Sunday services and so forth, looking for anything you can catch me on. So I have something to say. So if you want to get your pencil and piece of paper or turn your tape recorders on, I'd like to read you a statement that was prepared several thousand years ago. Psalms 1837 from the Living Bible. I chased my enemies and caught up with them. Hello. Well, that's my report for those of you that want to take that and edit that up. Go ahead. A Dallas judge has refused to dismiss a lawsuit against television evangelist Robert Tilton and his Word of Faith Church. Four ex-followers accused Tilton and the church of fraud and of causing emotional distress. State District Judge John Marshall dismissed claims against other parties named in the suit, including Tilton's wife, Marty, and one of the preacher's lawyers. The case against Tilton is now set for trial for September 13th. TV preacher Robert Tilton continues tonight to defy a judge's order to release information about his congregation. Last week, one of those church members testified in court that she backs the preacher's policy because she wants privacy. But as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports, the woman hasn't always been so reticent. In a court hearing last Friday, Tilton's lawyers brought as a witness a church member known only as Eve. She said she didn't want the public to know her last name or anything about her to safeguard her privacy. You solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony that you're about to give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, indeed. Eve testified that she had skin cancer and that after Reverend Tilton prayed with her, the cancer vanished. Even though she praised the miracle in a videotaped testimonial shown on the air, she said she still wanted her privacy protected. You want the people out in the TV audience to believe that you had a miracle. Is that true? Yes. But you don't want them to be able to question you personally for their own satisfaction to determine if there really was a miracle. Is that no. what you're telling me No. However, in late 1991, Eve and her husband went with Tilton on a church tour of Israel and while there, appeared on a live broadcast with him. I have here with me Dr. Mark and Eve Lover. And Eve, you had something wrong with you. What was wrong with you and when was this? After the television preacher identified them both on the program seen in North America and Europe, the woman told how Tilton performed a miracle that took away her skin cancer. And in the name of Jesus, we just prayed. I went back to the doctor the next week. He did the surgery. He opened me. He found nothing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sound the trumpet in Zion. Today, a deadline imposed by Judge Eric Moyer ran out. He ordered Tilton to turn over to those suing him tapes and papers that show the names of members and how they were healed. But the pastor says he will not do it. If we need to go to jail, we'll go to jail. Don't want to, but if we need to do that to stand up for our members' rights, freedom of uh, association, the First Amendment of the Constitution, we're going to continue to do that. The opposing lawyer now vows to force Tilton back to court and again ask Judge Moyer to find him in contempt and to punish him. Like I said, the rope's gotten shorter and it's real short rope and I think it's uh, the end is near. I am not turning over anything that has to do with our membership list. What did you turn over today? We're turning over everything that we're supposed to be turning over today and uh, some of your records are not clear and some of the statements you made on the news today were not accurate. And so now another contempt of court hearing set for August 12th. Praise God. Everybody say thank you Jesus that last month Word of Faith was in the black. Everybody say, praise the Lord. <laughs> and everything the devil has stolen, he has to restore sevenfold. And uh, we had about 18 months of red ink. Serious, 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 serious red ink. And to be in the black, even though it was in $26,000, I cried. It blessed my socks off. I mean, I got so excited. You have no idea. Used to, if uh, $26,000 was left over, we, we, uh, we'd complain. But I don't complain anymore. Hallelujah. The Lord has delivered me from complaining about that. Hallelujah. It's kind of like the, the parsonage the church did own in California. Uh, we bought the parsonage, I think, for one seven and sold it for two seven. So the church made a million dollars off of it. That's not nothing to sneeze at, is it? In recession, to make a million bucks off a of parsonage? Hallelujah. So that means that uh, God just blessed the church with an extra million dollars. And uh, it's just a principle of seed time and harvest. Didn't bless Marty and I. We could have we bought that 
facility, but we didn't. Uh, we let the church buy it, so the church made money off the investment. You don't ever hear that on prime time, but they don't want to say anything good, do they? Well, you know, we got a little showdown coming up this week at the courts. We're still refusing to give uh, uh, the list of people's names who we consider to be members of this church and ministry. They say they don't want all of them. Well, what's the difference between part of them and all of them? Our all of them is, is more. The partial list of people that they want is more than the largest churches in America. Supporters of television preacher Bob Tilton held a rally today in downtown Dallas. One follower ripped down a sign carried by someone she felt was disrespecting the evangelist, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. I'm so glad that Jesus sent me free, singing glory, hallelujah. They feel their religious leader is getting a bad rap in the news and in court, so they came down to the courthouse to say so. About 40 followers of Reverend Bob Tilton marched around carrying signs that said, Faith on Trial and Stop Invasion of Privacy. Tilton was supposed to be inside in court in a hearing as part of a lawsuit filed against him by a former follower. But Tilton accused Judge Eric Moyer of being prejudiced against him after the judge ordered the preacher to turn over names and information about his members. So now another judge must decide if Moyer is biased or not. Bob Tilton is much like Jesus. I didn't say he is Jesus. I said he's much like Jesus and that he's done nothing wrong. Even in the time when Jesus walked on the earth, they didn't like what he said and they killed him for it. The marchers say the action against Tilton is unconstitutional and could lead to a legal act against any American church. It got more interesting when several people showed up saying they're part of the Bob Tilton Fan Club, a Dallas satirical group that holds parties and shows tapes of Tilton preaching. This man calls himself Brother Randall. I sure would hate for him to be taken off the air. Uh, why would you hate to have him taken off? Well, you know, they, they canceled Green Acres, they, they canceled F Troop, you know. It's, 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 just, it's really one of the most entertaining things you can, you can see in success in life. How very, very entertaining. Just slapping the desk and screaming and speaking in tongues and casting out demons. A woman from the fan club held up a sign with a picture of Tilton on it, a sign the marchers didn't like. So they all gathered around her and began to speak in tongues. Then one Tilton follower grabbed the woman's sign and tore it up. What'd she say? Yeah, what did that lady say to you in your song? Huh? What did that lady say to your song? I don't know. I really don't know. She just grabbed hold of it and broke it. And I thought that was the funniest thing. <laughs> that doesn't bump to and turn you like on. He does me. A few minutes later, though, it was all patched up. The Tilton follower told the woman she was sorry she tore up her sign. And to show it, she gave her $5. In a few days, the Tilton action moves off the street and back into the courtroom. Thank you. And God bless you. And Bob. Well, I got an apology and five bucks for breaking my sign. God bless Bob Tilton Ministries. Robert Tilton supporters picket outside the George Allen Courts building. They don't believe Word of Faith members are getting a fair shake in the legal system. Neither does their leader church members that uh, are really uh, tired of being pushed around and treated as second-class citizens and are standing up for their rights. Tilton is not here at the rally and insists he had nothing to do with setting it up, but he will be back here at the courthouse August 25th when he tries to have Judge Eric Moyer removed from one of his legal battles. We just want a, a balanced justice system, and uh, we feel like that he is definitely uh, prejudiced against us. Tilton admits two years of legal battles and bad publicity have hurt his church. Membership is down, and giving has dropped from $64 million to $26 million a year. But Tilton says he's not giving up and says he'll go to jail before turning over his membership list. I believe it's right. I believe it's ethical. And until the highest court in America tells me that I have to turn it over, I'm not going to turn it over. And the supporters marching at the courts building today are solidly behind him. As for the judge, he has refused to comment on Tilton's claim that he's prejudiced or the televangelist's efforts to remove him from the case. TV preacher Robert Tilton filed today for divorce from his wife, Marty. It could get messy and lead to a battle over who gets what from the couple's multi-million dollar television church empire. And there's more, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. I had just changed. I just fell in love with everybody. 
Not anymore. TV preacher Bob Tilton says he's fallen out of love with his wife, Marty. He wants her out of his church, out of his life, and so he filed for divorce in Dallas. Married for 25 years, they joined in a profitable partnership. With his fire and brimstone performances on stage, on camera, Bob lured the people to their TV sets at home to watch him. Marty was the business brains of the television church, and it made them multimillionaires. In his filing, the minister said, the marriage has become insupportable because of discord or conflict of personalities that destroys the legitimate ends of the marriage relationship. There are indications that the two have not lived together for weeks, perhaps months. Marty Tilton has told people that five weeks ago, her husband fired her from her top job in the church. An attorney for an ex-follower suing Tilton feels the divorce may be a trick to hide millions of dollars. And he says he'll legally try to stop anything underhanded. Either try to get a restraining order from depleting assets, uh, file a, a suit as a third-party claimant in the divorce saying that we have a potential claim and that we want it addressed by the divorce court uh, so that the assets don't dis disappear. The Tiltons have two grown children and two boys still living at home, ages 8 and 10. The evangelist says he'll go on supporting the kids, that his wife can have primary possession, but he wants them part of the time. And he says he and Marty will agree to split up what they own. That includes the Word of Faith Parsonage, their home, an 11,000 square foot mansion in Las Colinas, their luxury condo and yacht in Florida, and other wealth perhaps $90 million or more. Where's this woman that stood up? One of Tilton's critics believes the Tilton breakup could devastate the church. It probably was inevitable, and it probably will cause the downfall of uh, the success in life in the Word of Faith Ministries. As recently as three weeks ago, Tilton joked about rumors that his wife was planning to leave him. This is the man that's rumored to run off with my wife and is scounded with $4 million. Dan, is that true? I'm sorry you found out about it. <laughs> It had to come out sooner or later. Boy, For like Tilton's followers, it. it is yet another unsettling development. Ole Anthony, a frequent critic, calls it a disaster for the Tiltons and their church. In the world of the word faith movement, uh, divorce is, is a no-no for, for their spiritual leaders. Uh, there will be a huge defection. I think it's a disaster, a, a divorce. I hate divorce almost above all things. Uh, and for his church, it's just a sad day. Um, we've never had anything to, bad to say against his church. It's always been the fraud that was being perpetrated in the television ministry that we had uh, the problems with. A Word of Faith spokesperson says they will have no comment on the staff members' private lives. Robert Tilton is calling upon his faith, he says, to pull him through troubled times. The local televangelist spoke yesterday as part of a two-hour message at the Word of Faith Family Church. He never mentioned his recently announced divorce proceedings, per se. Tilton told some 2,000 church members that God had ministered to him in a special way this week. His wife, Marty Tilton, attended yesterday's services. Televangelist Robert Tilton was back in court today. The Word of Faith minister says District Judge Eric Moyer is biased against him, and he wants him removed from the case. 9 o'clock news reporter Ron DeGuess has more on the hearing and the supporters who turned out for Tilton. Word of Faith members marched in front of the George Allen Courts building this morning in support of their pastor. They say this woman's voice was healed by the televangelist last Sunday, and it was just such claims of healing which are at the heart of a $50 million lawsuit brought by Norma Smith. Tilton supporters stand behind him. The only people who don't like Robert Tilton are people who are against the things he stands for, which is healing, which is speaking in tongues, which is laying hands on the sick. Today is the third rally by Word of Faith members to show support for their pastor, Robert Tilton. But they say they're also out here to defend their constitutional rights. Like Robert Tilton, they want to see Judge Eric Moyer off the case. They say Moyer's order for Tilton to release church records is a violation of the right to association. Moyer chose to testify today about telephone conversations with Word of Faith members about the case. The district judge told the court many people have tried to engage him in conversation about the case. The people who wish to express an opinion about this matter, and in each of those occasions I say I do not want to hear your opinion about whether one side or the other side should prevail. Hilton says he will continue to fight Judge Moyer's order. Uh, all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has not turned it down. The Supreme Court said it was not in the proper procedure or timing, and when it was in correct timing, they would hear. I think it's awful what they're trying to say about Judge Moyer. He's the honorable judge. 
He is trying to do his job and do his right. I'm simply stating my religious rights and freedoms under the Constitution and standing up for the members of our church and freedom of association and right of privacy. And I believe that he does not understand that. Judge Eric Moyer was on the witness stand instead of on the bench saying he's done nothing improper in his handling of this case. Tilton and his lawyers disagree. Think he's being unfair to you? Absolutely. And he is a fraud, and I'm with God's grace, I'm approving. Norma Smith says even after her husband died, Tilton's Word of Faith Church harassed her for more and more money. She calls it intentional infliction of emotional distress. Her lawyers call this move to remove the judge something else. This is a total, it's, it's a bad tactic by any law firm to do basic, baseless allegations against the judge. Mrs. Smith's attorneys think Tilton encouraged his congregation to call and write the judge. They mentioned a July 25th sermon in which they believe Tilton made a plea for help. They said they had a tape recording of Tilton claiming one particular judge was giving him a lot of trouble. Tilton denies the accusation. I was simply standing up for their rights by standing up for the freedom of association, not turning over the church membership list. If they wanted to do something about it, that was their business, and we were not recommending it or, or encouraging them to do it. Now, the judge did say that, uh, that uh, he overruled your rights of association, that, uh, that uh, we had to uh, turn over the membership list, and that uh, the, our constitutional right, your constitutional right, a freedom of association, uh, he, he said that he didn't, uh, in this particular situation, believe that you had that. So if you want your name to be given out uh, to people that are notorious for leaks and so forth, uh, fine. If you don't, then you need to start letting your voice be heard and your fingers do some writing and the postman do the walking. And start doing everything you can to, uh, to uh, get aggravated because you've got enough reason to get aggravated and you had other churches out there, you got enough reason to be aggravated too. Read my lips. One of the seminal cases, the pivotal, seminal, first case in the area of freedom of association was the National Association for the Advancement of Color, P Colored People, NAACP, versus the state of Alabama in the 60s. And the NAA won that they did not have to turn over the records of who belonged to the NAACP. And then there's one right after the next, after the next. So we've got this state judge. This state judge, a state judge, actually allowed that to be put in the, the request of what these attorneys wanted. Amazing, a state judge, a case so simple, and I might as well just say the rest of it, a black state judge. In court, the winner is Judge Eric Moyer. The loser is TV evangelist Bob Tilton. Tilton and his lawyers called the judge a liar and one-sided. And they battled to throw him out of a case in which an ex-follower is suing the preacher. But that argument did not work, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. The preacher's lawyers claim Moyer over and over showed he was on the side of Norma Smith and her lawyers. So the pastor and his attorneys fought to get Moyer thrown out of the case. They claim Judge Moyer winked at Smith's lawyer in court and made hand signals, leaving no doubt he was on his side. They also claim Moyer held intimate, whispered conversations with Smith attorney Tony Wright. The other side call all of this absurd and ridiculous. At times, you could feel the anger and bitterness in court between the two sides. You've run out of your bag of tricks, haven't you? You're down to a wink, aren't you? Objection, argumentative. Somebody's lying here, aren't they? Either you're lying or Judge Moyer's lying. That's correct. Who's lying? Judge Moyer. He basically feels that somehow he was undermined. He is a new judge. He's a baby judge. He, uh, the court can determine his own judicial temperament and decisions regarding how all this has come about, but he basically has the worst case of federal judge judgeitis that I have ever seen. When they get caught doing wrong, Oh, they're going to pull up every sneaky, dirty little trick that they can think of. And they're doing it, still doing it, accusing a fine judge of impropriety. After the tense two-day hearing, the visiting judge, H.G. Andrews, made his ruling. The judge says his first reaction was to remove Judge Moyer from the case. Maybe the judicial system was, a, was under attack, and therefore we should have another judge hear it, not because of anything that Judge Moyer had done wrong. After reflection on it, though, uh, I don't think that's a proper course of action. 
but I realized the seriousness of it in so, insofar as the deep-seated <coughs> problem uh, that we have uh, of conflict between separation of church and state and <coughs> the freedom of religion. Uh, so I have given this matter serious thought. I will <coughs> make a finding of fact that uh, Judge Moyer uh, has not been biased or prejudiced in this matter. I believe I have a fair chance and because the judge is an understanding judge and he's righteous and he's, I respect him. And I believe that um, it's going to work out for us. And so work out for me, a lot more Norm Smith, I feel like me. You think you're going to win? Yes. They called him a liar. And they were proven that they were wrong. Moyer is not a liar, he's a good man. It's, 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 you know, it's two years of horrendous uh, pressures and stress and trials and tribulations and persecution spawned mostly by some of you folks with the way that you've edited and cut tapes. This doesn't mean it's over. Uh, we're just beginning to begin to present our evidence and to go on with life and uh, believe God for the best. And the best is yet to come. Reverend Bob Tilton says he'll never give up, that he's fighting for freedom of religion. His opponents are claiming he's really just running a religious scam to rake in money. Who's right? Looking for the answer to that could tie up the courts for years. And the battle goes on. Now the lawyers opposing Tilton want him and his lawyers legally sanctioned or punished for misconduct, and the preacher then held in contempt. The next round comes in court on Monday. Televangelist Robert Tilton has until Friday to turn over records he has refused to give up so far. Tilton's attorneys appeared before Dallas District Court Judge Eric Moyer. They asked the judge to reconsider his motion, ordering them to disclose those church records. Judge Moyer CSEs does not negotiate court orders and gave Tilton's team until Friday to produce the records. If they fail to do so, Judge Moyer could find Tilton in contempt of court. Court is satisfied based on the record that document production has not been completed in violation of rules of discovery. The court will consider as appropriate contempt for the violation, the continued violation of this court's order at that time. I can't outguess them. They'll probably bring us a bunch of trash like they have before. But uh, I think the judges, <laughs> I thought, Two or three times back, the rope was getting short. He said that's the end of the rope, and it's his call. Tilton contends the court order is unconstitutional. The lawsuit goes to trial in November. And this little game here, this is like a movie set here they're putting on us. Televangelist Robert Tilton complies with a court order to produce church documents and does so in a big way. Good afternoon, everyone. The ongoing legal battle between Tilton and a former Word of Faith follower tops our news at midday. Well, the number of church records and documents delivered by Tilton to a Dallas lawyer this morning appeared to reach biblical proportions. Channel Ace Bill Brown joins us live from the Allen Court Building in downtown Dallas with the story. Bill? Quinn, we have some new information just in. Uh, Judge Eric Moyer has just uh, severely punished Robert Tilton and his attorneys. He sought Tilton with an $81,000 fine. Uh, the $81,000 will be paid uh, in attorney's fees to the lawyers for uh, plaintiff Norma Smith, the former church member of Tilton's who is now suing him. So he has to pay $81,000 to the other side within two weeks. So uh, a pretty serious uh, sanction by the judge there. After refusing for more than a year, Tilton this morning turned over a ton of documents, many tons, uh, a virtual caravan of trucks and vans to the law office of the plaintiff uh, attorneys of Norma Smith. Between five and eight million papers and thousands and thousands of hours of videotape from Tulsa and from Dallas. Now, Tilton's lawyers say uh, they are getting prayer requests from the TV viewers, letters, memos, plus a sealed list of uh, church members' names and phone numbers who have been involved in these alleged healings and testimonials, all of that to be kept secret from the public and the press. But Norma Smith's lawyers label the caravan of trucks a big stunt. Well, obviously, I think they got a needle in a haystack. They brought their own haystack for us. So we're going to go through it all and find what we need. You think this is everything you've asked for? They finally given it? Well, it should be. It's enough here. So you both... You trust that they've brought you everything today? I don't trust anything uh, Reverend Tilton's attorneys do. Uh, <laughs> why? Well, just from their past behavior, everything they've done so far, and this little game here, this is like a movie set here they're putting on us. Uh, we really want about, I would say, two boxes of files. 
That's what we want. We want the testimonials and the medical on the testimonials. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation for everyone that believes. What about the medical documents? What about them? Hey, we got all the guy says, once I was blind, now I see. What kind of documents do you need? All documents have been revealed, and everything that's supposed to be turned over, as far as I know, has been turned over. In the trial now set for the 4th of October, the opposing attorneys will try to prove that while Tilton has said that all the miracles are medically documented, that really that's not true. In fact, in a deposition once, Tilton was asked by a lawyer, is there anyone else that you have published their names that you claimed has received healing that's been documented, medically speaking, as a result of your having prayed for them? Tilton's answer, no. Now in more trouble for the TV preacher, the FCC today slapped Lake Dallas television station KLDT Channel 55 with a fine of $20,000. Calling it the Power Channel, a while back, Tilton broadcast on it around the clock. He later stopped. The government charges that the station owners never formally acknowledged Tilton had taken over their airwaves. Reverend Tilton said today he gave up the names and personal information on church members only after the members agreed to it. We do have little extra expenses this week that we didn't quite count on. $81,000. $81,000 worth, but that's nothing for a church like us, is it? That didn't sound like $81,000 off extra offering to me. <laughs> that sounded like about a thousand. <laughs> How many of you going to tithe this morning? How many of you going to give an extra offering this morning? How many of you want to <laughs> give the devil a real big black eye? I mean a black eye. The devil can't push us around, can he? One of the most powerful ways of releasing your faith is through your giving. Not giving what you don't have, the Word of God declares in our daily Bible reading today, but giving what you do have and what you can do. So we're going to worship the Lord through our giving. I want you to let the Lord speak to you about an extra amount this morning. And I'm not kidding. Read my lips. <laughs> An extra amount. Some of you, God, God, speak to some of them with an extra thousand bucks. In the name of Jesus. Who is that person? We need 81 of them. <laughs> Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton pays up tonight. Tilton's lawyers appeared in Dallas Judge Eric Moyer's courtroom today to pay the $81,000 fine for delaying production of documents requested by the court. The Tilton's attorneys, by the way, failed to get that case thrown out today. And a federal appeals court up in Denver today upheld dismissal of Tilton's lawsuit against the Dallas-based televangelist watchdog Ole Anthony, saying his Trinity Foundation did not conspire to destroy Tilton or his word of faith, church. Okay, get your checkbooks out. We're going to plant some seed. Press down, shaking together, running over. Get your, get your wallet, your checkbook, your purse, and hold them up high. We're going to bless them. If your offering's already ready, get it up. Okay, get your checks ready. And if you normally give 50, give 100. If you normally give 100, give 10,000. <laughs> I got your attention there, didn't I? What are you going to do with all that money, Bob? Spend it. That's the fact. Lie. This is Texas News 5 at noon. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton is pulling the plug on his TV ministry today. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. Topping our news, the embattled TV minister is taking his show off the air and that will reportedly mean massive layoffs in his ministry. A Dallas-based watchdog group is pleased with Tilton's decision to go off the air. Ole Anthony's Trinity Foundation has had its eye on Tilton's ministry for some time. Texas News 5's Marion Connor is at the foundation headquarters. She joins us now live with the very latest. Marion. The Trinity Foundation began its investigation of the ministry back in the in the late 80s, and it was Mr. Ole Anthony who personally rooted through Tilton's trash and found thousands of prayer requests that he says Tilton not only didn't even look at, much less pray over. I have Mr. Anthony with me this morning. Could you tell me, first of all, what is your reaction to Tilton going off the air? Well, I'm, I'm very sad for all of the people that have lost their jobs and they, they were without employment insurance, they won't get unemployment. But from the standpoint of all of the scandalous activities that he's been per perpetrating in the American public, I'm very, very happy. Uh, the scandal, the, the fraud, the mail fraud, can, and the, uh, the, the stuff that he was doing on the air can stop. 
What kind of effect do you think this is really going to have on other televangelists? Well, it will always, just like in the 87 when Jim and Tammy Baker's uh, scandal happened, televangelism watching went way down. I think it probably will go down now also. My hope is that the people will start going to their local churches instead of trying to have an electronic church. In television speak, we call it fade to black, and that is exactly what troubled Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton is doing this evening. His TV preachings of prosperity through making a vow of money have finally fallen on deaf ears, and he is pulling the plug on his own television ministry. It was inevitable that, that, that he would have to go off the air. He was bleeding money. Ole Anthony is a major reason Robert Tilton has been bleeding money. He helped Primetime Live, the state and the federal government investigate Tilton's ministry. Strangely enough, it was Anthony's work with the homeless that got him interested in Tilton. Their last act before becoming homeless was to give everything to Robert Tilton or one of these televangelists. And then when they lost everything, they went to him for help and they were told to go to a social service agency. And that kind of callousness just was beyond my comprehension. Anthony says he's glad Tilton is off the air. Now he hopes Tilton will retire as pastor. I'm truly concerned about the members of his church. Uh, they have been used as, as props on a stage. I pray now that that can cease and they can establish church government and church elders and become a real church. Being a member of an electronic church is like being married to a rubber dolly. There's no satisfaction. So what I hope all these people do is go to their local churches. If they want to give money to meet needs, open their eyes, look around them, look at the homeless people, look at their neighbors that are in dire need. Reverend Bob Tilton has warned for months that Satan, the government, and the press have all conspired to take him off the air. But in the end, it was the viewers. By the millions, they stopped watching the charismatic evangelist. Even worse for him, they stopped sending money for his promised miracles and healing. Stung by scandal, lawsuits nipping at his heels, Bob Tilton's TV image was slipping badly. Now he'll fade to black and leave television. His lawyer, said to get almost $2 million a year from the church, blames the news media. As of today, it's notifying all of its television stations nationwide and will shut down its television department and the last day to broadcast will be the 29th day of October. There won't be any Sunday morning services, live broadcast. There won't be any success in live broadcast. In addition, yesterday, uh, the church had a massive layoff of employees. Uh, when the layoff is completed as of January 1, there'll be approximately 32 employees left at the church. When the media started after Robert Tilton, there was over 800 employees. And his money machine just dried up. The public was no longer buying his uh, magic trick. He was the last giant in that genre. I mean, of this, these gimmicky letters and the, the, the sending out the sand and the holy water and all that. He's the last giant. If anybody brought Bob Tilton down, it was this man, Ole Anthony of Dallas. He keeps a close eye on the television preachers, and he fed ABC what it needed for its scathing portrait of Tilton. He was the fastest growing ministry in the nation. They targeted him for Sweeps Week, took him a year to put it together, and uh, made that show, which was in the dumpster, number one. It's gratifying because now he has no longer the opportunity to defraud the American public and no longer the opportunity to uh, be a shark in the water for the weakest, most vulnerable m members of our society. It's a matter of the media. When people get up and say Robert Tilton's guilty of fraud, and the media not saying, what fraud? And you've never asked the question, because there is no fraud. The only fraud is the people who disagree with his religious philosophies. Robert Tilton is a puppet. They wind him up and put him on the stage. He's spiritually illiterate. The, his, his knowledge of scripture is limited to those that justify you sending him your money. You are responsible for what has happened to this church. And some of you are pleased about that. That's regrettable. The media didn't cause his demise. His fraud caused his demise. Your church is next. Your church's insurance policy is going to get canceled. It's going to get canceled real quick because it opens season on religion. Maybe they can start having the, this place as a place of worship and sacrifice instead of this cosmic game show that he's been trying to perpetrate on the American people.
Robert Tilton may still face state and federal investigations and lawsuits from former church members claiming fraud and harassment. His personal life is in turmoil. He's divorcing his wife of 25 years. But Tilton's harshest critic, who's been dogging Tilton for two years, says he will not go hungry. Uh, we have evidence that money was transport, transported out of the United States uh, to Cayman, the Caymans, Belize, and Aruba. And so we can only speculate what, how much money he has salted away somewhere. The U.S. Supreme Court is refusing to block an investigation of television preacher Bob Tilton by the Attorney General of Texas. A federal judge had ruled that the AG's request for Tilton's church records was a violation of religious rights. Later, an appeals court reversed that ruling, and the minister's lawyer sought help from the nation's highest court. Without comment, though, the Supreme Court refused to hear Tilton's appeal. Late today, Attorney General Dan Morales says the decision gives him the green light to get on with his investigation and determine if the preacher committed consumer fraud or broke Texas charity laws. A legal update now on TV evangelist Robert Tilton. He and his wife, Marty, are now divorced after more than 20 years of marriage. Some Dallas residents who are suing the preacher for fraud are intervening in the divorce action. They claim it is a maneuver to hide the Tiltons' money. The couple reportedly agreed to split their estate, but details are being kept secret. Good morning, I'm Quinn Matthews. Thanks for joining us. Topping news at 725. Lawyers for TV evangelist Bob Tilton go to court this morning in Houston. Candace Caminati of Houston claims Tilton raped her when she worked for him in 1982. She claims she never filed a complaint because Tilton paid her hush money for 11 years. Which whatever one of you has been able to totally hold your mouth? I'm not in that group. I could have held my mouth being spit on, mocked, drunkards making up songs about you and playing them on the radio. Giving is receiving. Spend it! Giving is receiving. Spend it! Spend it! Spend it! Don't eat your seed! Spend it! I just like that word. We're wrapping up our conversation with Ole Anthony and Chris Tucker about religious satire and satire's role in society in general. The place that satire has its, to me, its most importance is in religion. Why is that? Because they are portraying this idiotic picture of, our, of, of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, they're caricatures. Mm -hmm. they're, like they're, what? Give me an example. Well, we, we've talked about one, Robert Tilton. Mm -hmm. We, we, we see these guys, I mean, everything they do is phony. Okay. And well, in case someone who hasn't seen him, what does he do that's phony? What, what were some of the things that he, he did that goes against your opinion of how a minister... Have you ever heard him talk in tongues? <laughs> no. I believe in talking in uh -huh. tongues. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. But and when he talk in, talks in tongues, it sounds like he's selling a used car. What was his famous phrase? Koshanda Bashanda Bahanda. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's that. coming to buy my Honda. <laughs> what I loved, if I can toss in one here, what, one of my favorite was when Tilton would, you know, he's here on this glittering set and he's living in mansions all over America and driving great cars. And he says, in a moment, I'm going into my prayer chapel to humble myself. <laughs> I, I just, I just yeah. love that. Yeah. I could play that back and yeah. all that. But the question I think really is important is, does God have a sense of humor? And does he? Well, of course. Look at us. <laughs> the reason God let people like Tilton and W.B. Grant and the others come up into the fog is so we could see ourselves. <laughs> chose the foolish things, and that would be me, to confound the wise. You can search heaven and earth and not find another like the Reverend Bob Tilton of Dallas, Texas. His powers are manifold. I can build houses, shopping centers, high-rise hotels in my sleep. Trust me. 
And if I wanted to go out there and work in a secular job, believe me, I wouldn't be a pauper. I would be a multi-billionaire. Okay? His message, unique. They love to quote me when I do bad verbiage. His voice, hypnotic. In a moment, going into my chapel, I'm going to kneel down and pray. I want so much to pray for you, but I know that God's got he hama haba. His enemies legion. You see, I know that I'm mocked, ridiculed, written about, laughed about, even bumper stickers made about me. But how can I look at this camera with such boldness? such bravery and courage his authority unchallenged satan sees that step of faith and he says he says oh no oh no tilton didn't shut his mouth no tilton didn't shut his mouth because you're worth it you're worth it his generosity boundless a thousand dollar vow of faith big deal we got people on welfare that's got enough faith to make a thousand dollar vow and paying it his mystery profound. See, it, it has to do with Mars. The spaceships from outer space. I think that's what it's all about. It's about the cosmics. And it's about interplanetary crossings and alignments. There is only one Bob Tilton, and for that, we are truly grateful. I'm John Bloom, and this has been God Stuff. Well, I'm probably the most checked up on preacher in America. <laughs> Channel 8 News reported this morning that Candace Caminati of Houston claimed local TV evangelist Robert Tilton raped her when she worked for him in 1982. We also reported Caminati claimed she never filed a complaint because Tilton paid her hush money for 11 years. That report was broadcast without first speaking to Caminati or Tilton. The spokesman for both of them later denied the statements. The report was broadcast as the result of a mistake by this television station. Channel 8 retracts the report in its entirety and apologizes to Candace Caminati and Robert Tilton for the error. Well, in other news, televangelist Robert Tilton wants to sue a Tulsa lawyer and five others for denying his right to exercise his religion. Now, Tilton alleges that Tulsa attorney Gary Richardson and the other defendants conspired against him and his church because of bigotry. Now, you may remember Richardson represents two women who sued the church. The U.S. Supreme Court will decide if Tilton can sue. Former television evangelist Robert Tilton is fighting back. Tilton and his church have filed a libel and slander lawsuit against one of Tilton's longtime adversaries. The suit claims Olay uh, Anthony Trinity and members Foundation of his Trinity Foundation defamed ABC. Tilton at a news conference last September. Anthony's group said Tilton was taking money out of the country and defrauding the American public. Anthony says he's flabbergasted by the lawsuit. He says Tilton has money for frivolous lawsuits, but not for paying his former workers unemployment benefits. Elsewhere on the legal front, former television preacher Bob Tilton may be hauled into court and told to prove he can perform miracles and heal people. The Dallas minister says he has healed many people of cancer, AIDS, and other diseases. He left television last summer, saying he was forced off the air by enemies led by the devil. In fighting a lawsuit filed by an ex-member of the church, Tilton's lawyers appealed the judge's order to turn over names and medical records of followers. Today in Austin, the Supreme Court of Texas heard both sides. There has been quite a bit of harassment and ridicule and even death threats involving certain members of the church. He confesses over breadth with regard to the baptism documents. He confesses he wishes to contest these people's religious beliefs. He basically wishes to engage in religious persecution. And Mr. Tilton has stated in deposition that he has no medical proof of any healing except possibly one, as the gentleman supposedly cured of AIDS. Robert Tilton didn't show up here. The word is that he is seen at his church every Sunday, and since his divorce, he's now living with an old friend who used to work for him. We weren't able to reach the TV preacher. People who know him tell us now he's working on a new project, a television ministry for children. The justices listen to both sides, then promise they will rule later. Until they do, the Smith trial cannot happen in Dallas, and all of the other legal action against Bob Tilton is on hold.
Yet another legal defeat, defeat rather, for Dallas-based televangelist Robert Tilton. This time it comes from the U.S. Supreme Court. Tilton tried to sue a group of Tulsa lawyers claiming they were trying to ruin his word of faith ministry. Earlier, a lower court dropped the suit, and today the U.S. Supreme Court upholds the decision. Tulsa lawyers represent former parishioners of Tilton who were suing him on charges of fraud. A legal victory tonight for former television evangelist Robert Tilton. The Texas Supreme Court today ruled that Tilton may keep information about his followers private. Norma Smith of Dallas sued Tilton, and District Judge Eric Moyer ordered the preacher to provide her with information about his purported miracles. The state Supreme Court, however, said Moyer abused his discretion, and Tilton's lawyers say they are pleased with today's ruling. Former TV evangelist Robert Tilton's multi-million dollar lawsuit against several news organizations and a nonprofit foundation has been dismissed. Yesterday, a federal judge threw out Tilton's suit, saying the former religious leader could not, uh, the former television Angeles could not support charges that his constitutional rights were violated. The suit had alleged ABC News, WFAA Channel 8, the Dallas Morning News, and the Trinity Foundation conspired to falsely accuse Tilton of fraud. Farmers Branch Police responded to a disturbance at Robert Tilton's Worth of Faith Church this morning. Police say that during a discussion of church goals, one church member refused to sit down and be quiet. He was escorted out by two security guards, but not arrested. Other church members reportedly left with him in protest. In Dallas, a judge says he'll send federal marshals to serve Robert Tilton with a subpoena if he doesn't show up in court tomorrow. A woman is suing Tilton for videotaping a testimonial of her that she says was unauthorized. A videotaped testimonial leads to a multi-million dollar lawsuit against TV evangelist Robert Tilton. Up to now, Tilton and his lawyers have been able to keep all the lawsuits against him from coming to trial. But that has changed today in a federal courtroom in Dallas. We get our report tonight from Channel 8's Bill Brown. This is a videotaped testimonial put together by the people in Reverend Bob Tilton's television production department. The woman in it is Vivian Elliott of Port Ritchie, Florida. She says as a child, she was sexually abused by her father and her brother. That had caused her so much torment, she decided to take her life. But she says before she could do that, God spoke to her and stopped her. That later, she saw Bob Tilton's television show, and Tilton helped her, so much so that she began to send him money, and later wrote him a letter thanking him. Tilton's people liked her letter so much, they talked the woman into doing a testimonial to run on his television show. Elliot said she would do it, but only if any money it made went to build a shelter for battered women. Apparently, no such shelter was ever built. The tape was made and broadcast, and Elliot says she was appalled that Tilton went out and hired actors and then twisted her story into one that took all the credit away from God and gave it to Tilton. She's now suing Tilton for fraud, conspiracy, and causing her emotional distress. The trial began before federal judge Joe Kendall. Tilton's lawyer, Rhonda Byrd, told the jury, Vivian Elliott has nothing coming, that she helped make that testimonial, she knew what was in it, that the tape is honest and not a manipulation in any way. Byrd said repeatedly, the preacher was simply trying to publish the gospel. She declined to speak with us. Elliott's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury that some call Tilton a prophet, while really he's a profiteer. Tilton wasn't in court this morning when federal judge Joe Kendall walked back into court this afternoon. He asked, and this is a quote, do we have a confirmed sighting of Brother Tilton? The answer was no. His attorney says he's out of town. The judge has asked us not to talk to the press until the trial is over. In court, though, Rhonda Byrd defends her client. She says Mrs. Elliott wanted to talk and changed her mind only after a negative story about Tilton appeared on a news magazine show. As for whether her client would be in court when the case continues tomorrow, Bird replied, I hope so. Said the judge, I hope so too. TV evangelist Robert Tilton spends a bruising afternoon on the witness stand. One of his ex-followers is suing him, and for the first time, the North Texas preacher is facing tough questions under oath before a jury. In a federal courtroom, the former TV preacher showed both anger and tears today under a barrage of questions. And Channel 8's Bill Brown was there. You made it. The smile on Reverend Bob Tilton's face would soon fade as he walked into the courthouse, headed into a trial every bit as full of drama as any tabloid TV show or soap opera. For years, Bob Tilton has been rich and confident and in control in his electronic pulpit. But in this federal courtroom, he's very much on the defensive, trying to ward off a legal onslaught. Elliot's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury Tilton has been running a business and a scheme, not a real ministry in church. 
In the bruising court session, the attorney went after the evangelist with some tough, probing questions. Tilton was very emotional. He flared into anger at times. His face got red. At times, his voice dropped to a whisper. His voice was shaking, he hung his head, and he cried, looking directly at the jury. Repeatedly, Tilton said, he is a prophet of God who only wants to help trouble people. He is not a crook. A number of times, the pastor gave an answer to a question. Then Richardson led him back to earlier answers given in deposition. Tilton would then read the testimony and be forced to admit his answer on the stand was wrong or untrue. Tilton's lawyer objected often and loudly to some of the questions. She said they are not relevant to this case, but attacks on the reverend's religious beliefs. Again and again, Tilton said everything he does is completely protected by the First Amendment, his freedom of religion. How do you think it went for you today? The judge has told us not to make any comments on the trial, so we're going to respect yeah. that. The reverend told us the real news is that he just won a big victory. The Dallas County Appraisal District, after a battle, agreed that he does run a church and does not have to pay taxes on much of his property. That will save him almost $300,000 a year. Tilton challenged the press, which he says lies about him, to report that singling out Channel 8 News. Hey, here's some good news for us. It's going to be interesting to see how you report that. <laughs> this will be real interesting yeah. to see how you report, report that. Good news. This case resumes in federal court Tuesday morning, but the lawyers are finished with Bob Tilton. The judge's words to Tilton? You're free to come and go as you please or go back to wherever it was you came from. A Florida woman wept on the stand this afternoon, recalling how former televangelist Robert Tilton nearly destroyed her faith in God. Vivian Elliott is suing Tilton for allegedly misusing an interview and then for rebroadcasting a reenactment of her being sexually abused. Elliott became emotional talking about how she trusted Tilton. She says she felt used when she saw how Tilton's ministry broadcast her interview even after she requested it be taken off the air. And in another high-profile trial, final arguments today in the trial of the Reverend Robert Tilton defending himself against fraud and other charges. Channel 8's Bill Brown has been waiting for a verdict at the federal court proceedings, and he has this live report. Bill? Tracy, we know one thing for sure. There will be no decision tonight uh, in this, the Reverend Bob Tilton trial. This jury went home about 45 minutes ago after deliberating almost four hours. In his closing argument, the woman's lawyer, Gary Richardson, told the jury that Tilton runs not a church, but a religious scheme just to rake in money. He said the evangelist made millions of dollars and he has escaped punishment by hiding behind the First Amendment. On the other side of this case is Tilton's lawyer, Rhonda Byrd. She told the jury this could be a landmark case affecting all religions. She argued that nobody can prove if Bob Tilton is an angel or a prophet, and nobody can make him prove his religious beliefs. Bird painted Elliot as a mentally ill, greedy person just out for some money. I'm just glad that I got the opportunity to say what I felt was right and do the right thing. Now, we wanted to talk to Reverend Tilton uh, and his legal team, but throughout this trial, they have uh, refused to talk with reporters, and today they left the courthouse without saying anything. Elliot's lawyer did tell us he feels the fact the jury did not come back with a verdict quickly is good for his side. He, uh, he feels that means uh, that they may win this. The seven people on the jury, the uh, four men and three women, will be back here at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning to start anew in their deliberations. After two days of deliberations, the jury in the fraud trial of Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton has broken for the night again without a verdict. Jurors began deliberating yesterday afternoon and resumed this morning. Mike and Vivian Elliott say they were victims of a get-rich-quick scheme by Tilton's Word of Faith Church. Tilton's attorneys say the trial is about religious freedom. This is News for Texas at 5. Quit ripping off America, that's what they're saying. But as long as a major judgment hits TV preacher Robert Tilton more than one million dollars. It happened in federal court this morning in Dallas. A jury slapped 1.5 million dollars in damages on Tilton for fraud and breach of contract. Mark Alford is live now at Tilton's Word of Faith Church in Farmers Branch with more on the judgment. Mark? Dell, this is clearly a big blow for Robert Tilton and his already floundering ministry. Behind me is the Word of Faith Family Church and Outreach Center, at one time the headquarters for the Robert Tilton Empire. Now it's unclear whether or not this property or any part of it will be auctioned off to help pay for the $1.5 million judgment. Mrs. Elliott, what do you think of this? Judgment? Mike and Vivian Elliott were walking on cloud nine today as they got off the federal courthouse elevator. After nearly two full days of deliberation, a jury made them one and a half million dollars richer, finding that televangelist Robert Tilton had defrauded the couple by misusing their $3,500 pledge. 
even though they had actually only given the ministry $33. With me now here at the federal courthouse, the man who won this case for the Elliots, Mr. Gary Richardson. This is not the last you're going to have to do with uh, Mr. Tilton, is it? No, we have some more cases, and I suspect we'll be in trial some more with him. What do you think convinced the jury that Mr. Tilton was guilty of these charges? Robert Tilton's conduct. That's exactly what convinced them. What do you mean by that? Defrauding the public. They found him guilty of, of fraud. They found him guilty of conspiracy to defraud. Uh, what he tells people, you know, the way he manipulates them to get their money. Mr. Richardson, however, is uh, on a crusade, a crusade to basically abolish the right to practice religion in this country as people are entitled to. What do you say in defense of Ms. Bird's accusation that you were on a crusade to shut down televangelism? Not that I know of. Maybe, maybe she's seen an agenda I haven't seen. I'm on a crusade to represent people that have been harmed and have been defrauded. That's been my crusade ever since I've been a lawyer for over 20 years. So what's next for Mr. Tilton and you? Go back to the courthouse. Well, so far, Tilton and his former wife have not been available for comment. News 4 Texas reporter Bud Gillette tells us the local ministry is referring all questions to the church's attorney, J.C. Joyce of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Word of faith, how may I direct your call? Though not talking for the record, a large computer printed okay, banner boldly proclaims the support for Pastor Robert Tilton. What I've been told is to refer you to J.C. Joyce, his office. From Tulsa, Joyce will say only that he expects to appeal and did not address what effect, if any, the verdict might have on the congregation. What I'm attempting to do is, is, is try to see if someone with the ministry cares to discuss how this likely would affect the ministry. Uh, we have no comment. Everything has to come from J.C. The church itself is empty on weekdays, but across the street at a school headed by Marty uh, Tilton, like Rick Appleby but, tells me uh, he's shocked a jury could right find for the plaintiffs. Uh, you know, I find it's it, it kind of bad that a person can, can receive such a, a, a large amount of money when basically what was said is what was put into the story. Appleby wasn't involved in the Elliott story, though he used to produce and direct Word of Faith TV programs. He feels media stories in the past few years have put Tilton at an unfair disadvantage. And I think part of the problem in, in the verdict is that, that he had a bad name here in, in Dallas. I, I don't really think that he could receive a fair trial here in Dallas. What Robert Tilton is doing... This afternoon in their lawyer's office, Vivian and Mike Elliott talked about the $1.5 million judgment in their favor. They say the money is not what's important. Actually, what I'm hoping for Mr. Tilton is that he'll turn his life around and uh, realize that uh, he's been teaching the wrong thing to people. That's not a belief that he's preaching. That's uh, just out and out, uh, send me your money. Ole Anthony, the man who helped expose Tilton in a television news show, calls the verdict a landmark civil fraud case. He is calling it a message to televangelists everywhere. Well, it's a landmark case. It's going to cause them all to be very, very careful in their extravagant claims and their literally the, the lies they many times tell that they excuse because they're talking about God, and it's just sick. Anthony says he hopes the church will recover, but that it will ask Tilton to resign. Texas News 5's Barry Sims covered the trial for us and has the latest. Barry? Well, Jane and Mike, jurors in the fraud case say religion was never a factor, and they have nothing personal against Robert Tilton or his church. They just find it unlawful how he conducts business. The public now knows by the verdict of this jury that's heard all of this evidence that this man has been defrauding people for a long time. Tilton, who testified during the trial, is out of town. But his former wife, who was in court today, says she wasn't surprised by the one and a half million dollar judgment. Are we guilty? No, absolutely not. Are you looking forward to appealing this case? We are looking forward to appealing. I believe the public opinion is uh, so tainted by the press. Um, no, I wasn't surprised. Doesn't mean it's right. I trust that in the end uh, we will be vindicated. In the meantime, we just have to walk through it. We think that the jury just did not listen to the evidence quite closely enough, but if uh, Judge Kendall does not undo what the jury has done, we will appeal. But jurors say they did go over all of the evidence and found that Tilton was reckless with his followers' emotions. Reckless with people's feelings of what there are. Their trust. Their trust in the, you know, in the church. And not following a more careful procedure uh, is not a good way to raise money. Throughout the whole trial, it was nothing, it was no better than a farce from, from, the, from the defense's side of the case. 
Reverend Tilton left long before the verdict. He's believed to be back in the Florida Keys. He still faces other lawsuits now in Texas and Oklahoma. In fact, there will be a hearing on one widow's case in Dallas on Friday. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. It just seems to me like he was trying to tell everybody, we're going to do whatever we want, no matter what, no matter who we hurt. Mario Gomez is one of 12 jurors who spent 13 hours deciding whether Robert Tilton defrauded Vivian and Mike Elliott. Gomez says although the defense cited religion as key in this case, the jury ended up believing the plaintiff's argument that Robert Tilton was only using religion. The way we looked at it, why it's so important is to see if a church can hide behind the First Amendment. Uh, it seems to me that the, um, the Tilton ministry was trying to do that. This was a case in which a con artist cheated a couple and the jury recognized it as such and awarded damages for what this con artist did. I don't think this is a major religious uh, freedom case. It's a SMU visiting law professor Steve Gardner investigated charges of charitable abuse against Tilton in 1992 when Gardner worked with the state as an assistant attorney general. Gardner says his own investigation into charges against Tilton focused not on religion but on secular promises to do good on earth that went unfulfilled. He views the Elliott case as the same kind of legal argument. Well this should certainly send a signal to uh, any other crooked preachers out there not to take advantage of uh, people's true beliefs. That's exactly what Juror Gomez says was the idea behind the jury's guilty verdict. He says some of the testimony from witnesses associated with the Tiltons convinced jurors that their verdict should send a strong message. He said that uh, we can believe any, be any belief we have uh, even to the point of defrauding the public. Gomez says that kind of testimony convinced jurors the case did not center on religion. Tilton's attorney maintains it does. She says she'll appeal the verdict. And Tilton's lawyer says her appeal will come if the judge declines her motion to, in her words, correct the jury's verdict. In this country, big-time TV preacher Robert Tilton has received the word from a jury. Some of the people Tilton hit up for money hit back in court. Correspondent Vicki Mabry has chapter and verse on it. We are here to worship the Lord. It's another large and perhaps fatal blow to one of the last big televangelists, Robert Tilton. Answering a Tilton appeal for funds for a church-sponsored crisis center, Mike and Vivian Elliott donated money and an emotional tape testimonial. Through Robert Tilton, the Lord gave me my family back. The center never materialized. The Elliotts, disillusioned, sued for fraud and a jury found in their favor. Quit ripping off America, that's what they're saying been terrible, but I'm glad that I did it. Part of Tilton's claims to his followers was that God would allow them to prosper if they donated to his church. But in the wake of increasingly bad publicity and mounting lawsuits, it was Tilton's television ministry that stopped reaping rewards and went off the air last fall. The devil wants to paralyze. Like some other televangelists before him, Tilton's grandiose claims and lavish lifestyle did him in. His attorney plans to appeal jury basically just went on an emotional level rather than paying close attention to the evidence. The head of a religious watchdog organization in Dallas says exposure is weeding out the frauds in the televangelism business. It's a landmark decision. From now on, they're going to have to have accountability. In the Elliott's case, Tilton's claims may be true. Donating to his church did bring them prosperity to the tune of a million and a half dollar jury award. Vicki Mabry, CBS News, Dallas. In other news today, Robert Tilton talks. The controversial evangelist is back at the pulpit. Songs of praise ring out at the Word of Faith Temple today. Loyal followers of Robert Tilton clutch their Bibles and look for direction. Tilton is determined to lead his flock despite his legal woes. Remember these words, uh -huh. the sun is always shining, no matter where you are, as long as you keep your eyes on Jesus. So, you know, the televangelist is back at the pulpit today, preaching to even fewer than before. In his sermon, he jokes about his troubles and says, quitters never win and winners never quit. He knows many question his ability to continue the ministry. I think the major reason is, is with all the negative press that's been generated. I don't think the jury felt they had any other choice. At one time, this parking lot used to be full on Sundays. Tilton's church used to have a loyal following of about 8,000 members. Today, that number is considerably less. 
Sometimes in a different situation, you have an exodus of uh, followers at you know different points. Sometimes they can handle the heat, and sometimes they can't. So I, it's not me to question who they are and where their faith are. What made a dwindling ministry worse is this week's jury ruling that Tilton defrauded a Florida woman. Now, $1.5 million of the church's money will pay for Tilton's mistake. He vows not to give up. Of course not. It's 100% appealable. We're not concerned about it, and we're just going on with the great things of God. For now, he goes on with a lot less money and a dwindling flock. Two, one. At one time, Reverend Robert Tilton was one of the hottest TV preachers around, raking in millions of dollars. But an Inside Edition investigation exposed Tilton's ministry, and now he's the one paying up. Steve Wilson with an update. Close your eyes, bow your head, and open your body to look. <laughs> when we first met an investigated TV preacher, Robert Tilton, his critics told us he was fleecing his flock out of more than a million bucks a week. Every day, on television stations across the country, Tilton was promising that God would shower prosperity upon anyone who would send donations to his Dallas ministry. And if you refuse to give... Just then, just, you saw me take a breath in, just then, I saw a person who had stopped fulfilling their vow to this ministry, just then. You've severed your divine connection. Well, we were the first to show you, no matter how much they gave, none of his faithful flock was prospering quite like Thank Tilton you. himself. There's no religion there. There's no, it's all fraud. I believe so, yes. Vivian Elliott and her husband Mike were one-time followers who not only came to believe Tilton was a fraud, they're the ones who just walked out of a hey, Texas courtroom with a $1.5 million dollar judgment against him important. after they How proved it to the satisfaction of a jury. He takes just little pieces of the Bible, and every piece that he takes out is only something he can turn into making money with. Vivian Elliott says Tilton also exploited her by dramatizing her past emotional problems just to entice others to donate. He ran and reran this testimonial about the Elliots on his success in live television broadcast seen on 200 stations across America. My father would take me for rides with him out, you know, to the store or any place and he would pull over and try and molest me in the car. Although Vivian told Tilton's producers about such problems in her life, she refused to reenact anything. So a Tilton producer found actors to do it and put it on the air after forging Elliott's signatures on permission forms. Tilton's trial attorney, Rhonda Byrd, has suggested the jurors were duped by emotionalism and the fact that the foreman's spouse is a minister. Well, Elliott's attorney, Gary Richardson, says that's nonsense. He says Tilton is such an obvious fraud, the case would have been easier to win if everybody on the jury was a minister. They saw what this man is really all about, and uh, they finally had enough of it. Like a lot of people that were there that had seen us in the courthouse, they all said that they were rooting for us. They wanted us to beat this guy and get him off the air because America's just had enough of it. You know, they don't want to have to deal with people like him anymore. At least eight other members of Tilton's flock are also suing him for using their contributions for personal use. As for the preacher himself, he has divorced his wife and vows to keep fighting in court. More trouble for embattled preacher Robert Tilton. An insurance company for the former televangelist is balking at paying damages. Northfield Insurance filed suit in Dallas saying it should not have to pay any of a one and a half million dollar judgment against Tilton. Last month, jury members ruled in favor of a Florida couple. That case is under appeal. Do you believe Bob Tilton is responsible for your mother's yes. death? Yes. Yes, I do. Why? Because it was his influence that prevented her from seeking medical care. Controversial evangelist Bob Tilton goes back to court to face accusations that he lied to and cheated his former followers. The former branch preacher lost his television ministry after an expose by ABC News. He has already lost one major lawsuit by a former follower and now faces more trials. Channel 8's Bill Brown was in the Dallas courtroom this morning and he joins us now live from our newsroom with the details. Bill? Renee, Robert Tilton has now been sued by 11 disenchanted former followers. Some of the suits have been thrown out, but he still faces other suits. Lawsuits by three groups of Dallas people have now been combined into one case, and that trial was to start today. It didn't. 
The embattled preacher showed up in court looking cheerful in the face of what may be heavy odds against him. Three groups of ex-followers claim Tilton promised them personal miracles but never delivered. They claim he cheated them and hurt their lives. Tilton is now being accused of fraud, conspiracy, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. One who is suing is Vicki Crenshaw. She says her mother, Mary Turk, had colon cancer and turned to Tilton's television show in desperation. Later, the woman put all her faith in the evangelist healing her and stopped seeing her doctor. Soon after, she died. She would, uh, again, share information, uh, quote from Robert Tilton, um, say that she had a miracle coming and she refused to go. She felt that if she sought medical care, that it would be a breach of faith and then she wouldn't receive her miracle. I know that he was lying to her because he said that he was in um, constant personal prayer for her and he didn't even know who she was. Tilton claims all of this is pure nonsense, that those suing him are just wrong, that it's a plot to deny him his right to freedom of religion. He says he has never hurt anybody. Forget whether you like me or not, prayer is on trial here. They've taken prayer out of the schools, now they're trying to take prayer off of television. They say, no Bob, everyone else can pray, but you can't. Why can't I pray? I can pray in America the way I believe God has instructed me to pray, and I have that right, and I am fighting for that right, I'm continuing to pray, I'm going to keep praying, and I'm going to believe that God answers prayers. Yes, I believe in miracles, and miracles are on trial. He was just found to be a fraud and a con man just uh, not long ago. These type of people have taken prayer out of our schools. Now they're trying to take my right and your right to not be able to pray on television or to pray the way that I believe God has instructed me to pray for miracles. But this trial has been delayed. Lawyers for Tilton, his wife, and the church said they're not ready to go to trial, and they asked for a continuance today. Uh, District Judge John Marshall agreed. The trial has now been set for sometime in November. Other trials are backed up behind this one, so it looks as if Mr. Tilton will be spending a lot of his future time in a courtroom. Well, coming up on News 8 at 6, a federal judge disciplines Bob Tilton's defense lawyer for misrepresenting the facts. And the punishment includes a hefty fine. Rhonda Byrd has represented Tilton in a number of lawsuits filed against him, as Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. He's wanting these people to prove... Dallas lawyer Rhonda Byrd has represented Reverend Bob Tilton since his legal trouble started piling up. You made it! Last April, before federal judge Joe Kendall, Byrd defended the preacher in a case in which two former church members, Mike and Vivian Elliott, won a million and a half dollar judgment against Tilton. In that trial, the man who produced videotaped testimonials that were shown on Tilton's television show testified. On the witness stand, he admitted that he forged the couple's names on a release form. Judge Kendall said, long after she learned that the producer had likely forged those names, Rhonda Byrd denied any knowledge of it. So the judge ordered Tilton's attorney to pay the Elliott's lawyer, Gary Richardson, $7,850. In his order, Judge Kendall wrote that Byrd misrepresented these events concerning the releases in her closing argument to the jury. Byrd's statements at trial were misleading, the judge said. They showed dishonesty, the judge said. Byrd's conduct has been deceptive to the court. I've been practicing law over 20 years. I have never, ever dealt with a lawyer like Rhonda Bird, ever. And what do you mean by that? Not being able to accept the things she says is truth. Ever. Bird's attorney, Bob Wellenberger, says his client will appeal the judge's sanctions. Dallas evangelist Robert Tilton first lost his TV show and now his silo sign. The State Department of Transportation says Tilton's church ad on this silo along I-35 in Carrollton violates the U.S. Highway Beautification Act. The law forbids billboards within 660 feet of an interstate federally funded highway. Most of his other billboards that featured Tilton's picture have already come down following lawsuits over his ministry. Former TV evangelist Robert Tilton has dropped a slander lawsuit against a religious watchdog group. Tilton had sued the nonprofit Hallelujah! Trinity Foundation and its founder, Ole Anthony. An attorney for Tilton says the lawsuit has been dropped for now. But the Foundation, Anthony, and ABC News remain defendants in a federal lawsuit filed by Tilton. They're accused of conspiring to falsely accuse Tilton of wrongdoing. Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton is trying to make a comeback tonight after legal problems that ruined his old ministry. But not everyone is excited about his return. Texas News 5's Jay Gray joins us now with details. Jay? 
Robert Tilton is working to put the problems of his past behind him, but longtime opponents question whether it is a kinder, gentler Tilton that is back on the air. Here's Pastor Tilton. Oh, how I love to come on these airwaves. Robert Tilton is back on the air in four cities. Jacksonville, Florida, Washington, D.C., Canton, Ohio, and Charlotte, North Carolina. And there are reports that the pastor is working on a full-fledged comeback, which apparently includes this multi-million dollar North Dallas home and a new wife. Forget about me, what you've heard about me or haven't heard about me. Indeed, longtime Tilton opponents say the televangelist has changed. In, in the past, he was a uh, success in life, $1,000 vow, 100-fold blessing. Now he's very subdued, and there's a demon. Everything that Robert Tilton doesn't like is a demon. Now I'm going to hit those devils, so don't, don't be afraid. But while Tilton doesn't ask for money on his 30-minute daily show, Anderson believes his motives are less than pure. And if you're going to call, you need to call right now. Saddam Calls, Anderson says, are used to develop money-making direct mailing lists. And it's pinpointed, very subtle, very high-tech marketing, advertising, all the techniques to use to, to get people to send him their money. Important to point out, we tried repeatedly to talk with Robert Tilton. He would not return any of our calls. Word of Faith Ministries referred all calls to Tilton's attorney, J.C. Joyce in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His office said he was also unavailable for comment. Speaking of Mr. Tilton's lawyer, what about all those lawsuits filed by his former followers claiming fraud? He will still spend time in court. Tilton has a date in court with ABC Television scheduled for June 15th in Tulsa. There are also five plaintiff suits Tilton must settle before that court date. Back here in Dallas, a federal judge has dismissed televangelist Robert Tilton's lawsuit against ABC News and a religious watchdog group. U.S. Judge Robert Maloney disagreed with Tilton's contentions that the network and the Dallas-based Trinity Foundation had engaged in a criminal conspiracy to falsely accuse him of fraud. Televangelist Robert Tilton won't have to answer to charges from three lawsuits filed against him. The Oklahoma Court of Appeals has ruled that freedom of religion protects the Dallas area preacher. The appeals court yesterday ruled unanimously to uphold a 1993 decision by a Tulsa judge who cited religious freedom. Three Oklahoma women had claimed Tilton fraudulently solicited money from them. Tilton says the ruling is a great victory. Three weeks before the trial, a Tulsa federal judge dismisses a lawsuit filed by televangelist Robert Tilton against ABC News. Tilton was suing ABC over a 1991 news report that alleged Tilton's Word of Faith Ministries failed to carry out personal prayer requests. Before the report, Tilton's ministries had a monthly income of about $7 million. Tilton claimed that Primetime Live destroyed his ministry by deliberately misrepresenting information. The judge will release his reasons for dismissal in the next 15 days. A Dallas judge has ordered televangelist Robert Tilton to pay a woman $640,000 for refusing to turn over records and for harassing attorneys. The judge ordered the money be paid to Norma Smith and her attorneys. Smith is alleging in a lawsuit Tilton caused her emotional harm by sending her written offers to cure her husband after he had died. Tilton's attorney is expected to fight the sanctions in court today. Dallas TV evangelist Bob Tilton is spending more time in courts than in church these days. Already reeling from a big legal defeat, the flamboyant preacher now faces a major trial. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. And there's pain right now in the area of your neck. Go! In the name of Jesus. Reverend Bob Tilton has always claimed he could do miraculous things, such as heal the sick. The way things are going for the TV preacher now, he could use a legal miracle. Once the king of the electronic evangelist, Tilton is now struggling to hold on to what's left of his multi-million dollar empire. In better days, the colorful pastor filled his church and farmer's branch with thousands of his followers. No more, says Ole Anthony, the Dallas religious watchdog who's Tilton's harshest critic. Yes, it's way, way down. I, sometimes it's as low as 110, 120 people from the reports we get. Anthony predicts Tilton will soon shut down his church. How many of you saw we had some great victories this week and some lawsuits? Three more lawsuits thrown out of court. But four lawsuits remain, filed by former Tilton followers in Dallas. After being forced off television, the Texan got back on in a few small cities with his Pastor Tilton show. His new theology was that there was a demon behind everything that uh, Brother Bob didn't like. 
and he had to scream the demons out of existence. So there was a lot of screaming on this program. Go! Devils! Jesus! Name! Jesus! Name! Arthritis! Go! Pain! Go! Sickness! Go! Cancer! Go! But that show too ended, and now Tilton is not on TV at all. He does have a new wife, Lee Valentine, also an evangelist, and they have a little boy. I said perfect gifts come down from the Father above. He said from the Father above. Soon, the family will move into the new house they're now building in Addison. A Dallas judge recently ordered Tilton to pay Norma Smith $640,000 as punishment for not turning over financial records. The Reverend claims if he has to pay that, he'll be bankrupt. Late in the afternoon, the Supreme Court of Texas granted Tilton an emergency stay, so he won't have to produce the records for now. Also, the Dallas Court of Appeals agreed to decide if the judge acted correctly in ordering him to pay the huge sanction. We couldn't reach Tilton to talk with him about any of this. The Smith case is expected to go to trial in Dallas next week. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. And the cases of three other Dallas followers suing Tilton have been combined, but no trial date has been set yet. News today about the embattled televangelist Robert Tilton. In the midst of his legal troubles, he's found some new friends. They are the leaders of more than 30 churches throughout Texas. They have asked the Texas Supreme Court to throw out several lawsuits pending against Tilton. The preacher has been sued for fraud and already has asked the state's highest court to dismiss the cases, but it refused. The churches supporting Tilton say civil courts have no jurisdiction over religious matters. At the same time, these churches don't agree with Tilton's style of ministry, so they refuse to be identified. Texas-based evangelist Robert Tilton and his second wife have filed for divorce. Robert and Lee Tilton were married less than two years ago. She is also an evangelist. Only two months ago, the couple and Mrs. Tilton's three-year-old son moved into a new home valued at nearly $700,000. Well, just 16 days after he filed for divorce, evangelist Robert Tilton has changed his mind. In a statement released yesterday, Tilton says he and his second wife have reconciled. Tilton will continue to preach with his wife at his Farmer's Branch Church. A legal victory today for former TV preacher Robert Tilton. A judge dismissed a lawsuit filed by a former follower alleging fraud and emotional distress. Norma Smith claimed Tilton's ministry continued to ask for money in exchange for prayers for her husband's health, even after the man had died. A state judge also threw out fines imposed on Tilton for failing to produce documents relating to the case. TV evangelist Robert Tilton is headed back to court, but this time it's divorce court. Tilton had filed for divorce in November from his second wife, Lee, but announced that they had reconciled. Then on Monday, Tilton filed yet another divorce petition. Tilton cited discord and personality conflicts. The embattled minister has also reportedly fired many Word of Faith Church staff members who have ties to his wife. Coming up next on News 8 at 10, Robert Tilton is back in court. His estranged wife claims he hit her. From WFAA-TV, this is the News 8 Update. Why would you be scared of him? I just think right now he's making many irrational decisions. He's not thinking straight. The second wife of evangelist Bob Tilton charges he has beaten her and threatened her life. And now in the middle of a bitter divorce battle, Lee Tilton is asking a, ju a judge to keep her husband away from her. And dramatic charges in a Dallas courtroom top the update. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. At an angry divorce hearing in Dallas, Lee Tilton, the evangelist's wife of two years, testified the preacher pushed her downstairs and hurt her so badly she'll need surgery. She said Tilton's heavy drinking made him violent. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports. Puppy love is real to the puppy. Can you say amen? It looked like a marriage made in television heaven. Lee Valentine, herself an evangelist. Don't let the devil steal your dream. Joining in matrimony with one of America's top TV preachers. Go! In the name of Jesus. But a happy union it was not to be. Amid accusations of drinking binges, infidelity, and beatings, Lee Tilton is now divorcing her pastor partner. His second split up in four years. In a family court hearing, the two and their lawyers tangled over how much money and property Tilton has and how much Lee will get. 
While both are ministers, most of the talk was not of scripture, the good book, and things holy, but of jaguars, yachts, million-dollar homes, and first-class plane trips. He's kept none of the promises that he's said and um, made a few threats, many threats. After their 27-month marriage, these days the Reverend is living on his half-million-dollar yacht in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. His wife now lives in their one-and-a-half-million-dollar mansion in Addison, officially the church parsonage. In seeking a court order to keep Tilton away from her, Lee told of her husband's wild drinking binges and violent rages. She said, he slapped me and knocked me against the wall. She said she was violently struck and said he knocked me down the stairs. Tilton's wife claims he told her he fears he's going crazy and he has wild visions of rats eating his brains. You're telling the court that you fear for your life that we were around Reverend Tilton. Is that still the case? for your life? You think he might try to take your life? He's a very angry man right now. She accuses Tilton of sending church workers out to break into the house. There's maybe fifty to eighty thousand dollars worth of stuff that the church came out there with no court order, broke into the house, and just took stuff. I mean, ripped a safe out of the wall, took her personal item. Pastor Tilton did not refute any of the charges. He didn't say anything. You, uh, knock your wife out of the at another hearing, the church will try to throw Lee Tilton out of the house. And she will try to get her husband held in contempt. This bitter confrontation is a long way from over. On Monday here, the divorce hearing will continue. As he has for several years now, Bob Tilton is spending a lot more time in courtrooms than he is in church. Next on the News 8 Update at 10. And what's next for Robert Tilton's estranged wife after alarming allegations? New tonight, former televangelist Robert Tilton's second wife is evicted from her Addison home today. A judge ruled that Lee Tilton, her son and mother, must move out by next month. The eviction was brought on by her estranged husband, Robert Tilton. My son is there and my 70-year-old mom. Well, we just basically we want, we need, um, you know, we need a place to stay, that's all. And it's just been unfair. She still loves him, she insists, but if the marriage is lost, Lee Tilton seems dead set on getting from husband Bob the things she feels she has coming to her. If he and his church have their way, this million and a half dollar house won't be one of them. After some bruising legal blows for the once rich and powerful television preacher, now comes a winning round. After a hearing, a justice of the peace is giving Lee Tilton five days to get herself and her little boy out of the family mansion. When you hear the term church parsonage, this is probably not what comes to mind. The lavishness of this place reflects the hundreds of millions of dollars that Bob Tilton took in in his television ministry. Tilton's lawyers claim he doesn't own the house. The church does, and it's the church kicking Lee Tilton out. She and her attorney couldn't disagree more. But he's the church. Nobody can rule against him as he being, quote, the owner, pope, and everything else of that church. Attorneys for Tilton told J.P. Robert Foreman that weeks ago, his wife signed an agreement to be out of the Addison house by the 1st of May, but then she refused. The J.P. ruled her in violation of a divorce court order to leave and told her, Time to go. How do you feel about the ruling? Is he, is he evicting you? I think you? Um, they're trying, um, and uh, we're just holding on. Thank you. Know, are you going to fight it? Yeah. In the hearing, Byron Darkin was described as an official of the church and the one pushing the evangelist's wife out of the church, the church and the house. Why do you want Mrs. Tilton out of the church? Can you tell me? Why won't you talk to us? Is there some reason you won't talk about this? She says she has a right to stay in the, in the house. Why do you want her out? In the past, when some labeled him a fraud who preyed on the sick and the helpless, Bob Tilton spoke up loudly to deny it. These days, his lips are sealed. His wife's lawyer vows to appeal the eviction order before the five days are up. He says he's ready for a long and nasty fight. As usual, from Mr. Tilton and his barrage of attorneys, uh, there'll be hearings in every court in the state probably before it's over. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News. TV preacher Robert Tilton and his estranged wife are back in court today. Lee Valentine Tilton says she wants her husband held in contempt of court. They're in the middle of a messy divorce case. Mrs. Til Tilton has told the Dallas Morning News that her husband is losing his life and his soul to alcohol and money. 
She says Robert Tilton physically abused her. She says he makes personal use of church money and that he hates Dallas and wants to get out of town. Robert Tilton's attorney says the fight should not be played out in public. He says Mrs. Tilton's claims are lies. After finding him in contempt, a Dallas judge today ordered evangelist Bob Tilton to jail. It happened during a hearing in Tilton's bitter divorce case. His second wife, Lee, accuses him of taking $100,000 worth of her personal items. Judge John Elder found the former TV preacher is not in contempt on four other issues, but should be punished for not giving back his wife's possessions. There was, however, one big legal victory today for Tilton. The judge denied an attempt to add his Word of Faith Church as a defendant in the divorce case. His lawyers say to do so would violate church members' religious freedom. The religious beliefs are totally up to them. I believe in that 100%, uh, and that's not the issue. It's the right of control of the 30 or $40 million that Bob Tilton controls, uses the interest of, and used to pay any bill he chooses to pay by what he wants to buy. Tilton must go to jail if by July the 8th he has not returned his wife's personal things. The former TV preacher left the courthouse without commenting. An appellate court has reversed a ruling that found Dallas televangelist Robert Tilton and his now ex-wife guilty of defrauding a Florida couple. When asked yesterday about the reversal of the million dollar judgment, Tilton said he felt vindicated. Yesterday, a Dallas judge ruled Tilton's second wife, Lee, may stay in the one and a half million dollar house owned by her husband's church pending settlement of their divorce. Bob Tilton must pay $8,500 in support and pay his wife's bills and her attorney's fees of up to $25,000. The actual divorce trial was set for December. A legal setback today for former television evangelist Robert Tilton. He lost another try in his attempt to sue ABC Television. Tilton sued ABC, alleging it and other organizations violated racketeering laws by conspiring against Tilton and his Word of Faith Church. Lower courts have ruled against Tilton, and today the Federal Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld those lower court decisions. The court said Tilton failed to make a case that the RICO laws had been broken. Evangelist Robert Tilton and his second wife, Lee Tilton, are back in court today talking divorce. The current issue is whether Tilton's once powerful Word of Faith Church and all its assets, including a $1.6 million home in Addison, will be part of the divorce battle. 11 News reporter Angela Hale is just back from a hearing in civil court where this could be a precedent-setting case, Angela. Well, Cameron, there is a long history of rulings in the United States which uphold the separation of church and state. But what if a church and an evangelist like Robert Tilton are so closely intertwined that the operation is like a corporation rather than a separate church? That is exactly what a judge is going to decide. Strolling into court today, televangelist Robert Tilton is confident. Everything's going to turn out okay. Tilton and his second wife, Lee, are embroiled in a nasty divorce, a battle over money and property. At issue is whether Tilton and his ministry are one and the same, or whether assets like the couple's $1.6 million mansion, which Tilton calls a parsonage, are protected by the constitutional powers of the separation of church and state. Now attorneys for Tilton's second wife say Tilton, who lives on a $450,000 yacht in Florida, is exploiting the church exemption to pay for his own lavish lifestyle. He wants to go to Israel by way of New York City and the Carlisle Hotel and the Plaza Atenee in Paris. Well, he doesn't have a board of deacons or a finance committee or a board of elders or anyone else to answer to. He has used his church as a corporation to pay for whatever he wants to pay and he can't hide behind the first amendment and the religious reformation act in the state of texas tilton's attorneys say all church property is protected it is a church it is it's recognized by the irs as a church by dallas county appraisal district as a church it's got members who donate their money for the work of the ministry it doesn't belong to Bob Tilton. It doesn't belong to Lee Tilton. A judge will have the final say. A judge says Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church can be considered community property. Now a jury will decide if the church can be divided up as part of a divorce case.
A local judge denied Robert Tilton's request to keep church assets from becoming part of any community property settlement. Bud Gillette talked with Mrs. Tilton's attorney today, and Bud, this has got to be a big victory for them right now. Yeah, it is, Stephen Ashley. Uh, Lee Valentine Tilton brought a ministry of her own into the marriage, and it was engulfed by Robert Tilton's. Now her attorney says she wants something back. Robert Tilton lives the life of the rich and famous, but he claims to be broke. Tony Wright says while this Tilton may not here. have many personal assets, he nonetheless controls a business worth $30 million. Now a divorce trial jury will decide whether Mrs. Tilton should get a part of that. It opens the door in this very unusual case to have the church's assets to be considered community property. In other words, the church's assets can be divided if the jury chooses to. I'm going to be praying for this. Reverend Tilton and his local attorneys were not willing to be interviewed, but in court papers he had argued his dismissal of Mrs. Tilton from both his home and ministry were due to differences of opinion on doctrinal matters. Now a jury will decide. Attorney Wright insists Tilton's church should not get any special consideration. 99% of your churches do things correctly. They have a board of deacons, a board of elders, uh, an expense review committee, so they can't spend $10,000 uh, stopping at the French Riviera on the way to uh, Israel. The devil would not be making a play for God's servants over the last couple of three, four, five years if there wasn't something God's trying to do. When Bob Tilton went on television and asked people to send him money, the cash came rolling in, about $100 million a year. Now, after investigations and news exposés, the colorful preacher may be taking in only about 10 to 12 million a year. There is no real church in the terms that most people think of a church. This is Bob Tilton running an empire. Earlier from the witness stand, Lee Tilton testified that her husband hit her, knocked her down some stairs, and broke her collarbone. And she said he drank heavily and had women on the side. The empire is worth in the neighborhood of $30 million and it's bringing in somewhere in the neighborhood of 750000 uh, up to about a million dollars per month. If I was trying to hide something... Tilton and the attorneys for the church claim under freedom of religion, what the church owns cannot be touched by his wife. But this ruling disagrees. It's a huge legal blow to the television evangelist. Without this decision, if it would have been ruled the other way, it would be impossible for her to get a fair trial on all the questions. The church's lawyers had no comment. Bob Tilton and his attorneys could not be reached. The divorce trial begins on Monday. And Bob Tilton has been living on his yacht in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He recently bought a new condo there. Tilton says he plans as soon as possible to get back to preaching on TV. Topping 11 News at 6, the troubles of televangelist Robert Tilton. His first ex-wife is back in the picture, making his divorce from wife number two a bit more complicated. That's because a school run by Tilton's first wife is now laying claim to money and property from the church itself. 11 News reporter Mark Anik joins us from our Dallas newsroom with details. And Mark, it's the school and not Marty Tilton herself that made today's move. Jerry, yes it is. Her attorney says that's because Marty Tilton is a generous person who's not interested in any money for herself. She is, however, interested in making sure that if church assets are divided, they go to whom they belong, in this case, her school. Under normal circumstances, this would be a simple he said, she said. But this case is anything but normal. It's not by the works of man's flesh. He is Robert Tilton, a television pastor whose church is only a shadow of what it once was. I mean, everything was stripped from me. She is Lee, wife number two. In the midst of their divorce case, a judge has ruled that church property might be considered community property in the divorce settlement. Enter wife number one, a smiling but quiet Marty Tilton, who is claiming rights in this case, though not for herself. I'm not sure, but I believe she has a right, and uh, if anything, she deserves a lot. She gave this man everything. I think it helps our case because Marty Tilton certainly will know a lot of incidents where Bob Tilton has abused his position of power and control of the money. I've never been after one half of that church. I've been after what's fair. I've lost my ministry. I've lost all my furniture. I've lost everything. And I've just been after what's fair. Well, the issue in this case is, is, is a divorce and Bob Tilton doesn't have anything. Mr. Tilton doesn't have any assets. Mr. Tilton doesn't have a dime. Bob hides everything in the church ministry and claims to own nothing and he makes unilateral decisions. 
we've heard that, that he has millions stashed overseas and offshore. Is there any way to find out about that? We're hoping to find out. Thank you. When the TV preacher and his first wife split back in 93, Marty Tilton got the lavish 11,000 square foot home in Las Colinas plus some money. She did not get a penny of the church's assets after she was legally advised that under the Constitution, all of that was untouchable. We have no comment. But in her petition to the court, Marty has plenty to say. With a way now clear to go after the assets of the church, she says she wants money not for herself, but for the Lexington Academy, a private school she founded and still runs. She makes it clear she's not out to help Lee Valentine Tilton, saying it would not be right for Pastor Tilton or Valentine to appropriate the new church for themselves to the exclusion of its congregation, contributors, and other benefactors. She adds, it is Marty Tilton's fervent belief that the ministry and the assets of the new church should be wrested from the talons of Pastor Tilton and Valentine. The man caught in the middle of this legal squeeze play seems to be feeling the pressure. Yeah, well, I'm trying to talk to my lawyers. Thank you very much. After you talk to your lawyer, can we talk to you? Um, I don't remember ever talking to you. The actual trial of the divorce will begin later this week. Bob Tilton's critics say he has stashed millions of dollars in foreign banks where it can't be touched. Tilton has never responded to that charge. A major decision for televangelist Robert Tilton in his pre-trial divorce hearing. Judge Bill Burdock ruled Tilton's first wife, Marty, may not intervene in the current divorce proceedings. Marty Tilton wanted to be a party to the case after the judge ruled Tilton's church could be considered part of his assets and thus community property. Today's ruling does not mean Marty Tilton cannot seek a portion of the assets, just not as part of this divorce trial. Both sides were back in court in Dallas today in a divorce case that could set a legal precedent. It involves a televangelist, and the court says it will consider including not only his assets, but those of his church in the settlement. Bob McNamara reports on the division of husband and wife and the separation of church and state. Just a few years ago, televangelist Robert Tilton was center stage, pulling in millions each month. You need to call and make a $1,000 vow of faith right now. Claiming to heal the sick. Oh, yes, there's a liver being healed right now. Facing down demons for the faithful. I like to chop the devil up, don't you? Quick, 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 quick. Today, it's what's left of Tilton's crumbling empire that may be sliced up in a divorce case that is colorful even by Texas standards. In court this week, where Tilton's current wife, Lee, his ex-wife, Marty, the pastor himself, and a passel of attorneys all arguing over whether Tilton's millions in church assets can be considered part of a divorce settlement. It's Bob Tilton's business, and he uses that church as if it is his own checkbook. While Tilton's attorneys promise a fight to protect his church holdings, this may be the last stand for Robert Tilton's reputation. Already, there are charges of everything from alcoholism to adultery. It's a real-life case of sex, lies, and videotape. How many believers do I have here this morning? Before meeting Tilton, his current wife had her own video ministry. Today, she's still living in the swanky church parsonage, but she says her two-year marriage to Tilton took everything else. You know, I've lost everything. My mailing list, my book transcripts, my, my tape inventory, my video inventory. Tilton's former wife, Marty, got the church school worth several million dollars during her divorce four years ago. But now, with the whole church up for grabs, she is back for more. This isn't about religion, it's about control of funds. If it was a legitimate church and had a finance board and a board of elders, I don't think they'd have a case. Today, the parking lot at the Word of Faith Church is empty. No longer are the pews packed or the program seen nationwide. I've got to go. God bless you. But if Robert Tilton is hoping his marriages or his ministry will end quietly, he doesn't have a prayer. Bob McNamara, CBS News, Dallas. The upcoming divorce trial of televangelist Robert Tilton takes another bizarre twist today. We go live now to Fox 4 News reporter Linda Huang in downtown Dallas with this story. Linda. Hi, Steve. Jury selection did not begin as expected today. Instead, Judge Bill Burdock announced a major restructuring in this divorce case. It was supposed to be a trial about two people in the middle of a nasty divorce. The biggest settlement issue by far, the multi-million dollar Word of Faith Church, which the couple headed together during their two-year marriage. But now, Judge Bill Burdock has broken the trial down into several parts. The first and main issue is for the jury to decide whether Bob Tilton and his church are financially inseparable. He is the church. The church is him. Bob Tilton used the church as his 
deep pocket for money. He lived rich, owns nothing. Lee Tilton's attorney has been arguing that the televangelist led an extravagant lifestyle by freely spending the church's money for personal use. Therefore, the church should be a part of the couple's divorce settlement. But Bob Tilton's attorneys argue that is not the case, and they have all the financial documents to prove that Bob Tilton and the church have maintained separate accounts. They say the judge's decision to turn this issue into a separate trial will drastically simplify the divorce case. If you handle the divorce case simply on its own merits, what Lee and Bob Tilton accumulated and spent during their marriage, you're talking at less than $200,000, probably less than $100,000 of assets they have today. Now with the church, it becomes a 10 to $15 million case, which of course takes it to a whole nother level. That will be the main issue for the jury to decide. The actual divorce will be handled separately at a later date. Televangelist Robert Tilton took the stand today in his own trial, calling the whole ordeal, quote, a stupid waste of the government's and the jury's time. Linda Wong has been at the courthouse all day, joins us live now with the latest on the story. Linda. Ashley, they spent most of today going over the points of this six-page document called the Church Charter, and both sides are using it to support their case in this trial. Self-serving, very powerful. That's what Lee Tilton's attorney wanted jurors to see in this church charter, which was drawn up by Bob Tilton himself and his personal attorney. It basically states that the Word of Faith pastor will have total, absolute authority over spiritual and secular affairs of the church. Also, that the pastor will be paid like anyone else who is considered to be the best in their profession. He could set it the same as Michael Jackson's salary, I guess, or Steven Spielberg or any of those type people. I'm not allowed to comment at this time. This has become a battle over which Tilton pastor is more greedy. Robert Tilton's attorneys claim they're willing to hand over practically everything the couple attained during their brief two-year marriage. She's not willing to do that. Instead, she wants to try to reach the church's assets just so she'll have something to walk away with. Which is what this trial is all about. The church charter clearly states that the only limitation on the absolute authority of the church pastor is this that all the assets are owned by the church and the pastor may never transfer any property belonging to the church to himself or any member of his family. Lee's attorney claims Bob Tilden violated that agreement himself when he gave his first wife Marty $4.1 million in church property. And they're trying to say that's not a, a, a giving away of the church's assets to settle the divorce. Yeah, right. Robert Tilden's attorney claims the moral fault goes both ways. When Lee Tilton signed over their Addison home into her name shortly after the couple split up in May. It's around 40 or 50 probably now as Bob and Lee Tilton enter into more hand-to-hand -hand courthouse combat. Lee continues to press her fight to win cash plus the 1.6 million dollar Addison mansion built as a church parsonage. The Reverend continues to insist she keep her hands off all of it. Tilton was on the witness stand for hours as his wife's lawyer hammered away at him. Under intense questioning about his written church charter, the TV preacher admitted that he wrote in the names of his board of elders without telling the people or getting their permission. Testy and often combative on the stand, Tilton said he was glad to be heard. Giving my side of the story, which is a lot different from the other side. Lee Tilton portrays her husband as a man who runs his church like a dictator and pushes people around. A multimillionaire, she says, who lives a rich lifestyle while claiming to have nothing. Bob Tilton portrays his wife as a greedy gold digger who would lie, cheat, and even steal to get money and property that's not rightfully hers. The evangelist told the jury the giving of anything of the church to his wife would violate his religious beliefs. He called her claim ridiculous, scandalous, and stupid, a waste of time with no place in divorce court. I think he is shocked that somebody that's a minister would claim that the church they were a minister of was actually a fraud. There was an injustice to my client that shows his power and control and which hat he has on or doesn't have on, have on and, and therefore he can use his position of power and control unjustly and to harm her and did so. This jury will decide if Lee Tilton may or may not get at the $30 million wealth of the church. Then comes the next phase actually carving up the Tilton pie. Testimony continued today in the divorce trial of TV evangelist Robert Tilton, and today it was Lee Tilton's turn to tell jurors why she thinks she's entitled to some of the thousands of dollars in church assets. Lee Tilton, an ordained minister and former Miss Missouri beauty pageant winner, took the stand to testify about her two-year marriage that crumbled amidst the trappings of wealth. 
She told jurors that Reverend Robert Tilton of the Word of Faith Church spent thousands of dollars in church funds on first-class trips to Florida and Europe. When home, he ran personal businesses in cosmetics and vitamins using church equipment and employees. Under her attorney's questioning, she tried to make the point that Tilton controlled church funds as his own, and she's entitled to some of the 30 million left. Yeah, you have to show dominion and control, and that there's an injury, our assets were commingled, and the nature and extent of the assets go to the ability to use your power to harm somebody. Of course, the money at the center of this nasty divorce came from thousands of viewers who contributed money when Tilton's TV evangelism empire stretched coast to coast. The Word of Faith Church bought this Addison home for $1.6 million that Lee Tilton deeded to herself. She claims she could, since Tilton made her co-pastor. But he testified only he held the power to do that. Further, Tilton's attorneys say church assets are separate from his. We can literally account for every dime that has gone through their bank accounts in the entire history of this marriage. Uh, and we have just done so. And to say that there's been a commingling of the church's assets is a joke. The judge will allow jurors to decide whether church money should be included, overruling Tilton's attorneys. Tilton's television appearances are now limited to his divorce case, but as the trial recesses until after Christmas, he still seems in a festive mood. Merry Christmas. Well, in downtown Dallas, lawyers for Bob Tilton grilled his soon-to-be ex-wife on the witness stand. Patricia Guillermo was in court today, and she is here now with more on what happened. Patricia. Well, Steve, uh, the tug-of-war continues, and this time the tangling Tiltons are arguing over who really has the power. Lee is her own worst enemy. That remark came after Mr. Tilton's wife, Lee, admitted she transferred the deed to their home to her new ministry just 10 days ago. Mrs. Tilton says she was made co-pastor of the Word of Faith Church by her husband. Where they messed up was they gave her equal authority. And now they have to live with it, and they're not liking it. It's a bitter pill, but it's about time they got it. That has the Word of Faith attorney saying Lee Tilton is tearing up the church. So what gives her the right to say those people can't practice their religion the way they want to practice their religion? That is heresy. Mrs. Tilton's attorney say since she's a co-senior pastor of the church, she has the right. Robert Tilton admitted it in his deposition. He admitted it in the witness stand, and there are documents that say that, and other witnesses heard it. But evangelist Robert Tilton denies his estranged wife is a co-pastor. There is no document that says she is a co-pastor or co-equal or has the authority to do anything. It's all just a big lie and fraud. Tilton's attorney says what Mrs. Tilton did to sign over all the Word of Faith deeds was illegal. All of a sudden we have someone coming in and saying, with a stroke of the pen, I can convey all this church property to myself, to my brother's church, and then he to my church. And if they can do that to this church, why can't they do it to your church? Tilton is calling his estranged wife a liar, saying his church cannot be taken away from the congregation. They have perpetuated a fraud upon our church, Word of Faith Family Church. They are trying to legally steal it, uh, religious thieves. But it's not going to happen. And if you would like some more libel statements, there. What do you have to say? How do you think things are going so far? I can't speak right now, my attorney, but thank you. Thank you. Things are going very well, thank you. The truth is coming out. The emotions and stakes are high. Mr. Tilton's attorney never let up, and at one point, he even implied Lee Tilton was lying under oath. Pretty rough on her, don't you think? Appropriately so. I think when somebody's trying to steal several million dollars worth of a church's assets, they should be treated roughly. Tilton is no stranger to the courtroom, and he readily admits it. Hey, we've got 13 cases we've won. We're not going to lose this one, and we're going to keep going. It always works that way. Well, the Tilton's trial is scheduled to resume on Monday. Resume Monday, and I guess it all comes down to who can prove that he or she had an interest or did not have an interest in the church, right? That's right, Steve. Right now what's happening are, is Lee's attorneys are waiting for some documents to come in from out of state that say that she had uh, co-pastorship power to the Word of Faith Church. Now, meantime, of course, uh, Tilton's attorneys are saying that that is absolutely not exist. true. Yeah, they don't exist. We, until we see them, uh, we're not going to believe it. Okay. That's what's happening. We'll see what happens Monday. And a Dallas jury continues its deliberations tomorrow morning in the latest court squabble involving controversial minister Bob Tilton. In closing arguments today, lawyers for Lee Tilton claimed her estranged husband personally controls everything dealing with the Word of Faith Church. 
I had no idea when I married this man the great injustice he's doing to all of Christendom and uh, all of our faiths by taking these funds and using them for personal use. He tells everyone he owns nothing, but yet he has full use of all those church assets. It's wrong, and he is the alter ego of the word of faith. There's no question about it. He is in total control of that ministry, and he's set it under oath. Nobody can make any decisions except for him. I am definitely not the alter ego of the church. Uh, we've done everything humanly possible, above and beyond the majority of most all ministries, to dot every I and cross every T. Lawyers for Bob Tilton called his wife greedy. They say she is trying to steal the church and its one and a half million dollar parsonage. A verdict is in on the assets trial of televangelist Robert Tilton. As 11 News reporter Robbie Chavez shows us, money from Tilton's church won't be divided up in his upcoming divorce settlement. It was clearly a big loss for Lee Tilton. The preacher's second wife will never get her hands on Robert Tilton's $30 million Word of Faith Church empire. The jury decided it cannot be divided in their messy divorce. Oh, it's very sad. It's very sad for other pastors, legitimate ministries. It's very sad for Christendom. It's just sad. This is, was a, is a major victory, not just for our church or myself personally, the vindication of no alter ego. Uh, but for all churches. I cannot believe they didn't rule an alter ego the extent to which the church is used for his own personal use and gain. So that does shock me. She is not left with nothing. She's left with a regular divorce suit with her husband and community property, which has nothing to do with the church. You don't steal a church. Robert Tilden had a lot of risk. All during the trial, his attorneys presented Lee Valentine as a woman consumed by greed. Tilton was in tears to see what he called an immoral takeover of his church fail. I just um, uh, know that this sends a signal. Uh, though a minister may, a pastor, a minister may fail in his marriage and get a divorce, by no means uh, uh, can uh, uh, church... Uh, assets and properties become a pawn in a divorce suit. I had no idea when I married this man the extent of the abuse and alcoholism and the, the entertainment and the leisure living that he leads. I mean, basically, I was abused for two years. He's not a godly man. He's not a true Christian. And he lives the lifestyle of... He's not a, he's not a pastor. It's very sad. He lives an ungodly lifestyle. Uh, I wish we had more time that we could have shown the jury the American Express bills, the telephone bills, but we were just two little attorneys fighting these million dollar attorneys and all these big law firms. We had a tough road to hoe, okay? They've had 20, 30, almost 30 years of how to hide evidence. And so you don't leave much of a paper trail when you're conspiring to violate the law. As the two Tiltons fight about their past, both are busily mapping a future. Perhaps the one common trait they share is ambition. We have new television equipment we just purchased. We're working on a new um, uh, television program. We just finished a new special. I'm going to do an info commercial, and I've had several offers to do a book. We'll see, and uh, I'll continue in helping people. But those goals will take a back seat while she goes after the self-proclaimed pauper who came to court in alligator shoes. Allenberg, Channel 8 News. Lee Tilton, wife of televangelist Robert Tilton, has a month and a half to move out. A judge ruled Tuesday that Tilton must leave the Addison mansion she shared with her estranged husband. She has to be out by March 1st. The same judge has ordered Robert Tilton to give her, though, $3,500 a month until July 1st or until their divorce is final. The U.S. Supreme Court will not reopen a libel suit against ABC filed by televangelist Robert Tilton. The justices wouldn't even comment on the case, leaving a federal court's ruling intact. That court threw out Tilton's lawsuit over a 1991 primetime live report and refused to forbid ABC News from ever rebroadcasting that report. Tilton says the program wrongfully portrayed him as a callous, insensitive fraud. Today at 5, an exclusive with Lee Tilton from inside the million-dollar home she and Bob built together. It was my dream home. I wanted it to be perfect because I wanted to please Bob. Find out what she'll do now that the church is kicking her out. I'm Linda Huang. Coming up next, we'll take you where no cameras have gone before, inside the house of Bob and Lee Tilton. Donations to the Word of Faith Church helped to build a million-dollar mansion for television preacher Bob Tilton and his estranged wife, Lee. Well, now Tilton and the church are kicking her out of the home. It's a story you'll see only on 4. Linda Wong goes inside the house for one final tour before the church reclaims it all. 
Right across the street from Emmett Smith is the house that Lee and Bob built. Estimated at one and a half million dollars, the couple actually spent more time building the house than they did living in it together as a married couple. And then we probably lived here about nine months together. The 6,000 square foot house took over a year to build. But this was our dream home and it was my dream home. I mean, I built it from scratch and it meant a lot to me and I wanted it to be perfect because I wanted to please Bob. I wanted it to be perfect. Picture perfect is what she got. The house itself is a work of art, from crown moldings to gold-plated sinks in some of the eight bathrooms to stone pillars with a Spanish-Italian flair. I just love to design things, and I wanted that outdoor look, yet inside. All right, so this is the, um, the balcony from off the library, and there's a good view of the pool. And because this was the house built for the Word of Faith pastor and his new wife, it and practically everything inside was paid for with church funds. When you were buying all these and the, the stone pillars, did you ever think about the old lady who mm -hmm. came and sat at the church yes. service and put in her few dollars? That's right, I did, I did. Didn't you ever feel guilty? Yes, a lot. Um, Bob would justify it and say, well, I've made so much money off real estate deals and buying and selling property and that's how he would justify it. Lee does admit some of the extravagant design ideas were hers. Oh, really? From the initials etched into the glass shower doors to... Why would you need a microwave and a refrigerator in the bathroom? Actually, we used it every day. But all these things are now painful reminders of what used to be. It's hurt Bob's children and it's hurt my son. It's just been devastating for everyone. It really has. Lee Till lost a bitter court fight when the jury said Word of Faith Church could not be a part of the couple's divorce settlement. Of, so Lee oh, has to move out of the church's house by the end of the month. She's fighting back now with a new lawyer, prominent Dallas attorney Ted Khaleesi. She is in debt to Mr. Tilton's attorneys in the amount of $218,000 as the court ordered Ms. Tilton to pay Bob Tilton's attorney's fees. Bob Tilton is making uh, in excess of $375,000 at this time, plus tens of thousands of dollars in additional benefits, uh, living a brand new life in Florida. You know, everyone thinks that I've asked for millions of dollars. We, and originally we asked for 300000 and we were willing to come down to 100000 but he said no, that I would get nothing. Bob Tilton's attorney claims she's far from broke. Up until we actually had the trial, she was receiving about $7,300 a month disposable income, after-tax dollars, from my client, Robert Tilton. Now she's receiving $3,500 a month, plus a free car, free auto insurance, and free health insurance. So it's not that she's without resources to supply herself a place to live. That's all she has to do. Yeah. yeah. With her three-year-old son from a previous marriage, Lee says their future is bleak. She says she's $400,000 in debt from the divorce, and she can't even qualify to lease an apartment. And to see the movers come and take things, and you wonder where all your true friends are and who you can trust. It's just very scary, very frightening. The Tillens next divorce trial is set for April 7th, but attorneys for both sides are trying to work out a settlement, seeing that every time they go to court, the value on the assets are shrinking due to all these attorney's fees. Ashley? She has worked before. She was an evangelist before she met Bob. Is she going to return to her, uh, her former profession? Well, basically, she's saying that's what this whole argument was about, the fact that she wasn't fighting for millions. She wanted just a couple hundred thousand dollars to restart her own ministry. But then again, with all this bad publicity, she doesn't even know if that's possible. Any word yet from uh, Bob Tilton on the whole affair? Well, actually, we did ask him for an interview. He declined our request for an interview, saying that he didn't want to get into an ugly war of words with his wife, Lee, and basically he just wants to get this divorce over with. All right, thanks very much, Linda. The Supreme Court says local televangelist Robert Tilton cannot restart lawsuits against ABC News and a Dallas-based nonprofit group. The court, without comment, turned away arguments that Tilton should be allowed to pursue conspiracy and racketeering allegations over a 1991 primetime live report. Tilton also tried to sue the Trinity Foundation, accusing it of conspiring to destroy his church. A Dallas divorce court judge has found the second wife of former televangelist Robert Tilton in contempt. The dispute had involved items missing from the former parsonage of Tilton's Word of Faith Church. Both sides had clashed over items including toasters, a toy box, even custom clothes hangers. Lee Valentine Tilton also was ordered yesterday to pay more than $30,000 in attorney's fees.
The estranged wife of television evangelist Robert Tilton took the stand today in divorce court. Lee Tilton accused her husband of abusive behavior, heavy drinking, and adultery. 41-year-old Lee Tilton is 50-year-old Robert Tilton's second wife. And other news today. A local television evangelist has been arrested on DWI charges. Tuesday night, Dallas police arrested telev television evangelist Lee Tilton. She was taken to jail and booked for drunk driving following a car accident. The police report says that Lee Tilton hit another car late Tuesday night at the intersection of Pearl and McKinney. That's near downtown Dallas. Officers said she refused to take a breathalyzer test and therefore was, she was charged with DWI. Tilton is currently suing the evangelist Robert Tilton for divorce. She tells us she refused to take the breathalyzer test on the advance, uh, advice of her lawyer and that she will fight the DWI charge. The two-year bitter divorce trial between televangelist Robert Tilton and his former wife, Lee, is finally over tonight. A Dallas judge granted the divorce denying Ms. Tilton much of the one and a half million dollars that she sought from her husband. The judge ruled that Ms. Tilton did not prove the televangelist abused her and ordered her to pay her now ex-husband $300,000. He also split a long list of bills between them, but it's unclear where that money's going to come from since both say they are broke. The word of faith is for sale. Reverend Bob Tilton's church will go to the highest bidder. Details next. Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church is for sale. At one time, the church had more than 11,000 members, but attendance plummeted after Tilton's messy divorce and several lawsuits filed against him. Tilton has since moved to Fort Lauderdale, and less than 200 people now attend the church. The current pastor says they don't need the almost 300,000 square feet of space. Welcome back. For years, Robert Tilton's Word of Faith Church was the centerpiece of a multi-million dollar TV evangelist empire. But following years of negative publicity and Tilton's departure for Florida, the congregation has dwindled and now the property located north of Dallas is being sold to the city of Farmers Branch. Fox 4's Eric Glasser has our story. Going, going, and now almost gone. In Farmer's Branch, an auction is now planned to sell off what's left of the Word of Faith Church's Lexington Academy. The three-acre property was sold to the Carrollton Farmer's Branch ISD last month. And now what was the cornerstone of the controversial Reverend Robert Tilton's empire will be sold as well. Farmer's Branch is buying the 13-acre Word of Faith property off I-35 for just over $6 million with plans to convert it to a convention center. We have a whole lot of victims of Tilton that are living in our community. Ole Anthony, whose Trinity Foundation helps expose TV evangelists, believes most of the money from the sale will still find its way to the flamboyant Tilton. From the Bible! Who had the only jury verdict against him overturned. Praise the Lord. Some of the proceeds may also pay off lawsuits settled this week involving Tilton's former wife, Marty. Despite the sale of the property, Anthony believes Tilton will keep his title as the head of the Word of Faith Church and maintain a small presence in Dallas, if for no other reason than because the church provides them a prime shelter from the IRS. It's just a way in which they can continue their television operation without having to report any of the proceeds to the government. There's a miracle in your mouth. For now, Tilton does maintain a TV presence, living in South Florida, appearing late nights on cable's BET. He's lost credibility, gained some weight. But with or without a North Texas presence, his critics believe Tilton is still preying on people's faith. I wished he would have learned, uh, but he apparently hasn't, because he's just recycling his old pre-produced testimonials. Uh, I don't think he learned anything. I got a lot of attorneys, and we, this church got a lot of money. In Farmer's Branch, Eric Glasser, Fox 4 News. An embroiled televangelist is back, and he's spreading his word in a very unusual way. More on Robert Tilton. Well, the ministry of fallen televangelist Bob Tilton has resurfaced through the mail, and there are concerns about promises of faith he is making to North Texans. If you need a miracle, jump and shout hallelujah! In the 90s, Bob Tilton was a popular televangelist through his Word of Faith Outreach Center Church in Farmer's Branch with a reportedly $7 million monthly income. 
But his televangelist empire crumbled under the weight of several lawsuits from followers who alleged Tilton's ministry had defrauded them. Tilton successfully appealed the cases but was never able to rebuild his massive following. During the past year, he was back on the air on one cable station, while others have been getting direct mail from Tilton's ministries based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mr. Ballard, I couldn't sleep. I got down on my knees and I kept your name and others in my room to pray over. Donnell Ballard recently received some mailings from Tilton promising blessings if he followed some simple directions. Place this list in your bill folder and carry it with you the rest of today and sleep with both under your pillow tonight. Ballard said he did all that and more. When I sent in the $20, I thought I was going to get a blessing and I didn't get nothing. Other North Texans have received mailings from Tilton containing a holy wishbone, a holy sackcloth key, even a Holy Ghost glove. You put this glove on and, and, uh, and, and pray with Brother P Tilton in a prayer of agreement, you'll get all of your wishes. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity and, uh, Foundation, a religious watchdog group. He sends out the letters to the poorest, most desperate people in our society, making outlandish promises. We were unable to get a comment from Mr. Tilton, who is still listed as the head pastor of this Word of Faith Church and Farmers Branch. A church spokesperson did fax us a written response. It says that the courts at all levels have upheld a church's First Amendment right to express its religious beliefs. It adds that Tilton's request for seeds of faith or vows are protected expressions of religious beliefs, that encouraging his viewers to put their faith in God would bring them blessings. Meanwhile, Ballard says he won't send Tilton another dime and will rely on God for his blessings. For Focus on Faith, Ramona Logan, NBC5, Fort Worth. Like their colleagues in the church pulpit, ministers who preach the gospel on television give hope and comfort to millions of people every week. But in the 1980s, a few television preachers were exposed for practices that were making them rich at the expense of disillusioned viewers. Investigators accused the so-called televangelists of preying on the vulnerable and the desperate by promising that God would cure their illnesses or make them wealthy if they would send in large donations to the TV ministry. The most controversial televangelists were discredited and went off the air. Now, several of them are back, delivering much the same message, but to a different audience. Lucky Severson reports. Some critics call it the gospel of greed. God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the world, salvation, healing, and prosperity. Salvation by Satellite. And to help you also, I'm going to send you the book, Send Now Prosperity. Promised miracles of money. God himself, God Almighty, guarantees you a house. The message hasn't state. changed, but you the location of the pulpit has. Robert Tilton and a handful of other TV ministers, discredited for preaching and promising prosperity, have now repackaged themselves for African-American audiences. They're buying time on the Black Entertainment Television Network. And they say, well, it's because that's where the need is. No, it's not. It's that's where the people who are desperate are, who will believe this garbage that they're putting on in the name of God. Television watchdog and licensed private investigator Ole Anthony has been closely monitoring TV evangelists for 10 years. Through his nonprofit Trinity Foundation, Anthony maintains daily logs of what he considers to be outrageous claims and keeps files on the mail-out come-ons of more than 130 TV preachers. The saddest thing we see is when people watch these pre-produced testimonials and they give money and they think they're healed and they stop taking their medicine. And you've seen that? Oh, yeah. We it happened to the mother of Dallas Elementary School teacher, Vicki Crenshaw. She felt like you could trust someone who said that they were a minister of God. Crenshaw's mother had colon cancer and, according to her daughter, was convinced by Tilton in his broadcasts that she would receive a miracle. And she was watching television and there was Robert Tilton. And he convinced her that if she sent him money, 
he could get her healed. Robert Tilton tells his viewers that they must send in a seed of faith to show that they do have the faith for their miracle, and that means money. And you would try to get her to go to a doctor and she'd say, no, I'm going to be healed by, by Robert Tilton. She did not seek medical care after that point because she felt like it would be a breach of faith that she would not receive the miracle. By the time I got my mother to a doctor, to a medical doctor, her cancer had metastasized and um, there was no hope. And then she passed away. God's speaking to your heart to make a thousand dollar vow of faith. Maybe it's 500, maybe it's 100, I don't know, but it's got to take faith or it doesn't please God. Ole Anthony started looking into unscrupulous televangelists during his work with the homeless. We did an a in-depth study of, a, of, a, of an evangelist in Southern California whose take was about 12 million a year, and he gave $686 to charity for charitable purposes. Out of $12 million? Yeah. Anthony also uncovered strategies fraudulent televangelists used to amass their fortune, using a church as a front, an attorney as their business manager, and a team of data collection, telemarketing, and mail-out firms that together keep the cash coming. I've often said that if, if you call a prayer line and the minister asks, for you anything for more than your first name, you should hang up on him because God knows where you live. I want you to call me right now and tell my prayer minister. I want you to open your mouth and say it. We wanted to talk directly to Tilton and two other TV ministers who make wild claims in the name of God, Peter Popov and Don Stewart. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the telephone. But, but I, I'm, I'm calling uh, from a... a public television program called Religion and Ethics, and I wanted to arrange for an interview with uh, Mr. Tilton. Hello? Hello? I hung up. So I've talked to three ministries, Robert Tilton, Peter Popoff, Don Stewart. One I was hung up on. The other, I was told uh, they were simply too busy. And the third, uh, Don Stewart has a policy of not speaking to reporters. We took our questions to the Black Entertainment Television Network. According to program executive Marita Colley, the BET Network has a hands-off relationship with the preachers, selling their time to a middleman TV broker, who then parcels it out to the televangelists. What about some of these preachers that have been kicked off most every other station in the country and they're on BET. We have spoken to our media buyer as to whether or not there's any, um, you know, fraudulent practices on the parts of any of the ministers and we'll deal with that accordingly. So if you discover there is fraud out right, there, exactly. it'll go off your air. That's right. At a recent conference on religious broadcasters held by state attorneys general, officials heard about the practical difficulties in regulating televangelists. No matter how preposterous their claims, they are effectively shielded from prosecution by the constitutional guarantee of freedom of religion. If it's not a promise that comes out of a religious faith, or if it's insincere, then it can be prosecuted. It's not protected by the First Amendment. The prosecution, in fact, rarely happens. You'll make that thousand dollar vow, or five, and just pay on it as God provides the seat. Vicki Crenshaw says she dreads the day that her mother's tragedy will be repeated. He's moved on somewhere else, and somewhere there is a sweet little mother or a grandmother or there's an aunt or an uncle or someone who is desperate in need, and their family is going to lose them because they are going to be persuaded to follow after someone who is not concerned about them, about the victim. He is concerned about how much money they will give him. That is it. In the world of televangelism, praise the Lord. One group watches out for you. Meet the dumpster diving disciples digging for truth in religious broadcasting. God's detectives. Well, they are small in number without much money. But they have become a pretty powerful force in an ongoing war against televangelists. Fox Force Richard Ray joins us now with a special report. This time on a small church in East Dallas. It's known as the Trinity Foundation. Rich. Hi, Stephen Ashley. The first thing you'll notice about Trinity is there is no church building, just a row of houses in East Dallas where members live. It's been said that you can judge a man by his enemies. Well, Trinity's leader, Ole Anthony, can count among his Robert Tilton and many other TV preachers. 
Anthony and his followers certainly employ some rather unusual weapons in their ongoing holy war, but they believe they have a unique role to play as God's detectives. Nothing gets TV preacher Bob Tilton more worked up than a little chat about his longtime nemesis, Ole Anthony. That's not at all, not a minister at all, but an adulterer and a drunkard and a womanizer that's been caught in the clubs having the audacity to touch a prophet of God. Televangelist W.V. Grant was another target of Anthony, but unlike Tilton, who won his major legal battles, Grant ended up serving a prison sentence for tax evasion after media exposés inspired by the Trinity Foundation's work. Hey, ABC, hey, CBS, hey, NBC and CNN and Slime Time and Stephen Blowhard and old man Anthony and old Slewfoot Devil, we're not going to bow. We're just going to set the record straight. I would desire very much to work myself out of a job. I don't like what we're doing, but nobody else will do it. I mean, I get tired of being called the Antichrist and Satan incarnate. And I mean, that's, you ought to hear some of our answering machine tapes. What is it exactly that Anthony and his little church do? Well, that takes some explaining. It's a ministry unlike any other. One national news magazine called them Detectives for Christ, a merry band that takes on the televangelists. That one bag was no good. Among other things, Trinity Foundation members spend time in trash dumpsters. They call it dumpster diving, looking for evidence of fraudulent okay. activities. Maybe not. Information, financial information, uh, incriminating stuff. In this case, they're looking for records from an accountant's office. Several different businesses use that same dumpster. An accountant who works for a TV preacher. People give them money in good faith. And uh, then you actually see what the money goes to. There are even licensed Please private investigators now. What happened was we, we, I was caught in a dumpster in Muskogee, Oklahoma. They, they, they are so isolated, so walled from all information that you have to go to extraordinary measures to, to find out what's happening with them. And so that's why the, the uh, private investigative license the foundation also publishes a religious humor magazine called The Door. The Washington Post called us gleefully irreverent. Too irreverent for some taste, The Door has largely disappeared from religious bookstores. Do you like religious TV? We propelled, birds propel, eagles don't And then there's God Stuff, hosted by John Bloom, alias Joe Bob Briggs. I love religious TV. God Stuff is a direct outgrowth of Trinity's efforts to monitor TV preachers. They were collecting these tapes from all over the country of all these evangelists. You know, they were watching them for a different purpose, and uh, they kept a lot of them just because they were funny. Bloom, a longtime Trinity member, made the pilot. There will be 50 people give $1,000 and do it right now, or I am finished. Now try me. I'm writing the check now. Each week, John Bloom compiles... Comedy Central liked it. Now God Stuff is a weekly feature on the cable network's daily show. But to focus on the biting satire on the seemingly secular activities is to miss what Trinity is most about. O oh Lord our God, King of the universe. Trinity members model themselves after the first century Christian church. Here there is a communal kitchen. One of these pastrami sandwiches homeschooling, and a church that from the beginning has made taking in the homeless its top priority. If every church and synagogue took one homeless person, took them into their lives, we'd solve the homeless crisis overnight. I believe the homeless are God's wedding invitation. They're messengers, and God's going to treat the church in the same way the church is treating the homeless. It doesn't take any great stature for some ministry to get on television and say, oh, he preaches. 90 minutes of everything he says is collecting funds. Well, it's not. He has nothing collecting funds. He doesn't tell people to send him $1,000. He tells people make a vow of $1,000 and pay on that vow as God supplies your need. And it's scriptural. They say they're, they're promoting the gospel. I, my thesis is, is that they're keeping more people away 
from the possibility of coming to God than anyone else on the face of the earth. Ole Anthony calls himself the rabbi. He's a self-taught religious leader with an eclectic background. Years of military intelligence work, a stint as a Republican fundraiser, even a short time as a TV preacher. But his passion now is housing the homeless. In fact, that's what led Trinity into its crusade against the TV ministries. And a significant number of the homeless, either it came to us or similar ministries, they'd given their last dollar to one of the televangelists. You want to feed on this book full of promises? I don't think you go to, to Pakistan and find guys like this on television. You know, we're, this is a uniquely American phenomenon, you know. Bloom shares Ole Anthony's passion, his crusade to constantly monitor TV ministries for possible fraud. You've got to steal like billions of dollars. You've got to like reduce thousands of widows to poverty before anybody notices. I mean, it takes a huge scandal by an extremely idiotic preacher before anybody notices these guys. So Trinity set up this program to sort of nip some of this stuff in the bud to watch them before it gets to the Jim Baker stage. Are the storms of financial adversity looming over your life? Now, a powerful breakthrough that will make a difference. How to Pay Your Bills Supernaturally by Robert Tilton. Hello, I'm Robert Tilton, and let me encourage you to call right now for my new book, How to Pay Your Bills Supernaturally. In it, I'll show you how to break the curse of lack off of your life and how to receive miracles in the area of your finances. Call now for your free copy of How to Pay Your Bills Supernaturally. Vision. Vision. If you can see it, if you can hear it, it's vision. A vision. I want you to get a vision for your new home. I want you to see the living room with beautiful designer furniture. I want you to see a great kitchen where you want to sit down and eat with the family with nice dishes and great iced tea glasses and some nice new pots and pans. Open that pantry and look on there, glory to God, and it's got all kinds of good soups and canned goods and this, that, and the other. Open that refrigerator and you got some good old smoked turkey sandwich meat in there and pickles and all kinds of mustards and you just gotta decide on what kind of sandwich you want. Fresh lettuce and tomatoes. I'm getting hungry, are you? <laughs> I want you to see garage door goes up. That means you got to have a garage. Garage door goes up and there's a new car in there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yep, I'm prophesying to you. I got to hand it to Tilton, Robert Tilton. I want to tell the world one thing I admire about Tilton. He looks like he's breaking wind royally on every word. Results happen. Once I begin to see this, for entertainment, I've watched him. Just sense the anointing flowing out of me. What got my attention the first time was that. I mean, I thought, this man has got things going on below the screen. Hallelujah. And he's enjoying it, man. Thank you, Lord, I'm enjoying this. Now, what I want to commend him worldwide about is he's still enjoying it with the same vim and vigor as the first time I saw him. I mean, he still gets that look on his face. I mean, you can be spinning those channels. He'll stop you dead, man. <laughs> His face, absolutely, can contort better than any face I've ever seen, but he never seems to tire in the contorting. The first thing that happens, that's it! <laughs> Woo! He contorts with spazam. And it will not stop, it will happen, saith the Lord! <laughs> I believe if I could know everything that's going on in that studio, world records are set every night. I got sunshine on a rainy day. 
Keep on casting your bread on the water. You'll find it again after many days. Come on, Ed, let me hear that big old bass guitar. Now, let me hear that Hammond organ get going. Come on. Thank you.